It starts with this A person that you miss Mine draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself Gentlemen, welcome. We've got another day of action here. You're ready to start. You're ready to go. I jumped in. I apologize. You, I, I take your spot. I'm here replacing your stand. Unfortunately, he's, uh, he's not going to be here for our first series. Hey, Freak, I'll let you also do the the introduction. You can you can do your own as well. 
No, 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 no. I'm happy that you actually went for it. I wasn't sure, but uh, it just goes to show that we have been doing this for a very long time and then you could do it. But uh, if, you, if you want, you can go something like this. And welcome to the last day of the China Close Qualifiers here at Dream League Season 23. Only three teams left. And Aries is Team Zero, G2IG, and uh, Zeray in the Grand Finals that uh, you were supposed to be only covering them and one of these teams. So uh, I guess you're, you're very lucky this... For me, it's morning. I, I don't know what it is for you. Pretty good time. 3 p.m. here. It's perfect time awesome. for Dota action. No messing around. We got a we got a great series ready to go. You know, it's uh, early morning for you, but you know, this is uh, this is a good way to kick the morning off, right? Team Zero G Two IG. How are you feeling about this one? Like I know you've been doing you know covering China as well. I've been hearing a lot of lizards, at least you know his opinion about you know the teams. But where do you currently sit with like G Two IG and and Team Zero? Okay, so Team Zero one versus g2ig already so i think that uh that has something to say it was a two game series so it was a 2-0 win but both of the games were close i think you might have even covered that yes yes i did but overall i think when it comes to dealing with the uh, uh lower tier teams in the qualifiers g2ig they just cruise through everybody but they had their problems with Team Zero. And I did cast one series of Team Zero versus Bright. And I like the way the Team Zero approached things. If they would draft correctly, I think they could, they were able to beat anybody, right? Very consistent gameplay, understanding of their draft. They had a little bit of a problem with the, against Team Bright. I didn't watch their series versus Azure. But in general, I think they should be coming in as a slight favorite. But overall, I think G2IG maybe has a bit more consistency in drafts and preparation before the game. Mm -hmm. So I think in Team Zero levels that one out, that they should be able to repeat what they did in the upper bracket. Yeah, I think one thing that Liz and I have been seeing from Team Zero is the fact they do have a couple of like key strategies. They are flexing the Centaur to the five. The Slaughter is really something else that we're seeing them. They've only played one game of the Slaughter, but that was one of their victories versus G2 IG, where it was like Slaughter, Clinks, and the late game just damage spike from the Amplifier, either from the Corrosive Haze, was actually just way too much for them to handle. And I think every game since Slaughter has been getting banned out. So that's that's really something I think in particular to look at. Why I saw or Erica is really lacking a lot of his range carries. We're seeing the Weaver. We saw the Drow yesterday as well that he played. So, you know, again, Klinks, he's played a couple games. So really does seem like they have this current idea that YSR is like on some range carry hero. Yeah, that's actually... Uh, that's actually a really cool approach for them because they that's not what they did in general versus uh, versus team bright the only series that i watched them but they did play a slarder and uh, quite successfully with an anti-mage it was quite funny they uh, had an aghanim scepter in the anti-mage and usually when you send out the illusion it's not all that much damage but uh, in this game in particular because of the crossy haze like those illusions were killing people like literally killing them from 100 to zero all right well we do have our draft getting underway here so game one of our first series. Team Zero taking on G2IG. It's gonna be G2IG playing on the Rain die side. There is that slot up, Ben. They're gonna go straight into the Dragonite and let's see how Team Zero wanna respond. Again, a lot of their openers aren't currently available. They've been doing a lot of the Centaur, the DK. So so let's see. Yeah, we'll see where they where, where they take it. But I have to say, I'm, I haven't done like the top tier Chinese remaining. Dota for quite some time. Like the Chinese region would always Five invade some of these back. qualifiers and I'm really <laughs> glad that that's oh, happening because I, I can see the remnants of the old Chinese approach like I see the Death Prophets, the Brewmasters, the Dragonites and all of them played really really well like this is this is how i want these heroes to be played sometimes like Ten PP, seconds use your ulti, go for the tower please in the china region it doesn't happen they just use it instantly they know remaining. i got my ulti i pop it and that's how i approach it and i'm i've really been loving it but uh we are going to be seeing the keeper of light uh, 70 this is like his best hero probably and it's something that deals with the dragonite beat the mid lane dragonite, Radiant the dragonite team doesn't bad. matter once you get the uh the spirit vessel he is uh he's toast yep i i was i was gonna say exactly the same thing like it seems like everyone against team zero they've been actually first phase banning coddle which i think is interesting the only other team that 
really receives like a first phase coddle ban is PSG Quest yeah, because Noob really... plays it like incredibly well. How do you feel about the hero overall? Because I have some seconds, concerns really? about it. I think the early game's great, but I feel like I've seen the coddle be very lackluster in a lot of games that I've watched. Uh, well, I kind of see him as it's important for him to have that early game, right? I've been loving the early mid game and mid game rotations, especially early mid game. The second he hits level six and the and the earn TPing to the safe lane or the off lane and getting those kills. So I think he's great at setting the tempo, and picked. then you can go with the greedier uh, lane winning off laners as well to capitalize on it. So yeah, the concerns are there, but if you draft well around it, which Team Zero who have played the hero quite a lot Dyer should do, then you, you have no issues Disruptor. whatsoever. What are some heroes you look at then when, you, when you're trying to draw through on the Coddle? Uh, Mars, Slardar, as, uh, as you pointed out that, that they play quite a lot. Um, Ten seconds I remaining. Magnus would be uh, another one as well. So those Five are, seconds those are remaining. the types. Offlaner who can do damage in the later portions of the game if it does come to it. So that's okay. and I would like there to be a stun, right? So Mars is I think the the top tier, which I think G2IG could pick up right now. Cause when you see Disruptor Keeper Light, you catch these guys in the arena and they're just they're just gone. Disruptor uh, pure that's on the rise currently by the by the looks of it. I know Someone earlier picked it actually in three of their games. I can't remember who it was, uh, but one of the games I was looking back on. I cast that, and I want to say it was... Wait, wait, I can't find it now, but I swear I saw someone do it. Oh, it was Kev. That's yeah, right. Kev. Yeah, I cast Ten them, seconds I cast remaining. them, and they, uh, and they did quite well with it, actually, in, in some remaining. of the games. Some of it, it didn't look the uh, the greatest. It was, yeah, it was versus LGD. Radiant team but pick. overall, they did win versus LGD with it. So the idea with the Disruptor, if you get a run at you lineup that has first potential to kill that first hero, the Disruptor is always going to make sense in any meta because this hero is a glimpse. That That's uh, that's how it works. So having a Keeper of Light, Ten seconds he gets remaining. the first kill. Disruptor, you start chasing, you get another one. That's awesome. G2IG, they went for remaining. an approach that I'm not super happy with versus a Disruptor, and that's the defensive approach. I mean, Oracle is amazing versus a Disruptor, but I would always rather have a lineup that runs back at you, right? Something like a tiny. A Hoodwink is fine. And then if you start first on a Disruptor lineup, you're going to crush it. So yep. here, that... Uh, that sentence that is usually correct. Whoever starts the fight fight first is gonna win. That's how disruptor matches basically work. Oh, they've got three range kind of squishy heroes at the moment on Team Zero, and they will kind of fix that issue with the, the Doom getting picked up. So had some decent success. There's also been a little bit lackluster in a lot of games that I've also been seeing recently from the Doom. It's greedy, so I'm I'm fine with it. It's greedy. It can have a blink Ten stun later on remaining. with the uh, with the center war stomp. So I I generally Five like it, and remaining. it might force the oracle to use his ulti in an in a way that it won't provide any heals. I, I don't know if you're familiar how the oracle is uh, done. If you ulti, uh, and your ulti expires before the doom, then of course it won't heal anything. But uh, if it uh, expires Dyer after the Doom, back. then the Doom stopping Templar your healing won't assassin. work at all, as all of the heals are calculated afterwards. So even if the Purifying Flames are going through while the Doom is being on the uh, on the False Promise target, your full heals are gonna be uh, are gonna be happening. So that's uh, you know they both Ten counter each other, but remaining. considering that the Doom lasts so long, it's uh, very hard for the Oracle to wait those couple Five of seconds, seconds before remaining. he uses the False Promise. Oh, we've got a Templar Assassin to outround the second phase here from D2IG, so a little bit of flex for them. Of course, Monet can play it and give it to nothing to say if you want. Do you have a preference right now, though, of where like the, the lane setup's going to be for G2IG? Because there's a lot more flex with them with this Dragonite and TA. Uh, I would rather put the TA in the mid lane. You just don't care about the Illuminate. Dragonite would still be in the versus the Coddle, but he would be slightly annoyed. And it's... Uh, 
I'd say it's better to have a TA there because then Keeper of Light, when he rotates, you are 100% taking the tower. Versus a Dragonite, he can calculate when there is no Dragon form Ten and rotate remaining. In, in those situations, and then your tower kind of stays intact. So I think Five TA constant pressure remaining. is a little bit better versus the Coddle in the mid lane. Okay. Uh, we're going to be looking for some carries, and they do still bend out the Conquer, though, nonetheless, which is a very frustrating hero to play against we've seen this torrent storm still be even after some of the recent nerfs the conquer is first phase material i think you're even mentioning with the yeah, tournament we were doing that. with one win you were saying like this hero needs to be even first phased even more than what we're currently getting yeah i'm a i'm a big fan i i see no reason not to like what is a kunkka counter it is flexible in terms of laning it very rarely loses its lane against any heroes and Ten seconds the second remaining. that the BKBs get low, you are screwed versus this Five hero. Or if remaining. you don't have the BKBs once he gets an Aghanim Scepter, and he's really fast in getting it, especially if you rush it, even if you get it before the Blade Mail. So, in my mind, this hero just provides everything. Plus, a lot of the squishy supports are being played right now. I mean, look at the game. Oracle Hoodwing Disruptor. Rum buff is something that elevates their strength so much. Well, what do you feel like G2 IG are currently missing with their with their draft? What what are they lacking? They need to kind of cover with the the last pick. Dire Let's see. Team pick. You want the, I would just pick. say strong lane versus Omni Knight, and uh, that could be it. But the thing is, are is this an off lane Omni or is it a safe lane Omni? I'm. She have it. people been running safe lane Omni? I, I've only seen it off at the moment. There were, Ten I have seen safe remaining. lane Omni, actually. So, uh, Five quite seconds interesting. Remaining. That's, uh, that's fun. The repel still says it is dispellable, and it is not. I don't know. Ah, uh, maybe. Okay. But I feel like that's a, that's a mistake, that it just cannot be purged off. Because I was watching a game where I was speaking about the Sven with Ag Scepter against the Omni Knight and saying you could dispel it. And then I'm, I, and then I think even Lizard tested it in like demo mode, and it got dispelled. But then in game, it just wasn't getting dispelled, and I was so confused. Um, I actually, uh, me and Milan were talking about it, and he, I told him, dude, it says dispellable. He's like, no, 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 it says dispellable, but it's not. You have to know that it's not dispellable. And then he said, maybe it gets dispelled like with a shadow demon and then we saw the Sven jumping on the Omni and well nothing happening and we tested it out in the uh in the demo as well didn't happen. So I don't know. Dota is weird, but yeah. overall in most cases it doesn't happen. Let's cover our bases here because it it might get dispelled by something and then we're gonna then we're gonna look like we have no idea what what's going on. But yeah it, it doesn't, right? You can dispel the uh the ulti the Guardian Angel nice. but the repel oh. stays there and if it's repel plus the heavenly grace then that's nothing and uh that's a four doom it seems oh yeah yeah it's looking like that's gonna be the case this is a very interesting night stalker pick i mean it looks it looks quite good honestly when you when you take a look at like the the oracle the hoodwink very position based supports your hoodwink likes to be able to play in the tree line the omni knight as well this hero heavily relies on on spell casting it's still maybe a little bit different now with going back to repel but it feels like the silence could just give them you know so much impact throughout the early fights but i'm i don't know how this double melee lane is going to go into ta I, I feel like monate should free farm this lane no uh he will be fine the thing is though night stalker doesn't care if he allows the carry to free farm come in at five you're stronger that's just it you just need to make sure that the ta isn't level six when the minute five is there and you are going to be able to pressure monet at that point, plus there is going to be some Keeper of Light rotations, but I love this because when you see G2 IG and Team Zero's lineups, Team Zero's lineup doesn't want to get crushed in lanes, and it can be, but then you look at G2 IG and you're like, Dragonite mid? Eh. Oracle TA? Eh, the Hoodwink Omni Knight is strong, but Luna Disruptor can endure 100%, and with this, it is secure that the fights are going to long. And if the fight is long with the Night Stalker versus Squishy supports, we all know how it's gonna go. So Team Zero have a definite vision advantage in this game, and you're versus a DA. That's telling something. So 
I think if you keep the traps in check and not fight around them, Team Zero should uh, should have this one. And it's a pretty easy thing to follow in general. Yep. Yeah, so did you, do you feel like this is a bit of a, a draft we advantage of Team Zero? Because I I at least think that game looks a little bit easier to play. I'm just, I, th there's a big X factor on this Omni Knight. Because I've seen it completely take over games and I know JT likes his kind of wonky offlane heroes. Uh, I haven't seen... I, never I said personally I I haven't doing. seen a good Omni Knight. So oh, really? In okay. My mind, the, the hero isn't, uh, isn't that great. I can understand the potential and the burst potential, but I don't see who there is to burst with this Omni Knight. Are you going to find the Disruptor first? No. Are you going to burst the Doom or the uh, or the Knight's Docker? Not really. So, in my mind, I think there is a slight advantage for Team Zero. I'd rather play the. Uh, the uh, Radiant side lineup, though I am a support player, so when I see a Night Stalker, I uh, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that I mean, that's fair enough. Night Stalker has probably been the bane of support players, definitely one of the the worst matchups. You, you would probably be able to your know, list, list five annoying, you know, cores that you want to play up against, and I feel like Night Stalker is always going to be in there. This, though, is a very late smoke from IG, and they're going to be rewarded. A big kill onto YSR. It looks like nothing is. <laughs> but Boku got. I don't know if that was a blood grenade that actually ticked him out in the end. Unfortunately, nothing to say. Doesn't secure first blood. Regardless, though, G2 IG will strike first in game one. Yep, they uh, they got their first blood. I mean, Dragonite is the type of hero that. Sure, if you get the first blood, you're gonna get your bracer, but it doesn't really change much. The Coddle won't be pushing you out of the lane anyways. Uh, imagine how fast forward 70 kills, nothing to say. I'd, I would be very surprised if, uh, if that happens. So, nothing to say is still gonna be relatively fast. Let's not go this, there. Uh, in this game. Actually, that's a, a really solid start for him. But look at this. You, you've hit the Dragonite seven times. He hits you twice, and it's, you take more damage. So we mentioned kind of the, the Vessel build from 7e against the DK. What are we? What else are we expecting from him this game in, in particular on the Kodo afterwards? I mean, bots, then... Uh, I think maybe a 4 stuff. Like, it's... It's what you want to go for. With the Coddle, it's always... You go for Vessel, Bots, and then you have a couple of choices with the Ags, Force, or BKB. I think in this game in particular, the Force Staff is probably the best, because you want to, if somebody gets Dragon Tail, to just get them out of there as, uh, as fast as possible. So force into a uh, Aghanim Scepter could be the way to go for 70. Right, well, we'll look to see how he's going to be able to accumulate those items for the Coddle. We know this is a hero that can pretty much you know, free farm any lane. There's never really concern. And you're going to always try and go back and, and flash farm the jungle as best as you can. So kind of our attention needs to be put on to Baboka, I think, in particular. You're trying to see how many sentries he delivers, trying to see how many wards he also you know, places deep inside Team Zero's jungle so he can contest. It does seem a little bit more difficult, though, for like G2 IG as a whole to invade into Coddle's jungle and contest them, but maybe he can just block some of the camps and be a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, that's why the TA in the mid lane versus the Coddle is sometimes nice because of the traps, but he already did block the main camp for the Coddle, you can see it there, plus the Watcher has been claimed by, uh, by G2 IG, so they're kind of prepared to slow him down. Of course, top lane the lane we haven't seen too much at the moment beyond, like you were saying, you know, the Night Stalker seems to be always pretty happy if you're able to trade even into that level five, sorry, into the five minute mark. Once we see the five minute mark hit though, do we feel like this is a lane with the Doom where they can actually start to put the pressure on and, and potentially be able to find some kills? Uh, they are gonna be very likely to go aggressively and then even the Caudal rotation will, uh, Will okay. most likely come so yes this uh five minute mark is gonna be a time at which ig before they hit level six on monet which is gonna take some time are gonna have some troubles john's in a lot of trouble though bit of a fight for the lotus 
Mane, is he going to be able to snipe him down? Purifying Flames, of course, working back into the Night Stalker's hand. And he is indeed fine. Ponlo even chasing Exnova down, but Scorch Earth has expired. So, decent chunk of harass nonetheless. The Sora actually going to try and turn it back onto Ponlo. And this is going to be another kill by the looks of it. Ponlo just trying to get a little bit of gold before the death. But regardless, G2 IG find their second of the game. The thing is, you lost a full wave there from uh, Monet, so I don't know how oh, worth it uh, that is. I think XNO was saying Monet, Monet creeps, creeps when he was chasing down a Night Stalker. He started going back and he's like, uh, what about a Doom? Right, so they do get the kill. I guess kill for a wave is is kind of okay, though. Neither of them are going to be too happy or too sad about the, uh, the current affairs in the top lane. You're gonna be too sad if you die right now. Beyond, you have to be somewhat careful. I'm really liking the G2 IG are applying pressure right now. If Beyond is low HP when the nighttime comes, then obviously you're not gonna be able to uh, to do much. But that's why you bring us out. What's going on mid lane? Um, <laughs> what's 70 doing dragging the wave? I mean, like, he's being chased down by the Dragonite. This is it, right? The DK doesn't care about your harassment whatsoever. Even the Illuminate connecting doesn't doesn't really mind it. So he's just literally running towards 7e to Dragon Tail him and uh, then deny a lot of creeps. So 7e is pulling the creeps to the side and going for it. I, I still cannot believe that they didn't unblock the camp. This is, this is going to allow the Dragonite to get e an even bigger advantage on the, uh, on the Coddle. Hopefully, Seven is asking for a sentry. And he does actually have one coming out on the quarry now. So we'll be able to unblock the camp. We do have that five minute mark, though. So Beyond Power is going to spike up now. Bracer and a one coming out on the quarry. On the only level two, though. So maybe with his second point in Scorch, Scorch Earth, we might see if X Nova is slightly caught out of position. You know, they're potentially able to deal with the Oracle. What did the, uh, the Doom eat? So he has a tornado. Uh, that's that's a solid one actually to uh, to run people down. It's it's not too bad. They're threatening. Look at Xno. I really love his positioning. He understands that he's a target. Detection? Oh no, detection. <laughs> well, they're gonna try and tick my nade out. They're actually gonna go for Beyond. Hang on a second. ZZQ. He didn't show himself, and now as soon as the meld expires. He's going to pop out, get Pabokas glimpsed away from the map, but no kill. And some time expended. I guess, meanwhile, JT's just free farming bottom. You also have Baboka trying to secure a power in mid lane. So first move from Team Zero is not going to work out. But they didn't bring 7e, and I mean, he's not level 6, the Dragonite is. This is this is actually really good for uh, for Team Daichi Pabokka. Got him. They got TP's on Radiant. They do, not going to be able to expend them. They're actually still looking to top. The ZQ is going to be able to glimpse back Monet. They're easily able to deal with the refraction, but X Nova, I don't think it's going to be enough for the Oracle, especially not with 7e showing up. This is what you were asking for. You wanted the Kodo to rotate. We see it early on, even before the boots of travel. And he's going to get some earned charges too. They might not be done just yet. Glimpse up in a couple seconds, lacking the mana from ZZQ. As a result, X Nova will be fine. Okay. The thing is, though, with the Dragonite having such a good lane, this is this is not amazing for you because oh, look at the trade-off: a ton of stacks and some uh, solid damage to the mid-tier one. So Team Zero are definitely not the the happiest about this. But the thing is, at this point in the game, you're like, okay, we have to do what our lineup does, even if the trade-off is bad or we are just gonna be passively losing the game. So I'm liking it. Just continue going for kills. Through the tower. It is what it is at this point. Gotta say, that is still a concern though, nonetheless, because this Coddle having an open T1 tower very early on, when Coddle still wants to be kind of, you know, shoving the mid lane, then going back in the jungle will make it that much easier for G2IG to invade. And bottom lane, actually, YSR is getting chased down. They even have some assistance coming through from Portal from X who's level 5 already for the nuke, assist them to get the kill. JT, top net worth as well. So this Omni Knight has been free farming bottom. Phase Boots, double Bracer. They were great starters, JT.
Oh man, the burst damage is gonna be insane. Purification, Hammer of Purity, and the Purifying Flames, level 3. I mean, they're, they're just gonna be murdering this these Team Zero heroes. And with the Dragonite, is actually wanting to go for a uh, for a Blink Dagger, but Boca might die here. Ah, he's gone. And he oh. is... Yes, okay. I saw it's gonna be here too. AT will do his best to try and protect Exno with an early level in the Repel. Beyond's actually even gonna rotate down as well. Glimpse up in two seconds should result into a big kill onto JT. This was a member who was top net worth prior, and they actually don't Nova. even need the glimpse for the kill. They want X Nova. Just out of range is gonna be his EZQ. Still no boots here for the disruptor. Maybe Beyond can close the distance and with a slow. Can that Got get him. them in range? It can. Drag back. Another kill. This is huge for Team Zero. They've got the ball rolling now. Triple kill for 7e. E. I think this is Vessel now completed as well. Radiance top tower speed, speed, attack. and more speed. This is how you deal with them. And look at Ponlo. He's a genius. He's just making nothing to say work for this. This is going to mean that this dragon form also won't take the tower down. Meaning that once you get your blink dagger, the tower won't be dead. If the mid lane tower is dead, once you get the blink, it's so much easier to hunt. Now that's uh, that's not going to be happening. So very nice play for Ponlo. His death doesn't really matter all that much. And there's a very good chance that they can actually set up a, a defense on the next Elder Dragon form having this vessel. Uh, this Dragonite is not going to feel tanky at all with the nuke potential of 7e. So you already see Pondlo setting up. You probably will need ZZQ though in this attempt. Uh, that's where the Oracle comes in though. Uh, Fortress Ends removes everything. So the Solar Bind, the Spirit Vessel, all of it gets uh, gets taken away. If the Oracle is behind, I just don't see the Dragonite dying even without the False Promise. So they can't take it. There's still that ward behind the tower in the mid lane that you can use with the Blink Dagger. Might The tower might give you a false sense of security, but Oracle? Ah, pretty speedy, should be fine. Okay. Just relaxing, hanging out. They will try and smoke their team zero, so... What do we got? 70 and ZZQ in combination together. Looking to go down to YSR's lane, who does need to address the catapult wave, and will do so. Dyer aren't actually going to continue to put some pressure on. They seem to be aware of this move. I actually don't know if they smoked under the mid ward or not, but it's a good read nonetheless. It's weird that people are missing from the mid lane. Just before the Dragonite is going to go for his... Uh... For his form for the mid lane tower, so it is, it is very easy to read. Plus, the Night Stalker ulti just came back, and you are kind of aware of it, even if you haven't timed it like exactly. So it was, it was very easy for them to understand what's happening, and you just farm together. Dragonite isn't really that good of a target for Team Zero, so this is, uh, this is as good as it gets for uh, for IG. Plus, there is a Blink Dagger now coming for the Dragonite. If I'm seeing correctly, he's hiding it on the courier, so uh, he will. Uh, once he pushes out this wave, go for a smoke with his team. Let's see where they do look to try and go with the smoke though. JT just farmed a pretty big hard stack. We're almost Echo Saber completed. And it will be to bottom. Looking to try and open up the map. They're going to mirror their own movement. YSR along with ZZQ looking to come pop, but Monet. He's already vacated away, looking to try and take that ancient stack early on, which is going to get him close towards the Desolator. Going to be doing so much damage. Bit of a freebie onto Pond, though. Yeah, it's, it's a blink reveal. You get the Arcane Rune. I don't know if he... I think he did actually use Arcane with the Elder Dragon form, so much lower cooldown. And it looks like the tower will go down. So the trade's going to be there, though. Team Zero, they take top. They lose bottom, though, so in general, this is not good for Team Zero. You're now going to be dealing with the entirety of the bottom map open, with the Dragonite having a Blink Dagger and so much burst potential on the supports. Now it's it's survival mode for uh, for Team Zero, and also it is daytime. During the night, you have the vision, but uh, during day, you are just going to be hunted. So a lot of teams have been using most of their smokes between the 12 and the 20 minute mark. And I think that's what IG should do right now. With the current state of the game, they could elevate their lead to a 
point where it's very hard for Team Zero to fight. So I'm actually curious to see how Team Zero are going to approach this. In my mind, they need to smoke and go really aggressively themselves. It's it's like the, the only thing you, uh, you can do at this point. If you go and farm, you will get punished in the next couple of minutes. They're going to make an attempt onto JT. Because easy Q's just going to see him sending all oh, the static. Oh, the timing. It's not good enough. And JT glimpses are going to be. No, not there. Okay. Ooh, close. Close, yes. though. That, uh, that almost connected. But uh, JT, is, uh, JT is out. I really like, you know, the new debuff immunity. I haven't really watched the uh, disruptor all that much. We saw it with the Kunkka X happen a lot of times that people just get pulled back out of the fountain. But uh, Glimpse is another tool that allows you to deal with debuff immunity. Look at J2IJ. It's actually a, a triple smirk through the portal. Our supports are going to be playing with nothing to say. Radiant are kind of clumped up and I guess no Dark Ascension means they probably aren't going to look to try and take this team fight. Good war though. Great healing. Up say he's going to jump over. Ah, it's just so much damage. And this is before the sharpshooter break as well. The kill from 70 and the pushback as well. Are they actually going to be able to keep Beyond alive? It's not enough. X Nova snipes him down. Nice movement from the boys on dial. That was actually pretty close. That great healing Lotus really coming in handy. 400 HP is nothing to laugh at, but you got the hero. And uh, you still have 35 seconds before uh, before nighttime, but uh, I'm pretty sure that even when nighttime comes, they are going to be going aggressively. They have very aggressive hunting wards around the map. If you look at uh, G2IG, these are all wards that you're going to be getting kills on. Quite deep ward on the, uh, on the top lane. Uh, on the top lane literally and then you have one in the in the river if anybody wants to go for runes and then you control the uh, the bottom jungle anywhere where you want to farm a little bit more aggressively on zero you're gonna get caught Radiant's bottom tower is under attack are you a bit concerned how much c2 ig getting out of this second day time though they got quite a lot out of it, so Team Zero, it is uh, it is problematic for them. But now it is nighttime. I would say you survived, though, right? You survived if you're Team Zero. You didn't die all that many times, so, okay. that's uh, You you are gonna die. That, that That's what they uh, just told this, this Omni Knight. They just used everything on him. Nothing to say. He was so close to death. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. He's gonna be targeted by Erika here, and uh, you have the night vision. Nothing to say. He needs to run. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. We'll be going on Erica. No, they actually decide against it. Smart, uh, smart choice. That could have been that could have been quite dangerous if you go for it. Plus, your dragon I just hit level twelve, so you do have the farm potential to just do whatever the hell you want. I really feel like we we got to see the tempo start to ramp up there from Radiant. I I'm a bit concerned on. Of, of course, it was just daytime. So that, you know, that's a big thing. That was a big thing that was preventing you from utilizing this boots of travel and utilizing the vessel from, from the coddle. But, you know, the this is something you spoke about. You disrupt that you want to be running at people. You want to be getting these kills. And they only have five at the moment. So um, have they got any smokes? I, I, don't, I don't see any, unfortunately. So maybe it's a little bit difficult for them to be able to put themselves in position to take fights. But I don't... Do you want this slow game for them? Because I feel like this is not where their lineup thrives in. Uh, no, but the thing is, they have a bit of an understanding, right? You saw how they used every single spell on that Omni Knight. They just want to get the first kill and then go for bonuses. Unfortunately, G2IG, or unfortunately for them, they warded really well and prepared themselves for these things so that when one hero dies, the other ones get out. And that's how you deal with the uh, Disruptor lineups. If you cannot prevent that first kill from happening, and versus a Doom... Static Storm, Coddle, you pretty much can't. That's where 
you just make sure that everybody else can run away. So G2IG have been have been doing a good job in general, preventing them from giving away that bonus kill. We'll see how, if it gets to a stage with the, the vision being too frustrating for them for something like an early gem pickup for, for Team Zero to help and find these killers. I mean, even Dire, of course, could look at something like that. 17 minutes in though, way too early, but you know, something over the next five minutes or so, people could be uh, thinking. I think that's a good read. When you get the gem here, it's, it's so huge for Team Zero that you take away the vision of G2IG. Beyond. I still have this great lane ward. DZQ's the only one near him. Ah, oh, he's gonna drop a Static Storm, but is it actually gonna be enough to protect him? JT in with the burst damage, and now ZZQ. Wait, Monet actually gets a little bit stuck in the tree line. It's not gonna matter, though. A kill, Dark Ascension use, and this is just a free rush. There's no way you're gonna contest this on Team Zero. Yep, without the Dark Ascension, you, you can't do anything. It's just great warding from, from G2IG. This is this is what set it up. They understood what they were preparing themselves for during uh, during daytime. And they uh, they did everything right. Plus also JT, now with the Omnium, is doing so much damage. As the Echo Saber and the Shard, you just come to somebody and you take half, even maybe 60-70% of their HP away. Yeah, I, I've seen... I've seen kind of two builds at the moment on, on Omni. Some some go this year, Ag Shard, Echo into the Klanda. I've seen Force on Maus. He uh, honestly just really likes Blink BKB. He goes Shard as well, but... We'll see, JT... He goes like BKB second item, top lane. Another free kill. I, I'm getting concerned because you just did nothing with that night time on Team Zero and you have ages now as soon as it's about to turn to daytime the map is going to disappear you're going to lose objective after objective this tier two is going to fall you're going to lose your tormentor ig might even be able to stick around and, and trap the area so you can set up for the the next wisdom as well they got out maneuvered completely uh the gold lead isn't all that high and problematic so team zero still have the luna to fall back on but a lot of their early game, you know, with the Coddle, with the uh, Disruptor, has been taken away. Still, you have the, uh, the later forces of the game, Luna, Night Stalker. You are going to have better vision. They still squish the supports on the side of G2IG. The game isn't over, but it is definitely in a much better spot for, uh, for IG. Radiance top is under attack. There's easy TPR, bottom lane, YSR shows very aggressively at the face of the tier 2 tower. And he's actually going to continue to farm the area. They'll start to TP into the outpost, it will take quite some time. Nice, Manta! Well done! Very ready for that. They're coming though. Viboku's going to try and scurry to close the distance, but he'll be a little bit too slow and actually raiding. Feeling like maybe if G2IG go a little bit too far, they can take the fight and, and they're actually going to smoke at them. That's a smart move, because G2IG now are going to want to disperse, catch all of the stragglers. They read this. JT's already out, not going to try and finish the catapult. Monade's going to start to walk down the stairs. They've got a pretty good scan. Doom's going to be there from Ponlo. And with a glimpse drag back, this is a great way to start the fight, and they need more, though. Beyond Dark Ascension activated, it's going to be able to give them the vision to try and deal with the other members. They need YSR to be able to get the damage out onto Monate as well. They've been able to deal with the refraction. Now they can turn. X Nova. He's going to be ready to keep Monate alive for the first life. False promise committed. And this is the fight you want to take now on Team Zero. Why is that thing so? Eclipse, it's just not enough damage at this damage. stage of the game. Beyond tries to deal with X Nova, but the Oracle will stand strong, healing up all his cores. And in the end, with them alive to act as bodyguards, they're going to be able to come out victorious in that team fight. They don't even lose the ages as well. Very cool reads from G2IG, understanding that when they know exactly where their enemies are, they're not going to be able to maneuver and run around the fight, dodging the TA, killing everybody around them. Monet understands this, just jumps right in the middle of it, and I'm actually surprised that Team Zero took the bait, like, yeah, let's kill the TA. No, just get away from the TA. Run around, try to kill everybody else, the TA is... Like off the table. If you're close to the TA, Monet is just gonna kill all of you. Exactly what happened in that uh, in that engagement. It, it, 
did nonetheless seem like a pretty good way to start for Team Zero, where you, you know, commit and kill the Omni Knight, a very valuable hero on Dyer. But it seems like you also kind of have to catch the Oracle as well as, as a secondary target, and unfortunately they just weren't able to do so. Yep, the, uh, this is just it, you know, these defensive lineups, it kind of seems counterintuitive, but you want to be running forward with them, and uh, that's the thing, you caught the Omni Knight, but G2IG were still capable of running forward, thus keeping a good position, thus protecting their Oracle just with the uh, with the damage of the TA. So yeah, you're 100% you're right. The Oracle has to die. The fights have to be kited around using the vision. And uh, Nero just couldn't do it. This is why you picked the Night Stalker, though. And unfortunately, without having a lot of net worth for him, it is going to be difficult. Because Xnova already has like a Glimmer Cape, he's going four soft next, so he's itemizing to protect himself against the Team Zero initiation. And they're high ground, it's just, it's going to be such an easy siege. Put Monade on the front line, get the tier three tower, Aegis is about to be out in 15 seconds. Just a very like methodical push from G2 IG, not sticking around for too long, not giving the opponent an, an opportunity to be able to find that pick off. In fact, this could be a very interesting fake back. Yep, you want to get that lane of racks before the next night time. That's going to give oh, you wow. such a huge advantage. Oh, that's such a cool jump, but he got the four staff. Was able to get back to the tier four towers at least, but he might still go down the damage from Monet. They're going to buy back, but will they be victorious in the end? The glimpse is there. They'll send nothing to say straight into the beams. It's now onto the back line as well. They're doing an important job to try and deal with the supports which should enable the kill into nothing to save, right? But no, oh. the silence wore out from Xnova. The Night Stalker wasn't able to stay on top of the support. And now nothing to save recognizes he can jump back in and die back on the Disruptor. And they have no response to G2IG in this game one. Oh, Monet is doing way too much damage. This DA pick changed everything because you have physical burst, right? And then Team Zero, they think they can run in and suddenly they get destroyed. And I I'm loving what G2IG did. Team Zero also here understanding you lose that lane of racks. The game is probably over before nighttime. And uh, they're still going to try, but I think G2IG got literally everything they ever Uh, Aluna? Uh-oh. All right. GG. I'm G2 IG not messing around. They learned a lot off that previous defeat from Team Zero, which was the team that knocked them down to the lower bracket. But, you know, they toppled LGD in convincing fashion. They toppled Dark Horse in convincing fashion as well. And they want to get to the grand finals. And with a performance like that, they are one game away now. Just very clean from them, wasn't it? Yeah, very clean. I think I'm I'm going to cry from happiness. This is how you play Oracle lineups. This is I'm I'm just such a huge fan of the hero and sometimes teams they're like, "Yeah, let's just go back." The thing is with an Oracle when you get a slight advantage and you move forward, if you have the damage advantage, you should never go back because that's the only way you lose the game and they understood it as a team here. They're like, "Yo guys, we have this infinite heal." Let's just go forward. There's nothing they can do. And it was literally the case. That fake back for a second thinking, no, 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 we're not doing this. They smoke just to make sure that they don't get pincer to jump from the side. And then they uh, go for the end. That was just awesome, methodical. Like everything from the warding, from the laning setup, from the draft. They knew exactly what they were, uh, what they were gunning for. And everything, literally everything worked out. Yeah, just... Or I mean, a flawless game. Sure, you might look at the deaths, you know, say they have seven deaths, but you know, sometimes that, that doesn't indicate whether it was a flawless performance or not. Sometimes you need to feed a couple kills away just to give them that full sense of security and, you know, to, to tank some of the smokes as well. Regardless, so G2IG, like, everything. They tick the boxes in this game one. It was a great performance from them. But again, we've seen in the past, Team Zero, they have had their number in that upper bracket match. They were some very competitive games and one of them went over an hour long. So it wasn't an easy road for them to be able to bring G2 IG down to the lower bracket, but they have been able to beat this team. But it really seems like G2 IG learned a lot from that previous defeat. And you know, we'll see if they're gonna be able to continue. Our 25 minute victory, very, very convincing from them. Everyone played incredibly well. And you know, we'll see if they're gonna be able to repeat this or if Team Zero can somehow adapt to some of the issues. What would you like to see different though? Heading into game two, is there anything that in particular really stands out? 
But overall, I liked what Team Zero's plan was in this game. It's just that, uh, as you mentioned, G2IG, they they had their number. If, if G2IG played this clean with a similar type of draft, they... I don't think the team zero are gonna are gonna stand the chance but here's the thing how did you uh, win last time the games were longer make sure maybe to get something a little bit more standard and not just chase them around the map and with that standard slow down the game get into the later forces of it so maybe that's the uh, the recipe for success for team zero all right well let's see if they're going to be able to draft that perfect recipe on team zero or if it would be a 2-0 for g2ig all our questions to be answered after a quick break.
A clean and methodical performance from G2IG gives them a game advantage in our lower bracket finals. Will they face Azure in the grand finals or not, Harry Freak? It was a... It's not the performance that Team Zero were looking for. Definitely not the performance we saw from them in that upper bracket series versus G2 IG as well. But hopefully in this next draft, they can set themselves up with something a little bit better. Yep. Let's uh, let's see if they can set themselves up for success with uh, some late game drafts. Or, I mean, drafts that are going to allow them to get there, right? Because G2 IG, ever since they lost, they just ran through everybody. Like, that's literally what they did. So, uh... I'm uh, I'm hoping that Team Zero are not gonna be just the uh, father for G2IG because everybody else in the lower bracket team that way would be very interesting though if we get that rematch. Sorry to say rematch of G2IG and Azure because they played in the ESL One Birmingham qualifiers that went all five games. First game was 83 minutes. Fourth game was 107 minutes. In fact. If I remember correctly, I think this series may have had broke records for some of the longest, Long, uh, the longest, longest series. Longest best of five ever. Yeah. Longest best of five ever. That's, uh, yeah, it did, it did. It was like 5.5 uh, uh, hours of game time and eight hours in total is, uh, is how long it took. Sounds fun. Sounds like a fun time. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll see. Yeah, yeah you did definitely for... Series. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. <laughs> No problem, no problem. Regardless, I think of Team Zero, and it's going to be a, a, a very even one as well. I mean, this is, again, a team who yesterday also went three games versus Azure. So, yeah, we've seen Team Zero. They, they've been able to pull some really clutch victories out of the hat, but importantly, can they do it in this one? We do have a draft underway. We should jump over to that one very shortly. Team Zero are going to be on the radiant side playing with second pick. G2IG on Dyer with first pick again. Slada Centaur. Some of the key strategies that they've been kind of formulating so far throughout the qualifiers is not going to be available for them for a second game in a row. Yep, that's uh, that's off the table. G2IG, I think this time around, they're going to be a lot more prepared than they were in the uh, in their previous series versus Team Zero. I think they might have slightly underestimated them and uh, it cost them maybe pre-game preparation. So they are going to be opening up with the Tiny this time around. They don't have the Dragonite, though I'm a big fan of Tiny. Just the flexibility of it, the way that you can punish a lot of movements as well. That's kind of what they had in the previous game, but it was about power push and then catch. Tiny is the type of hero that uh, punishes you with kills in the early stages of the game before the the towers even fall, be it, be it a mid lane or a, or a position four. Did you like mid lane Tiny at the moment, though? Admiral uh, yes, actually, right? Again, it comes down to the squishy supports. Imagine, like, Hoodwink, Oracle, or CM, or Shadow Demon, right? Th those are the heroes. Tiny, when he sees them, his eyes get all glowy. You see how yellow they are? That's because Ten the supports that are being remain. played right now. <laughs> all right, let's, uh, let's see. Five Nothing to say. I know he's got a, quite a good Tiny. I do have some concerns on the hero if he doesn't like Snowball in the mid lane, but... If you got supports to be able to blow up constantly throughout the game, then it seems like it, you know, it could be a decent reason for you to put him there. We do see that conquer yeah, though, so I'm sure you know, Team Zero, at least, and you're happy as well, seeing the conquer continuing to be prioritized, at least in regards to the first phase. Yep, that's uh, that's the type of hero that allows you to delay the game. Uh, that's the type of hero with which you want to get into the late game. Sure, you can win early w w before the enemies get their BKBs, but the best, remaining. I mean, what we have been seeing the most is you survive through their long duration BKBs and then when they're down to six seconds, you uh, you get super happy and then you're like, yeah, now it's uh, now it's my turn to, uh, to punch you. So that is, uh, I'm a big fan. Plus, this is just awesome flexibility and you want to respond to the tiny being a uh, flexible four and two with uh, with something flexible of your own it just makes drafting easier in general lion well Pondo's gonna get his lion had some pretty decent performances with it so far throughout the qualifiers and a minor thing but you also take it away from Baboka if this was gonna be a tiny mid you know if they wanted to draft the lion later on because I in particular saw a lot of games recently where Baboka is just completely destroying but we will get the tb i don't know if i've heard your opinion of tb support i don't remember maybe you spoke uh, about it one way but i don't remember um at least what you said uh, 
overall, I I like it. It's not bad. Ten I think seconds. the Chinese themes utilize it the best because the real power seconds, usually remaining. comes out from your laning stage Radiant where people team. are not going to expect you not to take damage from the right clicks and uh, you just go level 2. You are the same as a carry terror blade and you just run everybody down with the, with the reflection and the... Uh, and the metamorphosis in the later portions of the game sure you scale sure you shove out the waves and stuff but that's not really why the hero became popular he became popular because you are like a Five ranged bounty hunter in a in a lane right because you you kind of push them away from the creeps with the reflection and then you have this this range of the metamorphosis to kill them. Bounty Hunter also doesn't take damage because he has high armor, right? But then you're just running in, getting stunned up, and ultimately not doing anything. This is just that elevated to uh, to another level. But when I see this Venge, I'm starting to believe that uh, it might not be a support TB. What what happened to the Venge? This hero kind of just it just disappeared. Uh. Mm. It got some slight nerfs, but I don't think that's the main issue. The main issue is people get used playing versus a certain support. Venge wasn't played for like two years, I think. And then it came back to the meta with some buffs. And people got baited in Radiant way too many times. Pick. Swap happens and then you lose the fight. I think that, that happened. Now people are used to it a little bit more. And then you cannot go for it as a, as a first pick, right? You have to have a reason you are picking it. It used to be like, oh, we just pick Venge. It doesn't matter what else we have. Venge is just super strong. It was super strong because people were playing wrong versus Remain. it. Now they know we poke, we poke, we poke, swap. Oh, you swapped out now. And then Five they uh, they Remain. commit, right? They go slower for, uh, for these fights. I don't know if you noticed in this particular meta, the fights have been a lot longer than, uh, than what we had maybe just four or five months ago. Well, back in the corner, though, for Team Zero, which definitely reveals, I'd say, that the Conquer is going to be played in the offlane now. And you've got Seven E's Hero. Probably going to be looking for our position five now for, for ZZQ. What could that be? Like, I would be a uh, CM fan, but then I'm like, they might put this tiny in the mid lane. Yeah. That's cool. Some vision, catch for the venge, uh, understanding yep. who's in the back line, uh, good setup for the coddle to uh, to do the damage. That's uh, that's actually quite fun. He has been remaining. making a reappearance. I think it was Team Zero that uh, that played it versus remaining. yeah, Team versus... Zero and Dark Horse have been playing it too. Yep. I think importantly, the clockwork also enables your range carry for YSR. So I would, I think Drow Ranger probably needs to be considered about a ban next phase, depending if they are wanting to play the Terror Blade as a carry. With that being said, Drow into Tiny Venge and Pango is very concerning, but I, I think teams are regardless are going to go for some type of range here. That's just kind of how they've been drafting at the moment. I do like this this Pangolier though. I think it's a very. I'm nothing to say. Still has been looking incredible after some of those slight nerfs to the hero in the most recent patch. And it's still a bit of a frustrating game nonetheless. I do think X is like with the with the change with the debuff immunity, very good versus Pango and Rolling Thunder and, and Clockwork can be a bit frustrating. Clockwork is super frustrating. You like see the cogs, then you have to go around them. You mm. cannot think, oh, I'm gonna jump over them. No, you're not. You're just gonna get stuck in it. So uh just go around. It's it's kinda annoying, but it's Maybe even nothing to say his best hero. Either yep. way, it's close, right? So he's definitely gonna know how to play how to play around it. And you needed something to have potential to go in and also have potential to do damage from afar. Pango ticks all of those boxes. Okay, so what are we looking for though? They th oh uh, true, maybe this tiny's actually gonna be an offlane. How how do you feel yep. about that? Uh Lion and the Coddle are uh, are heroes that you can burst down, so I'm okay with it. I I like it. It it kind of goes the same way as the uh, as the Omni Knight did in the previous game. So maybe they just like having the uh, 
burst potential on their on their off laners. So in general, I'm a, I'm a fan. We've seen a lot of these off laners or mid heroes being played in the off lane kind of be the same thing as position fours leave the lane. You start farming, you get almost the same amount of levels as a mid laner. So yeah, I I see. Uh, I don't see why not. Pick. And the Weaver Man. Okay, so they don't feel concerned about the Drow, and I must say, honestly, I don't blame them. And they will go back for the Omni Knight. So something they had success on. Is Morphling in the pool? Ah, uh, yes. Morphling looks pretty decent. Oh, it's straight up Morphling pick. I think you hit the nail on the head there. It's Unless you are really super confident, like, yeah, we want to play a Drow Ranger. I don't don't see why you wouldn't just straight up pick the morphing here. Oh, okay. Okay. This is actually here I suggested yesterday, but it was in a very similar position where they were, I thought they were just going to go for some ranged here. So, all right. Let's see. I mean, this is as soon as we saw Moeta introduce the captain's mode, right? There was that tournament of, of Dream League um, and we were getting pretty much Moeta like as a constant response to the Terror Blade late game, you you definitely do without a doubt win this matchup. How do you feel about the hero as a whole? Because we saw the most recent TI and had a lot more success when it was being played as a support. Do you? And that was a while ago. That's been a couple months, and I really have not been seeing where to carry at all. So, where do you think the hero like is currently positioned strength wise? Do you, do you think it's still maybe like undervalued, or do you think people have a pretty correct read on the hero at the moment? I feel like in Dota, when some hero is completely out of it, that it's definitely undervalued because you can always find ways to, to play it. You just don't feel super confident on it and not a lot of melee position fives were being played. So you don't didn't really have a lot of protection for Muerta. But when you get the melee position fives, I think the hero can be... Uh, can be quite strong still i think somewhat situational but you never know how the uh how the meta will develop though on the other hand i'm looking at this baboka tiny it is a first pick tiny and with proper gameplay and just a little bit of uh, lost focus on team zero for a second or two on any of their heroes is just goners i'm i'm looking at this muerta i'm looking at this lion and i'm looking at, at this coddle and in the even in the laning stage, even before the blink comes, this tiny will be a problem for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I heavily agree. I mean, we'll see what Bavok is going to be able to do. Again, I think this style of hero is, is, is always been his best. And I, I'm just concerned, like, you had to go for range here. Like, we saw it coming. You go for this melee position five. Range here versus the Terror Blade always feels great. But they have so many ways to address the range. Venge swap which I think is really just the best in itself. Pain Glee can get on top of you easily. And it, it is not an easy game at all. And you are again down now. You do not have room to make mistakes on Team Zero. One game here, you're out of the Dream League qualifiers. It would be a good run for you, but it would be a little bit too short for the caliber of players that they have on this team. So let's see what they can do. It's a bit of a crafty Moeta last pick. See what Erica can pull out of the hat. I mean, if you delay the game enough, and I think you can, I mean, if you look at the IG, they're not like the strongest pushing team. Muerta gets to that level 20, and you just start shooting everybody down. They continue running at you, and they just die before they uh, before they make it. You have solid protection for you when, when the late game does come, if there's a boat, when there's a... Uh, a hookshot the cogs that we mentioned to to be annoying to nothing to say i still think i would have preferred the morphling in this game but it's possible that they didn't want to play it because of the panga the the mana mana drain and once you get the defusal it's it might be way too annoying for a morphling to to handle Burke is gonna snipe the rune one more one thing to add so with the moeta is that i do really feel like Mueta Clockwork is an incredibly strong lane. You just have like cogs into the calling. It's a really cool combo. Deadshot is very easy to be able to connect on as well as Ponlo's getting chased down. It'll be fine though. They won't continue hunting. But yeah, I, I do really think like Clockwork Mueta is a great lane. With that being said, I haven't seen it into Omni Knight. And I know this hero is a very dumb laner at the moment. So I will actually be keeping kind of close attention to bottom. 
<laughs> I'm glad that's the case. I still live for uh, for the offlane Omni days when with a good Omni player, he could literally smack down a tri lane. Like that that is how strong he used to be. Do you remember the old Degen Aura? Then you're just uh, yeah. running towards them. There are three people and they don't know what to do. They literally don't know what to do against you. I will say I don't miss the Degen Aura days though. That was a bit of a, a boring kind of type of Omni. But there is What's going on in the river as well, real quick? Because easy queues up to some lane pulling shenanigans. I guess Baboka as well is looking a double wave. <laughs> yep, you are two melee heroes at the start. You talked about the strength of Muerta Clockwork. That strength also is in, in level one. Level one uh, battery assault is nothing to uh, laugh at. So you want to make some shenanigans happen. You make shenanigans happen in this lane and you're happy. Sorry, screw. If we baited you to watch a boring ass lane of. Some creeps just bumping each other on the head, and we um, we missed both first blood top lane. So it's gonna be Ponlo that they're able to find it with the help of Beyond as well. That's a uh, that's a weird thing that they got that kill. Like, hmm. it's it's just not the type of lane where Team Zero should be getting a, a first blood because Kunkka and the line don't do a lot of damage early on. So I'm very much surprised. I guess you just wanted to. Annoy them as much as possible with the uh, with the venge, and it, it went south. Is it Q? Gonna be okay. Toss under. He's actually gonna even look for TP. Okay, back to the towel. Didn't lose too many resources in that escape. Top lane now. Beyond. Does get the torrent off at least, but still Dex Nova's chasing him down. The fairy fire, and that's gonna be enough to keep him alive. That's some tangos as well, and a cell from Ponlo. Uh, he saw he needed two more hits, and then he gave up on the kill. Would have taken way too much damage, even if by some crazy chance you get it. So, uh, I like it that Dex Nova just uh, just went back in that situation. Onlo is a very big fan of his C brothers in X Nova, along with along with nothing to say. Every time they keep playing each other so far, again, this is you know two series they've had matchups. There's always. Tipping nothing to say to start the game or all chatting to him and you know X Nova's also getting some some words from him as well. Uh, Southeast Asia beef, best best beef, though I would say that this is friendly. friendly yes, yes, yes. The oh, top lane is going really well for him. Monet? Ooh, got him. Bonlo. Run! Any Duke? Done up in a couple of seconds. Oh He's yeah, genius. Actually, okay, well done. Sometimes the the basic juke is just the next level play. Yeah, he just clicked, <laughs> went into that uh, small tree line, clicked to go to the base, and uh, nobody followed him. And he's gonna be quite happy about it. So, IG, somebody is gonna need to check those ankles. I don't. I wasn't actually paying attention, I don't know if you were as well, but it didn't look like they blocked the camp this time from the Coddle, so already a little bit of a difference we saw previously with them slowing down 7e compared to now. He already has a triple stack at that hard camp. Exactly. Bottom lane actually, hold that. The Boka. Oh, almost healed. Oh boy, that's so much damage. You, you kind of get the toss back and you're thinking, yeah, we got him. And then Muerta and the Clockwork, they just rip you apart. Tiny has zero armor, so he's uh, not really a hero to stand there and be punched. I think I say he's bodying mid, though. Is it supposed to be this bad for the Coddle? Coddle is... Uh, Coddle loses every lane. That That's just how you should look at it. He cannot get a deny. It's just impossible. So every single creep is gonna go to Pango, and then... Ah, the... Uh, the denies... He kind of go here and there, but nothing to say. This is one of his best heroes. Has really good animation. Turn rate pretty much non-existent. Not like the Wisp, but pretty close to it. Like, look at that. And then uh, then you do win the, the mid lane. Should it be this big of a difference? 12 denies? Probably not. But the Coddle comes back with the stacks. So so that's what you do. Radiant are scanning. And we... We're just speaking about the sentry to, to block the camp, and actually Baboke is going to move over and, and not drop it at that camp, so... Up to C70, bring something out to address it. 
Top lane though, I think we're gonna have some action pretty shortly depending on the creep positioning. We've got that another round of the metamorphosis for Monet. And you have the Lotus up as well in 30 seconds if there's a fight for it. So uh, I'm liking that on the bottom lane, Vaboka is already preparing to, uh, to kill this Coddle. They have the level 6 on the Pango. Big advantage, and as a result of that level 6, it means his power rune's gonna be for free, and they will dive. Got him. And Vaboka's already set up for it. I mean, just great positioning. Not even gonna need the Rolling Thunder in the end as well. They can chase down the Coddle, giving the kill over the Pango. So this will be a, a full creep wave that's going to get missed under the tower. Nothing to say will keep the catapult alive. Uh, it's just it's just beautiful stuff from G2IG once again. Not only that, they got the, uh, the rune as well. It's easy. Mm. He's going to give his best to take to defend this tower. Not going to happen. Pono? Oh, Pono? Oh. oh, they saw him. Oh, they'll give me some of the swashbuckle. Shield Crash actually doesn't connect as well. Is it going to matter in the end? It's a pretty big blast, but still not the level 6 from 7e. Block grenade? And as it was... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. That's perfect. You use the Rolling Thunder still with your Arcane Rune active, so you're going to have it pretty fast. And if that ward doesn't get rewarded from, uh, from G2IG, they are going to get the tower and probably another kill on the Coddle if, uh, if you're not careful on Team Zero. Okay, that was uh, ambitious. Oh, and he just gets out of range of the torrent. Okay, off the mark. Yeah, the uh, the mid lane fight Dyer's took too long. He probably wanted to go for attack. the top lane anyways, but people just kept coming. Like, oh, a bonus! Oh, another bonus! So uh, then uh, he couldn't get to the uh, to the rune in time. I, I would say that's pretty lucky for him. Plus, you're getting those kills in the middle. Plus, you probably would have died if you uh, if you went for the for the wisdom rune. And on the other hand, probably wouldn't have gotten it anyways. So how do you... Well, maybe actually Xnog is going to get hunted down and... Yeah, he will. Okay, so... A bit of a freebie here for Team Zero. How do you kind of fix the early game at the moment? It's not like a gigantic net worth lead for G2IG, but... I, I'm very concerned the fact that nothing to say is top net worth going to have a great timing on the Diffuser Blade and, and your Coddle has struggled in this lane. Uh, dealing with the Pango is going to be hard. Uh, it's still better for the Coddle to run towards the Kunkka than the other way around. It's, uh, it's, I don't think you try to kill the Pango, you try to kill the other ones. Well, they're trying to kill Erica down bottom. Double to activate the ultimate and the Pierce of is actually enough to protect him. Now he was 7e rotating as well. We do start to see the burst potential once the solar bind is online. They're even going to try and look for X Nova as well. Should be able to secure the kill. But both supports will go down on G2IG. Nicely done from Erica, being able to react in time with that old T and the rotations were there as well. I'm getting some deja vu vibes here as uh, this is kind of what happened in the bottom lane in the, uh, in the first game as well. I feel like Team Zero are very good at protecting their carries. It makes sense because you go for these range carries, it probably usually needs to happen in your scrims as well. So they've, uh, they've kind of gotten amazing at it and this time around they open up the tower. So this is huge. One thing that G2IG don't have in this game that they had in the previous one is uh, Dragonite, even the DA, very good at shoving out and pushing towers. So uh, I think they need to use Monet a little bit more actively on the map to open it up. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what Monet wants to do. I mean, he did pop that meta, get the kill. He's a little bit actually hesitant on what he wants to do now with the meta activated. He's going to go back and start to beat into the tower. Radiant, Radiant they are in a position where they can defend it. Yon's going to run into Baboka though. I don't know how they read this. Oh, maybe they saw him come through the portal, actually. They do have a ward there. And looks like Beyond's going to be killed off. Nothing to say. Forced to use the Rolling Thunder. But happy to do so if it nets him a kill onto the Conquer to slow down his Scepter timing. Did you not see the, the boat as well? Like, I literally didn't see it. There was no animation. The, uh, oh, no, I didn't see it. Uh, literally a ghost ship this time around. I feel like they, they fixed the Skyrath Mage and then uh, something else has to be uh, <laughs> has to be the issue. 
That sky one was so annoying. That's <laughs> so annoying. It's just like, why can't I see this ulti? I don't know where it's there. Uh, it is. It is what it is. What it is. But the thing is, though, a couple of last games that I've cast, I have seen the uh, the Skyrath Mage ulti. So I don't know if it's permanently fixed, but uh, something is happening. They're working on it. Uh, you know, at least they're, they're they're trying to find a fix. See so J2IG looking for some stacks once again. Uh, very interesting this game. JT hasn't had as good of a game as previously. Lowest net worth out of the cores. He's actually going to be looking for Midas as well for the Omni Knight. So this is the first time I've actually seen him play this far behind in the games that I've seen of the offlane Omni. I mean, you said it at the start, Muerta Clockwork, that is a tough lane to go into. And then when you see Tiny Omni, the only thing you can do is be crafty in that lane. You cannot really straight up win it. Is it cool? I don't know. How will we go down the mid lane? That's big. Can they defend top though? I think so. They are prepared. With the Tango coming in, Rolling Thunder is the, is the strongest spell here. Well, that provoke is at least going to get the combo off before he dies. Run buff is there for Beyond, but nothing to say he's going to do a U turn. It's a little bit slow. Another U turn required. Meanwhile, Ponlo to the north. Oh my god, almost dies. 20 out there. They didn't even TP to base Ponlo. That is crazy. He doesn't need to go to base because he wasn't hurt at all. So he'll be uh, he'll be completely fine. But they did defend the tower. This is pretty huge for them. <laughs> like the shield room. <laughs> Bolo will die still, but he's going to try to TP up. But Boki can get in range. He can avalanche just on the edge. Oh, but that's a clockwork. Even JT wants to come in and yoink it for a little bit of gold and experience. But guys, I'm poor. Give me something and... Uh... Yeah, no change for you this time around. He'll, uh, he'll have to work a little bit harder. But JT has been coming back into the game, and here it is. IG are starting to pressure tier 1s. This is huge. You see that you cannot open up the bottom lane because you already lost your tier 1 there. So you're trying to get all of the hate somewhere else so that you can maybe, in the uh, in the long run, pressure that, that bottom lane as well. And look at that. You have a ward in the enemy triangle. I don't know if Team Zero can get here. From the bottom lane, they still could and probably should. How concerned do we need to be, though, the fact that YSR has been uncontested this game? 1-0-1, 101 last hits. It's having a very good game. It's sometimes hard to assess it with a hero that's not being played too much, but overall, like, my experience with Muerta is this hero can sometimes just surprise you with the amount of damage it does, so you should be somewhat concerned. But the timing of Muerta is still not close, so uh, you, can, you can think about it later. Do they see the smoke from Team Zero? They're going to be too late to contest it. So the stack is taken. Maybe they can take a team fight, though. Nothing to see in the river. Up to smoke. Now, x is going to be in a great position to swap him away. So the initiation goes a little bit wayward. They will still get the kill onto the Venge, nonetheless. But they would have loved the juicier one. I, I like that G2IG decided not to fight that. The second you see the instant swap, that, that's it. They're not even trying to bait. And this is the response. A pretty good one at that. They're gonna be able to get a kill to be on. His game just continued to, to be slowed down here from the offlane conquer. Importantly, JT gets involved as well. Nothing to say he's having an incredible game, uh, uh, you mentioned as well. I mean, this is, you definitely would probably say he's, if, if you don't want to say top hero, like best hero, you could say top three, and very easily. And he is showcasing that without a doubt this game. I believe this is Blink Dagger completed, and yep, it is. G2IG are just playing amazing Dota. I think that this is the way the Team Zero do win, though. They are, you could say, delaying the game. The It's not super aggressive from, from G2IG, but that's before Baboka gets his blink dagger. That's when things can change. Beyond, not again. At least he's got Ponlo nearby. Great raid from Ponlo. Actually disrupts that try and uh, attempt the toss back. And Babokas will get the X connected onto him. They won't actually try and take the fight, so Rolling Thunder's on cooldown. Nothing to say, it's just gonna poke. JT might be able to get in with a purification as well. This is not an easy kill to Provoker. X Nova might swap too. No way. Provoker's gonna live. And at Team Zero, they've over positioned, but they're a little bit hesitant. X Nova wants to go, but everyone else 
doesn't have this capability at the moment. Without the Blink Dagger on Boboka, Team Zero will be able to get back to the T2. Bolo preparing for a swash buckle forward. No! You can't go in first! They're just so okay. Nothing to say. There we go. And this is a prime location for him to use the Rolling Thunder. Dude, Harry Freak, what are they doing these team fights on IG? Like, they just look so clean. The read from them to slowly kite back and just spam Swashbuckle, have Baboka bait, bait. JT comes back in, keeps him alive. X Nova swaps him out. And then they've got the read they can jump. And then again, they get to the T2 tower. They recognize this is too deep for us. We can't get any more kills. So they go back to the triangle. And then as soon as the Coddle runs up the stairs, that's the opportunity to use the Rolling Thunder. Like, their read on fights, it's just top tier. I mean... You, I think you cast the series between these two where Team Zero won. I don't know how they won. Like, IG are playing amazing Dota. That is just, their tactic is great. Their team fighting is literally like team spirit. It's, it's insane, right? They are poking, poking and waiting for a perfect opportunity to strike, as you mentioned. It's just not easy to do. They're playing around their vision. They're finding the right targets. And when you do that, you are going to force your enemies into mistakes. This is why Zero are making these mistakes. Beyond. There's the bank from Popoka. Is very deep. And maybe they can punish for this, though. Or it's actually gonna fly over Baboka, and That's again, nothing. look at JT just protecting the tiny. It's all up to YSR. But what is really the most they're gonna be able to do at this stage of the game without the items to turn the fight? Nothing to say. We'll be able to control Just it. Just be careful. It's a, it is a bit messy though. Monet needs a Sunder target. They're gonna swap him out to safety. A big kill into nothing to say inside the lane. They need more though. It looks like they'll find it. Baboka, can they cancel his TP? They will be able to. Okay, that's how they won versus them, I guess. It's be, They delayed and uh, Erika just did so much damage. It's insane. He stands his ground, he kills the Pango, and this is what you have to be uh, have to be afraid of. The new debuff immunity doesn't protect you completely from the magical damage, so inside of the Pierce the Veil, you still take a massive amount of right clicks from, uh, from Huerta there in the Rolling Thunder. That's pretty much what won them the fight. If the Pango was able to survive, it's a completely different story as you can continue poking, and then maybe you don't even lose anybody, but uh, this is it. This is what IG have been trying to do, though, for the majority of this game. Get Erika out of the bottom lane so that you can open up that part of the map and uh, they have uh, they finally done it but it does come at a cost yeah in, in those games that team zero did win as well the game one they did have a bit of an outdraft but they they won because g2 ig threw their lead it was like 12,000 lead and, and they just they threw it and then that's when the outdraft really started to reveal itself like the late game was that they, they just got outplayed in the early game and it was in same in the second game as well like g2ig had a clear advantage in the early game and they just lost a couple of fights so it seemed like this is four games in a row now between those two teams that g2ig have just led from from start to the middle but it's just a question of you know if they start to continue losing some of these fights we've, we've seen what team zero can do in the late game and uh it's looking good for them. Huerta is at the top of the network chart. She is gaining Radiant levels fast. Down. It is level Sunder 20 attack. when this hero becomes insanely dumb with the Gunslinger talent. And uh, they want to fight again. Oh, Eric is going to be kind of careful though. The Boca on him. This is perfect. Toss back. Peace to Veil. They're not going to have all the AoE damage. They need to guide this. Mother says in a bit of an awkward it's position. Tough. Hookshot's going to stop him from escaping. And they get the X. I just swap. want to X Nova now. Okay, they're actually going to be able to get rid of it thanks to JT's repel. And Monet is out though. Monet wants nothing to do with. And nothing to say, unfortunately, he's not going to be successful with the TP. And all right, we are getting to that stage. You, you start, you're having a couple messy fights from G2 IG. And this lineup on Team Zero is going to be a threat as this game goes on. They started to panic. They started to panic because Zerika was is having a great game and they're really forcing the issue on the on the Muerta that they currently just cannot kill. Just let her go and do it. Which is 70 not gonna go down in fact. Meanwhile there's also a bit of an attempt onto JT's life up top. 70's gonna even help out while he's escape escaping a gank on his own. Swap, 
Big team is not. Oh, it finally they get the kill. Merc is still making a attempt onto 70, but with the haste on the Coddle that does now expire, he's able to limp away on a slither of health. Monet trying to chase beyond down in the tree line. If they get the vision, X Nova has a stun. They won't get it. Nice plays there to to go for TP4, and you don't want to go for the. Uh... For the wave of terror immediately, I don't even know if he had it. And then you, uh, you just don't see, you don't see him. You don't have the vision. Things are working out for Zero. They're, uh, they're actually getting everything they want. I was very much praising G2IG very recently with their ability to take team fights, but. Now at the moment, it seems like Team Zero are doing an even better job as well. Like Eric is positioning, everyone else is always ready to be able to protect the heroes once G2 IG jump in. Oh, they seem to have underestimated the damage that the Muerta can do. So they, uh, they are trying to go for the hero, thinking that they can kill her. She's, she's not squishy whatsoever. Then you go for Pierce the Veil and most of your damage is physical. Gonna get it, yeah. There's the uh, the shards, pretty solid shards for the uh, radiant side. Pretty uh, useless for uh, for G2 IG. Uh, I always see it as tiny as the shard. It's like, yeah, he's just gonna be worth more gold to the enemies. It doesn't really do anything for him. The only thing I usually say with tiny shard is that uh, maybe it's your know, extra hundred damage for his nuke. He doesn't even have the true grab level up because he's on stats. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 that said something. Oh boy. Weird though, Baboka is a Monkey King player. He should like to kill couriers at least. So having one point in the uh, in the tree grab should should allow it to do that at least. I'm a bit surprised even not one point. We do see it very often in the lane, but potentially this was just a lane where he felt like he was never going to be able to utilize the, the tree I'm oh, I remember he started off him. with the toss in the in the river to secure the second bounty rune for his team so that's why he uh, he never got it recall from radiant no one will be around bottom it does put them in a position where they can set some vision down and they're actually going to try and look for Roche themselves so it does seem like this is terribly going to go scout or does he just want the wave he may have got a glimpse of YSR. Never mind, no pings come out, so... By the looks of it, it's a free rush. G2IG have a, a completely different read. They're wanting to try and go into the triangle of Team Zero. They weren't expecting this. Usually, you're like, yeah, they don't have a good Roche lineup. Muerta kills the Roche so fucking fast. There are some things people forget about. Muerta, how fast she can kill the Roche. OD also is one that, that people don't think about sometimes, and then they just see the Roche going down. You had a problem killing, killing Eric uh, thus far, and uh, now it's it's going to be even tougher. G2 IG, they need the long fights. They need to draw them out. Oh, Baboka. Really nice angle with the tiny up on the high ground. And 70 is going to go down. Scotty metamorphosis timing for Monet. Oh, Pretty huge. I feel like maybe the Terrible should just keep his Sunder to Sunder Muerta before uh, there's a BKB. That could be a way to play versus this hero. The thing is, once the Aegis expires, you are probably going to have it already. A lot of people do TP back on Team Zero for top. So G2IG can have full control of the opposite side of the map now. What have we okay, Omni is going to be going for the Phylactery. So it's still going to be the uh, the burst damage build, just not the one with the Echo Saber. I... I really would like him to have a BKB, to be honest. I think that it gives him so much survivability. And I don't know if he's actually going to do much damage this game without him kind of snowballing. Yeah, it would be cool to, to get it. You get the BKB, you jump in and you kill the lion. You just ignore everybody else. That would be fine. No, maybe. Wow. Very interesting bots build. What? They want to outmaneuver them. I think that's the idea. Outmaneuver the opponents around the map. The mobility of G2IG is solid, and you are the ones that have the terribly delusions to shove out the, the waves more uh, 
It's safer. Zero, I'm moving across the map trying to sweep with the smoke. Who are they going to run into though? I th maybe this high ground ward scouted at X Nova. A great read though. Again, G2IG able to avoid another attempt. Team Zero won't catch anyone. Uh, it's not always easy to read that the enemies are baiting with the uh, with the carry on the top lane. You can just think, yeah, they are covering for her in the uh, in the jungle. So G2IG just covering their bases, and this is a fast smoke. So Team Zero, this is the the second where you need to uh, start getting together. Is do they feel confident enough to jump on Erica? Uh, they hesitated. At the back, and they got a great ward behind him as well. Pollen would be a great hero to start. Awesome. They'll get rid of a little bit of the control. They did pop the meta though. So you need more with the meta activated. They won't find it. Uh, Team Zero, a bit of a mistake, I'd say, from when it was definitely not required. Oh, he's still gonna go. Maybe swap the clockwork down. Not gonna matter actually with the vision and when they damage. Not that a save and rolls up, but Boku even finds an angle for the jump. Toss down. Beautiful. And 70 is just going to get ripped apart. Still alive momentarily. And is this a high gun you want to run up to? Because Erika is set up. Meanwhile, the hook shot as well. Clips onto nothing to save. With the axe shot roll up, he gets some separation, but it's not enough. No so more Pierce the Veil. Committed. It's all or nothing now for G2IG. If they can avoid the Pierce the Veil, they should be able to kill Erica a second time. How do you keep him alive on the respawn? Warren Storm is there. Warren's going to get laid down as well. It'll buy some valuable seconds. No more meta. Matter. But they charge it through the middle. BKB activated. And now the buybacks, they will come in huge. Pomlo is going to be caught. And they will also catch up to Beyond. Oh, get on top of the center. Oh, he tried. Oh my God, that was close. And the thing is, they didn't wake the center up immediately. They were just focusing the uh, Kunkka fighting next to the center. These guys like, <laughs> and then they uh, decided to punch him once. Still, it was uh, a little bit too late, but I'm still glad they, they remembered to do it. And uh, Kunkka barely gets out. That was just beautiful. You wait, the Pierce, the Veil out, and the Terrorblade is going to annihilate Muerta. That was through the run buff and without a metamorphosis that he was able to, uh, to destroy Erika. So G2IG. They've shown us some really good movements in team fights in this game thus far, and this was the the best one yet. Does need to be said though, it was a costly buyback on nothing to say. He's still looking pretty in the net worth, but that was a big one, and we have seen throughout these fights the damage from Weta even into the Rolling Thunder. Nothing to say is just getting blown up. So he does have to be pretty cautious of how he's about to Radiant's to play this game. Is under attack. I'm, I'm thinking maybe you even get an A on disc at some point in this game on the on the pan. You roll in, you force out the appears the veil, he starts smashing you, the A on disc pops, you get yourself out, and then G2IG uh, go in again. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that does happen at some point in the game, but for now he's going for a BKB and I like it. That That is going to allow you to not have to roll in Thunder at the start of the fight. They're smoking up down to the bottom. Mimo Pondo with the Invis just in the wrong position. They're going to be able to catch up beyond. The valuable core. That should die pretty quick to the pure damage from JT. The passing honors the omniscience. I'm still surprised about the, about the burst of the Omni. I don't know when that's gonna stop, but it's kinda dumb. Like he's half HP. Oh, this uh, move, there's maybe there's gonna be a third round boat and anything, and boom. Omni Knight kills you. And it's not even like this is not like a top net worth Omni as well, where he's you know got like Echo Saber and Kanda already to, to highlight even more of the burst. I just wait till we see like that perfect game from him. <laughs> yeah, we, we got shown the uh, the pure damage there. It, it's one of those situations when if you're the Kunkai, you're pinging the damage done to you, to the uh, to teammates. Like, how the hell did you die? This is, this is how I died and it's not fair. Well, they're ready for anyone to show for the swap back or toss back. These are really the, the key things that G2IG have to play this game. We've seen multiple times the repositioning has been pivotal for them. No one will get caught out though on the defense. So G2IG are going to break formation, go back to, to continue farming. We might have this game slow down a little bit as we wait for that second Roche. 
Muerte is gonna be level 20. Muerte is gonna have the Daedalus on the uh, second row, if it's just a little bit longer. And that's where nothing to say in his Rolling Thunder is just gonna get annihilated. It's it's gonna be impossible to survive the damage this Muerta will be doing. It does kind of seem like she's on a bit of a timer inside some of the team fights, and at least that was what we saw in the fight by the the bottom sorry by Dai's triangle whereas like you said you know when when peace of Vale was over g2 ig just went back in straight away so he probably is he probably needs to at least get two kills with this ultimate otherwise it might not be good enough mm, yeah i think so the thing is though if you get one kill and all of your teammates are alive then it's fine uh, then you're okay, but it's it's more pressure on him definitely. You mentioned Monet getting the metamorphosis out, but the thing is, even once you get the metamorphosis out, you have these 40-50 seconds to work with. Muerta has uh, a much lower time frame in which she uh, she has to get things done. But then again, the heroes from G2IG they want to run towards the Muerta. Nobody wants to run towards the Terrorblade. It's just an illusion. Don't go for it. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Happens. Yep, but that yeah. was a smoke that sets you up for success on the on the next row. So G2IG are gonna be very mad about this. They now won't be able to get good positioning, good vision on uh, on that part of the map. Okay. Counter smoke into an AD rune. This this is so, so dangerous for both teams. The Muerta can rip apart one side in a second. The uh, Terrorblade can rip apart your team in a in a second. So it's just who gets the uh, the better jump. And Zero have the advantage here because of the clockwork. But fortunately for G2IG, they uh, they still had one smoke to uh, to play with. The big thing for me is going to be no Daedalus on one eight. Compared to Daedalus Radiance middle tower on Erica, you do have DD, but quarter duration left. Gonna expire. Still getting a good angle, and that's a good place to fight for a Fango. Who's ZQ? Smoke's gonna pop. Avalanche onto two. It's not the greatest start though. Piney is unable to get the toss back, and Monet commits everything. That's meta BKB and Rolling Thunder. I mean, you're so happy if your team's here. You're just gonna reset, wait for these things to expire. Ooh, I like this call. Look at the lanes. It's it's the lanes are in a really good position for uh, for G2IG. Even if they would lose the Roche, you would have so many chances to catch the uh, the opponents. Some tough decisions are gonna be made from Team Zero, and they are gonna be cursing Lord Gaben for uh, for not spawning the Roche earlier. Nate's actually even gonna send the high ground. On low? Did he tip it to the low ground? Oh no, <laughs> I don't know what happened. Snow, but he's gonna get chased down. Let's swap. They got hook shot, they do. ZZQ, can he find the angle? Over the right side, Monet got caught though. Just off the JT. Is he able to get in range though, JT? Nice. I'm not able to do so. Big, big kill for them to find. Now they're still going to try and catch more double four stuff. Eric, you're in and he's not going to mess about. The rocket flares from ZZQ are amazing, right? And here, finding the two supports, making sure that they both die is a huge deal because you have to deal with the waves. You cannot just go instantly for Osh. You deal with the waves first and then you set yourself up for, uh, for success. I'm not quite sure what happened there on JT. I don't know if he went... F it seemed like he went for the Guardian Angel over the, the Repel to protect the Terror Blade. I don't know if it really would have mattered if he got Repel off, but... Uh, I think it would have mattered because the Cog pushed back and the Blinding Light wouldn't have been there. But there was a chance that it was a cooldown. That's <laughs> <laughs> fair. That's not fair. This, with this, you actually secured yourself that you're gonna have a slight advantage on Roche. Plus, it's a dire side Roche. I really want to see the buybacks. Buybacks for the dire are gonna be very important in this uh, in this fight because you are the ones with the uh, with the outpost. Importantly, Eric is a little bit too slow to actually get to the pit, so they're already not starting Roche. 
Even if you start it, if you want to kill it super fast, you would need to use the Pierce the Veil. So it's much better to just wait. The ward will expire, though. Mine's back alive as well, but it's going to take some time for him to get there. I think they... Hey, they know. Yeah, they, they're going to see. And it's the vision? Over to the scout, JT to jump. IV5 once again, Pondler's going to rejoin through the portal. Good lane positioning for Team Zero in the bottom lane. That's, that's the important part. So they feel confident to go for a fight on their own terms. Aggressive posturing. Rewards have been committed from G2IG for this Roche fight. They know how important this is for the status of the game. Poke. An aggressive jump in and nice. Pokey will. Gets the BKB out. out. Exit will drag him back. They're gonna need to swap, but it, it's far too late. Why did he no BKB? Back. I don't know. What was he thinking? Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Drag it on. Boy. This is a rough one now. G2IG have to approach it really, really slow. They want their Omni back. Still have that great ward as well, actually, from, from Radiant. That sees Monet. On there with a, a blind stun into the trees. No one's going to get caught. Now, for Poker as well, is going to miss the initiation as well. Messy, messy from either side. And X Nova, he's going to be punished. Time to go. He commit meta, and it's just out. Uh, they know this is not a fight. They're going to be successful. Oh. And unfortunately, the hook shot just eclipses his teammate. Nonetheless, it will be Roshan, though, that does go the way of Team Zero. 7E just made such a huge blunder that couldn't be the only reason why G2 IG are in this game. That would have been a Terrorblade without a buyback and like maybe even a lane of racks. But 7E is like, no, you cannot hookshot him. We are, uh, we're gonna fight fair. So still, it's an Aegis cheese. The Dire Side Roche much more valuable than the one with the banner, which uh, nobody cares about. So Team Zero in, uh, in a really dominant position now with this uh, with this Roche fight going their way. And it all started with JT not popping his BKB. And I really, really don't know why. Stakes at this level of gameplay that will cost you. Team Zero, like we said, this is a team who's looked very, very solid in the late game. Especially with their victories against G2 IG. You've got a Hex now as well for 7e. Bash of angle. That changes things. That really does change things versus the uh, Muerta Pierce the Veil. You go for the Rolling Thunder, you might be able to keep Eric in place for a very long period of time. This is something that equalizes things now in the uh, in the later portions of the game when it comes to team fight. On one side, you have the the Thorn Storm and the boat, but the Rolling Thunder with the Nagon and Scepter and the uh, and the Bash is uh, just as good. High ground is not easy though with swap and toss back. The reposition again is they have been not really executing it in recent fights, but it is still something that is going to be very difficult for Radiant to overcome. There is only one Yule Scepter on the other side, so I think Xing the Muerta and her coming to the high ground and doing some damage is is a possibility. If there's an, another Yule Scepter on, on G2IG, then not really. And another one might come out. But I just don't know who would buy it. I would actually not mind the angle getting something like a Wind Waker in this game. I agree. I, I, I wouldn't mind the Wind Waker after the, after the Octarine. Anti Yasha. Okay. Yeah, the Yasha, and then you're versus a Lion, so it makes sense that you're going to be going that route. If you do get caught, you do need the status resistance. Manta wouldn't really be all that uh, important for you versus a Muerta. The Gunslinger kills it instantly. Illuminate, Torrent Storm, the uh, the Lion killing the Illusions. Like, every single hero does well with it. Okay, Muerta has a refresher. Muerta is stacked. 
Uh, this is oh, wow. uh, this is dangerous territory. That's a very long pierce the veil that you're gonna have to wait out. 16 seconds. I don't think you're you're living through 16 seconds if you're G2IG. Nice preparation for the late game here on zero. They see JT top with the ward. So I don't know if maybe they can make a jump in the base and at least force him back. Do they even feel safe though? Is the question. There it is, going for the push. You don't want to be pushing the mid lane versus the tiny, but uh, the side lanes, he cannot really pass you into tier 4s. It's very hard to do. Okay, they're actually going to repel him to try and find the toss back. They'll get it. He's up and active to PKB in the Pierce the Veil. And now you just need to get out. Guide her as best as you can. You're doing it well. Pressure use. Monet pop meta, actually. Monet. Ooh. Have a toss back. Roka, is he actually going to be able to stop the retreat? He's not able to. Instant response. JT's going to get melted. X is there from X Nova. But they just can't bite into the Muerta. They don't no, no, have the, the capability. Boat's even just going to randomly fly out as well. And Eric is just no stopping her. It doesn't seem like there's going to be any response, but Boca will do his best. It's a pretty good combo of the three. No Pierce the Veil. But it's all up to Monet. We need to see the meta damage, but it's about to expire from the Terra Blade. Why is off the respawn's going to be fine? But Boca's blink's getting cancelled as well. Nice. Should be able to slip one out of danger. That's just beautiful. Tiny forgot that uh, he didn't have the repel in that second jump. And I'm really liking that Ponlo is focused even after the fight is, is so long. He understands what he needs to do if the Muerta got tossed back there again. What the hell is this? Like, nobody's doing damage. Only Muerta is. Dyer are scanning. Getting going in by the looks of it. I mean, they have Pierce the Veil once again, and he has a shard. This is, uh, this is a lane of Rags gone. Not gonna say. Going in. We're gonna have pretty decent it's not gone. Why, so uh, it should be able to deal with the buildings, but the chain control without the beak, and be stopping him from right clicking. They're gonna lose it currently before the sun. Uh, buy back for what? No meta, and no barracks to defend down bottom. For both of those. Flips them on the retreat. It's such a costly investment for Dyer. They, have a they need to get more kills and they just will not be able to do it. Late game Oeta. We haven't seen this here in a while. But she's still showcasing the true strength of her. Nothing to say. He's gone. Oh, maybe not. Why so? BKB activated. Stand strong against the damage from IG. Here's the veil back. It's back online from an eight. I don't think it's going to matter though. Push further into the middle. A great swap from X Nova. Keeps Monet alive, but the damage has been dealt. YSR will send us to a game three. <laughs> the terribly lifted his arms there to go for a Sunder. That was quite dangerous from Erica, but uh, still the damage is too much. It is too freaking much here, Aries. Are we still are we still doing this? Not gonna say <laughs> Okay. Let's go game three. <laughs> I mean, he wanted to go I for one last ride. Very nice performance. Really insane. I I do wanna say though, G2IG, they panic. They panicked at one point and they were thinking we have to kill the Muerta, we have to kill the Muerta Even though uh, they weren't ready to go for it just yet And then they they dove a couple of times on the hero unnecessarily Every single time the response was there Like Team Zero, they knew exactly We protect this hero, we protect this hero, we protect her every single time The TP is being used only to protect Erika And uh, I mean in the end he delivers, he definitely doesn't disappoint So G2IG, I still think they should have the advantage here Their movements in the early mid game, mid game are better than those of Team Zero but Team Zero are are looking like the type of team that force you to uh, to make these unnecessarily aggressive moves. Yeah, yeah, that they are, sir. 
good to see them being able to bounce back as well from that previous defeat and it really seems like if they can my concern is the early game from them though this is four games if we include the previous series as well against g2ig that they have really struggled post laning phase and and in that early game with the movements across the map g2ig just potentially the experience and just the map knowledge for them and how to play that seem to be doing just a little bit better. So if we can get past that stage, they seem to be doing very well in some of these mid-game to late-game fights, but it's just a question of can we get there? Yeah, I mean, they did manage to do it now three times already in this uh, in this close qualifier, so I don't see why not. G2IG, they are going to have to be very, very careful about making even the smallest of mistakes. I think there are enough heroes for uh, Team Zero to go for, that you cannot ban them all out, that the late game cannot be in their favor. And G2IG, they like to play this tempo Dota even more. So I think just put a little bit more focus, a little bit more uh, clean of an approach and you'll be fine. I think maybe you get a hero that can push down towers. Dragonite, Death Prophet, those kind of things, so that you know what you play around, because that bottom tower surviving for as long as it did, did give uh, quite a lot to their opponents. Yeah, that it did indeed. So in the end, for our lower bracket finals to determine who will face Azure in our last series in the grand finals, we get to go game three. A decider match between these two incredible teams. Is it going to be the boys on G2 IG in the grand finals or will it be Team Zero that get their rematch versus Azure? Well, we're going to have to find out first a quick break, but when we come back, we've got game three. We'll see you guys soon.
And our lower bracket finals is going the distance. A 1-1 one, one tie with a game three decider on the line. Harry Frey, from game one and the game two victory as well, do we feel like there's a side you would at least, you know, pre pre draw pre seeing what heroes are going to be played, maybe give the, the slight advantage to heading into this final game? I always look at the early mid game, mid game as the most important part of dota in general this is where dota is being played right so i would still think g2 ig they have an advantage in that one but across the years in the china region they have always been good at delaying the game and i think that's the the part that team zero does pretty well in this one reaction they're pretty reactionary they know what's gonna happen when they're gonna get struck and uh, and how to deal with it so i think if that part g2 ig can uh, deal with that they've got this no no problem all right well let's see let's see what the what heroes are going to be able to set themselves up for success with we do have a third game draft getting underway g2 ig going to be on the radiant side playing with second pick team zero on the die side with first pick Five already seconds. Remaining. Some slight changes. Slada is actually going to be let through the pool. So, again, I'm pretty sure Team Zero have only played it once, and that was versus G2 IG, and they did not first phase it as well. So, I really wonder if this is something maybe they're going to up the priority. I don't think it's a first phase worth like material hero, and they also feel like that is not the case with the Conky getting picked up. Yeah, so what was the trade off? What did you ban on G2 IG? They. They got rid of the dragon. The DK. I yeah. feel like you Ten should have let that remaining. one through, right? And then they get the DK. You can Five get the conquer yourself, which remaining. isn't too good versus the Dragonite, but you have other responses to this hero. And I think it would have been much better on G2IG than it would be for, for Team Zero. So uh, they are... I guess everybody's still afraid of that hero. It just feels too strong sometimes. What is their response going to be there from G2 IG? You know, it could just be from like support, Crystal Maiden, Rana, Lion though, is what's going to be picked up for them. So I think I've, I've there was some games that I watched from G2 IG in the qualifiers where Boboka would just like, I don't know, so it just had some stupid performances on the Lion where he just carried them. Yeah, His spell casting on this hero is incredible. In terms of mechanical skill, Boboka has always been hella impressive ever since he uh, he first stepped into the scene in 2017, I want to say. But uh, yeah, I like the line versus the Kunkka because even if you get caught by the X, if you do have a shard, you just start draining some mana and uh, while you are kind of protected from anything also you get x you get onto the high ground see the creeps in the in the jungle start draining the mana from one of them that uh, he doesn't pull you back all of those things can can make a difference so i uh, i like Ten it seconds remaining five seconds remaining i love the lifestealer ban as well so g2ig if they would be able to just stay in one lane without ever being threatened to get pushed out of it the dragonite is banned the uh kunkka is in the uh in the fray so lifestealer would do amazing in that one the reason i'm mentioning the dragonite is because even though the lifestealer deals well with the dk in general if he gets on top of him dragonite is good to uh get the towers down right and that's what the lifestealer doesn't like for a mid lane dragonite to rotate to his lane and kill his tower pre 10 minutes so i uh it would have been a perfect one for for g2ig Just got the pick, okay. Ready to do heading into the, the second phase, so potential for them just to go again their secondary support. Wouldn't be surprised if this is a route they want to look down. Do you how, how do you feel though about teams going that going like their two supports to open a draft? It's okay nowadays. I feel like you don't really punish the supports all that much it's more about are we gonna be able to get the cores that we want that i think currently in the draft that's more of a concerning factor than your supports in general getting uh remaining. getting punished by the uh by the enemies but the prowl beast quite nice so remaining. you have a lot of lockdown from the line you have a billion damage 
from the uh, from the primal beast it's a hero that gets a bkb relatively early into the game which is great versus a uh, versus a kunkak who is very very annoying to you so this um this pick makes Dyer sense they say like clockwork here on zero something that they've increased priority on and i think clockwork was primal and lions quite solid they're actually going to go crusamate and marana together so a bit of an interesting support duo because i think we've seen predominantly the moran has been played as a five although i know that's a bit different from zero ponlo does play it uh it, it depends on the team it really does depend on the team you have really good setups for the arrow i think that's what they're uh that's what they're gunning for but this puts even uh even more emphasis on this primal beast i wouldn't even be surprised no matter where it's played if it's uh mid lane or off lane primal beast you just go first item bkb and you destroy the oracle is an amazing one here it's also really good versus the kunkka but then you purge off the uh the crystal maiden frostbite you don't care about any of these heroes they pretty much do magic damage all of them so the fate's edict is gonna be so impactful and then the the gyro so you are buffing up the gyro and if you look at heroes of team zero the crystal main and the marana they just die from the uh from the flak cannon this is quite nice you need to deal with the gyro with your uh with your next pick here if you're zero 10 seconds remaining and you feel like often a way to address the gyro is in the carry role or in Five different roles Oof, i think here you get a mobile mid laner to find the oracle and you get a carry that can stand his ground versus the gyro so oh it's a tough one because lifestealer would have been the best one i i know it's not something conventional but i wouldn't mind something like a juggernaut that that feels like uh like a solid hero here for uh for zero dire team back what's it with they will snipe the Pangler. I know that I'm pretty sure Simony is Grandmaster, if I remember correctly, on the Pangler. So they do pick it into Primal, which is much different than what it used to be. Pango used to black this matchup, but now with Pulverize going through BKB, it's a bit more different. Having an instant stun with the Lion could be nice to prevent the Rolling Thunder, but it is that mid laner that's going to be able to get onto the Oracle. Yeah, that's, that's what you do. You create chaos. If you're the uh, Pango, so you go in Radiant first, you don't have to start off with the X Oracle gets revealed and then you start going with your spells. Though I think Pango is more gonna try to play early on, uh, you know, like a, uh, even later in the game, like an Ember Spirit with poke, poke, Radiant poke, and then you go back. for the Rolling Thunder when you see an opening, right? Because uh, if you go for the Rolling Thunder immediately, the enemies dodge it, then you are... You're kind of left to the wolves on pretty much every one of your heroes. You're all very, very squishy, and if G2IG with the farm gyro starts moving forward, there's nothing you can do. So you have to be very careful in how you engage on Team Zero. And it looks like the trend may continue with a range carry for YSR. Clink's band, Weaver band as well. I wouldn't mind the morphling here for uh for zero. We mentioned in the in the previous game. It might not be the best hero to utilize the Crystal Maiden in the lane and her strengths, but you lane relatively well versus the Primal Beast, you're good versus the gyro, your flak cannon, a stolen flak cannon would be huge in uh in this game in particular, because Lion and the Oracle are quite squishy and they don't want to be dying from AoE damage. So I uh, the... I wouldn't mind it here. The only one thing that makes me feel like they may not go Morphling is because they banned Omni. I feel like if you're going to pick Morphling, you wouldn't ban the Omni then. Uh, who knows? You know, the, the new Omni with the burst damage might be something that the, uh, true, true. That the Morphlings don't want to play against. Because you and me both agreed in the previous game, Morphling would have been a pretty good pick as well. Uh, Muerta did win the game, but Morphling would have been a good pick as well. They didn't pick it into the Omni, so maybe they were afraid of that burst. Radiant team pick. They're gonna Luna. Okay. Pretty standard. Oh, can you doxy? You could. Yeah, I actually like the darks here. I was thinking of a storm. Then I see the crystal maiden, and I'm not 100% sure. Five but darks here is actually quite nice. And then you put the primal beast into the mid lane, though. I think JT likes playing the primal beast more than nothing to say. So that's. Uh... 
that's one thing that might make me think that they do want a mid laner here. You can puck then. Puck's still available. I think it's a little bit... I liked your Storm suggestion, but I also think Conquer and CM is like too much control, but I think the puck is a little bit more difficult for them to catch. And I, I, it's nice versus the Pango. Puck is amazing for sure. Buck is awesome, but laning stage wise, you would still struggle a little bit. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, it's a free lane for Pango, without a doubt. So you've got options. You, you can put the primal base off lane, you can put the primal base mid and go for a, a better way to address the Pango. And they're going to go for an off laner. So you have a way to cycling up the Luna inside some of the fights. A bit more of a greedier hero we've seen as well, though. A lot of people with the Brewmaster lately is just that Radiance Rush and being your only involvement is like every two minutes when Primal Split is you know is online and, and ready to fight. But at least importantly for you, you have a Primal Beast who can get very active and make up for the like slowness that the Brewmaster can provide in your lineup. So how, how, do, how do we like this last pick though from, from G2IG? Do, do we feel like they've set themselves up pretty, pretty well with the Brewmaster for JT? I actually like it because it might not be a Dragonite or a DP, but the split is also a pretty nice way to secure that you will be taking the tower down. If you split during or just before the Siege Creep wave, you push the enemies back. Even if you don't get many kills, you are still going to be securing a lot of damage done to the tower. And I think that is something that G2IG were missing in the previous game, that there is a spell that you use and you just instantly win a fight. You had the Rolling Thunder, but in the previous game, it, it just wasn't all that powerful because of the Muerta. So I, I like it. I think you do have supports and a mid laner who like to move towards side lanes and brewmaster he likes this he doesn't necessarily want to be running towards the mid lane to make a fight he wants people to come to him and then you have the burst damage from the lion oracle and the primal beast to uh to go around so i'm uh i'm liking it i think they are going to be able to create space for the gyro and gyro is a little bit more buffed than the Luna here because he uh, he has the Oracle, so you put the Fates Edict on him, he just runs in and he rips everybody uh, apart. So yeah, I, I'm okay. okay with the last pick. I won't say it's amazing, but I think they did set themselves up for uh, for potential success. Okay, but you feel like this is a relatively even draft though? With, with, with the two teams, there's no big advantage you're seeing from either uh, side? Definitely not. The, both of the drafts have their strengths. I think it's going to come down to quite a lot about X Nova and his positioning, him being able to predict where Team Zero are going to be wanting to make their moves. But you can also deal with this if you're on the aggressive. So I think G2IG, with the way that they have been playing in the early mid-game, mid-game should have the advantage to force the issue and not really get caught by the X arrow or uh, Frostbite arrow. If you are able to prevent that, you should be able to, to do well in the early mid-game. Okay. Let's see. That has definitely been their big weakness so far from Team Zero is how they've been able to play post-laning stage and, and early game rotations. G2IG... These games have just had a level above them. They've got heroes to be able to enable that once again as well. But we, regardless, get lucky with a third deciding game to work out who's going to face Azure later today. And the thing is, with Team Zero's lineup, you have to play well in the early mid game. That's what your lineup does, right? Luna is farming while the other four are killing people. And you have, you can do it with multiple combinations. You can either rotate to the Kunkka, to the Pango, or just get all, all four together. It, it doesn't matter. Even the two supports have a decent amount begins. of kill potential. Like it will be... F two for two? Two for two. JT is going to run down ZZQ, so it might be a little bit of harass onto the Crystal Maiden. In fact, potentially kill unless he TPs, and yeah, he's just going to be forced to TP. If they had just started with the with the blood grenade, they would have gotten the kill. That that's the thing. But uh, you want to ignite that Cinder Brew as fast as possible, and then the Crystal Maiden gets out. But it's still a good way to to start off the lane. You didn't really expend all that much, and Crystal Maiden already has to go through a lot of the tangos. A bit weird by Ponlo, he revealed the Observer Ward on the bottom cliff because of the position he was in going for, for the D Ward on the small camp. And as soon as X Nova saw that, he started to, to D... Uh, sorry, he pinged out the high ground and, and Ponlo actually started to, to prep his own Observer to, to deny it. Uh, I think the idea is you would much rather have that camp blocked 
then uh, not know about the uh, then okay. the enemy is not knowing about the ward. The ward is fine, but the camp being blocked is something that's gonna allow you to to do well in that lane. Do you see any lanes where we should have some action though, or do you, do you feel like it's a bit more farm intensive for the side lanes? Oh, both the side lanes are kill heavy, right? The, okay. Team Zero probably in the bottom lane can't get kills unless the enemies overextend, but on the other like duos, they are incredibly powerful. Like you have a CM, this hero is so strong once you get both your uh, Crystal Nova and the Frostbite, and then Crystal Maiden is very easy to kill as well and then on the bottom lane you have a oracle gyro once these two are level three i mean i wouldn't want to be in the skin of the kunkka the poke is so annoying just <laughs> they chucked out the cinderbrew just a long range mana drain actually got the proc in the end as well it would be a bit frustrating for viz zq so that was a smart thing on the on the top lane that when you're playing a CM lane you want to be pushing things out so you get level two first and then then it's very hard for the enemies to go for you plus they have to be dealing with the waves that are gonna get doubled up so team zero they uh they actually play the top lane quite quite nicely it looks like 70 as well just had a very good wave over nothing to say very even at the moment. Uh, nothing to say, did miss some last hits, but that being said, Seven, he also just missed a bunch of last hits as well. YSR? Okay. That will be fine. You're just trying to apply pressure whilst you know that the uh, Crystal Maiden is going for, uh, for some moves there in the, uh, in the small camp. And is that her role in this lane? Is ZZQ going to be putting... A lot more attention onto the small camp and, and and trying to pull, or what 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 else should she be paying attention to in this lane? Uh, once you have both of your first and the second spell, you can make something happen. But uh, this is Erica making a mistake. Healing Lotus won't even get it out. Yep, it's your job to get a, the lane into a good position, and then Team Zero are good at running you down but they need a couple of spell usages to really get the kill so you need to start at your at your own tower so resetting the lane is always nice you needed to push it out for the level one two right so that you don't get brought down as a crystal maiden then you need to get the uh, the wave back but then later on in the in the lane you can definitely just be ultra aggressive if you want to on could take a decent chunk of damage to the spam of x nova and monet got any regen yeah he's got a self no, it should be able to be okay full full waves gonna go under the towel on the even almost getting blown up with those two points rock barrage from one so much damage between the two on the bottom lane i mean oracle when you get to level three in the lane any everybody needs to be afraid so i really like the concurrent for the double bracer we haven't talked much about the uh, mid lane we just mentioned that they're even and that's that's pretty much how it should go like two Fat guys just smacking each other, and, uh, and that's about it. Nobody can really threaten the other. Yeah, no, they're both farm. It's it's really nothing crazy. I I, mm, I do think Primal B should probably have a slight advantage, but I think a lot of that is just your using your and your body to block the pango from csing in the early waves so sometimes you can have a bit of a deny advantage but once once the pango gets levels you can always just cs easily with spells and the thing is that in the first couple of waves when the pango cannot really spam his spells all that much you can get the advantage but later on not really point again uh what what just happened I just, I legitimately just looked away and it was like fine. What actually happened? I, 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 I was watching crash. that lane. I was watching that lane while we were speaking and he was just nowhere near like uh, the health to die. I don't know if this is just a swashbuckle damage increase. I mean, it's, it's quite a lot, it seems. Very weird. Very weird that nothing to say allowed that happened. Especially him being an angle player, he should know how much this hero can do. Hmm. 
Okay. <laughs> All right, well, oh, that's a big solo kill for 7 8. Level 7 now. Max out Swashbuckle. Top lane, we do have a rotation though from X Nova. Teams have somehow got a read of this though. I don't know if it was the nighttime, nighttime vision, vision from Erica. Exactly. That's that's what happened. He saw him there on the side because of the angle. Yeah, well, Pondo's going to TP in and deal with the catapult wave. I might be able to get Baboka, but no, they're only just trying to cast some spells. Nothing crazy. They'll drag the wave off the tower. And they will force X Nova back down to bottom as well. So Beyond's going to be playing solo though for a little bit of time. Solo kill in the mid lane. The, the implications of this could be game losing for uh, for G2 IG because we talked about it. The early mid game is the, the very important part of the Team Zero lineup and their side lanes weren't going well. And then suddenly you get this solo kill in the mid lane, which will most definitely allow your lineup to, to have this snowball potential. So I'm... Uh, Ooh, man, G2IG, there would be like 2k goal ahead right now if that didn't happen. I really wish I saw what happened there. I'm so confused, but that's right. Nothing to say he's going to put that one behind him. Will be a bit of a BKB rush here for the Dino. And let's see, we should have some aggression come out surely though, especially with JT hitting his level 6 pretty soon. Seven, he wants to make something happen. Unfortunately for him, he was spotted. He pings out the ward like exactly where it is, a little bit there to the right, but that's probably going to get taken down at some point. Still a very nice preparation again. G2 IG, they always, always have the wards in the right spots where they're going to be playing. Nothing to say. Nice. He's out. We got the power? Seven eight, uh, did okay. Yeah, got the haste if I uh, if I saw correctly. Yep. The uh, rune first it was on the top lane and then uh, no nothing to say. It was like it has to be on the bottom lane. Went for it early. Unfortunately, that's uh, that's not really how it works. Seven E. That's a so huge kill. He's gone. It's not gonna matter. Oh, he even activated it as well before the death. So, I right. that gets nothing to say back into it a little bit. I was not like it's not like he was far out of it, but still, like that. That's a nice kill. You slow some of the momentum that you may be growing, especially mentally as well. Gets him involved. Now let's see what they're gonna do across the map. They'll stack. We do see die a couple of heroes playing around bottom. Radiant, they're going to mirror this top lane as well. Big advantage now with the Primal Split being online. You can't come to the top lane. That's just it. Even with the Rolling Thunder, you're not going to be able to defend that tower. So you need to try to mount up a response in terms of going to the bottom lane yourself. I don't think you can get the tower down, but you can at least do some chip damage and force the, uh, force the Gyra out of the lane. Dire structures are fortified. Dyer's Things are looking good for G2IG now. Uh, ever since the, they got the kill on the Pango. I'm actually surprised he went that aggressive. You are playing versus an Oracle, and you think the haste is going to help you? He can purge it off, right? And it didn't really happen there. You, you died earlier, but still. Do you like this vessel on JT? Because I've been seeing a lot of, like, maybe either double bracer into Radiance or bracer urn into Radiance, but not really the vessels lately. Hmm. I'm... Um, I mean... I was always a fan of it in general because you use the Cinder Brew and the Vessel and people just lose 50% of their HP. But I don't think it's any more of a uh, Vessel game than any Brewmaster game mm. overall. So I think the Urn would have uh, would have been enough probably. Unfortunately with the smoke, it's just going to be a kill into the Crystal Maiden. Regardless with four heroes here in the Catapult Wave. Should be able to get a decent chunk of damage into tower and at least force a fight because this is something that they want right now. Again, with this JT ultimate and your supports having level 6 early in the game, this is uh, one thing that Dai don't have currently. Level 5 Rana, level 5 Crystal Maiden, 7e. Oh, that's a super aggressive swashbuckle. What? And they're going to be able to kill him as a result. That was some crazy stuff. 
<laughs> the thing is, you don't want to go for the rolling thunder because that is what the IG are gunning for. For you to rolling thunder defensively, and then you don't have it to make any kind of an aggressive play on the on the map. And then you think, oh, I can poke. But uh, he, he went a little bit too deep, as you mentioned. You, you could have just swatched buckles from behind the tower, tried to delay it, be annoying, reset, but uh, he overdid it. And you see the penalty of that, though. Tower goes down. They might smoke again. Maybe not. I thought they were actually going to continue to play aggressive. You know, finger on cooldown, you might just look to chill, but Boca does have the minute markup shortly, so maybe he wants to stack. Bomb up the ancients for nothing to say. They actually don't give it to the gyro. Uh, I get it. The BKB for nothing to say changes this game so much that you should actually give everything that you can to him. Yeah. I, I'm really starting to prefer the mid laners getting the, the stacks. I think just the tempo is, is the most important thing. Because he's going to be your space maker for Monet. And if not a good game for the for the Primal Beast, then Monet won't freely be able to play at the triangle. Also, it depends what you want, right? Sometimes Primal Beast is just going to go for the blade mail, be a little bit more greedier than I don't know if if I would give him the stacks. But considering that he's going for a BKB, that he's rushing it, and wants the entirety of the mid game to be on his shoulders on that uh, on that item then it's it's definitely like a no contest between who gets it well, we do see kind of first movement out of team zero towards the top side and they're actually going to be off the mark their prediction of where g2 ig currently sit up and Radiant are going to go for their own play as well now this time they might have the correct read why i saw a little bit of health. Oh, oh, he's okay. Oh my god. Well, maybe Pond though. Okay. <laughs> are they going to be able to catch up Pond though? By the looks of it, so Flat Cannon should be able to secure with a kill. Couple leaps ain't going to matter. Uh, but Bokus just smoked. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. I want Lunar instead. She gets a glimpse of Paboka though, so why is gonna be okay? Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Fine. And they, you really try to kill the Luna while it's still daytime with the smokes. Once nighttime comes, your smoke will break, she will see you, you won't see her, and then it's a completely different story. So I like the idea from G2YG, unfortunately they, uh, they couldn't make it happen. If you had the BKB on, uh, on nothing to say, the dive into a tier 2 wouldn't be a problem, but you don't. So that is kind of the way that you throw this uh, this lead away. Something they did in the previous game by by overdoing it. So, so I'm liking that they are being a little bit more patient this time around. Yon should know that JT is here. Even reconfirms it with another tide bring a hit. But... Game is slowing down. Five kills, but 2,000 net worth lead only for G2IG. They're uh, doing a pretty good job. YSR, Dragon Lance, Mask of Madness. We do have a Gyrocopter that's well and truly on top of the net worth, though. And now they're actually going to give Monate this triangle. Huh. He's finally going to be able to farm towards the Zaganim Scepter, and uh, he's going to be there quite fast as well. We still haven't seen a split and G2IG are getting everything they want, so I really want Zero to, to force it out. If they're gonna be able to do so, JT. A little bit of poking. Feeling like this is a bit more of a difficult attempt than what they're hoping for. They've got four heroes nearby. Oh, and both sides have four heroes nearby, so... Some posturing going on, seeing if anyone's unnecessarily going to use the spell. Oh boy, you have a Kunkka, CM, and a Mirana, and you only have one kill. And that one kill should have never happened, which means that yeah. you didn't really utilize your lineup to... I didn't say to its full extent, you didn't utilize your uh, your lineup, period. They're still getting a solid amount of farm on Erika, and we have seen what he can do in the later portions of the game. But this is still not how you want the game to be going here 15 minutes in. Maybe now you just 
you wait. You're gonna have some timings pretty shortly. Blink dagger on Pango, Scepter on Beyond. Beacon to Beyond. I mean, they're gonna need the Rolling Thunder to try and protect it, but JT gets a split up before the stun lock. Beyond will go down right. Is the run buff actually enough? Nothing to say he's gonna sweep behind Beacon, be activated. Now with the as well. Seven, he might also be in danger. He's able to get some distance away. Zizi Q also dances over to the west side of the map, but Boke is on the hunt. Doesn't look like he'll get him, though. Can't find him. Also, I'm starting to get the idea of why they went for a spirit vessel. Like, uh, the purifying flames, they don't heal the enemies that much, and x Noah can spam it out without using the, uh, the fortunes in to... To take it off. That's kind of the reason why the Kunkka died. He had, I think, two purifying flames on him at one point, and they would have healed him quite a lot. I don't know if he survives, but definitely uh, is much closer to it. So yeah, now, uh, now it makes a bit more sense. Oh, that's deep. JT? That's incredibly deep, JT. Just getting promise? greedy to try and farm his last little bit of gold for Radiance, and they're gonna get x over. And these are, these are some moments that we've seen happen recently with these two teams going up against each other. Like just at this stage of the game, they feed a couple of wonky kills and they're still going to try and take a fight with a numbers disadvantage and ZZQ's not going to die and it's looking like it might be the case again. No BKB. Like what is it with this stage? Nothing to say, he's going to be slowed down with Diffusal. Now on the low ground means 7E can get the bounce back and it is... The exact same thing in every single loss for them against Team Zero, where they just Radiance have two very weird fights. I mean, everything Radiance after the JT death, I can somewhat understand, but the JT death, I cannot. Arrow? Well, okay, the Oracle is in the vicinity, so what? I think you're fine. Oh, it was on purpose. They were baiting. That's why he got hit by the arrow. But overall, so the uh, they got the kill. Nicely done. Boboka has the blink dagger. Uh, what happened is Oracle started running towards the uh, the brewmaster there on the bottom lane, and your range of the false promise is just so low, level one. And then the Luna spotted the Oracle, and that's where the snowball starts. If it was just JT dying, not too big of a problem. And uh, now they are the ones going forward. Oh, well, they are indeed. Torrent Storm gets activated before the Death it's Beyond's fine. gonna be fine! And IG, they won't be though! Seventeen's gonna be able to jump over the top of the Force Promise. Used up a boat on Mimo though, they're on to Erica! That's a big kill for them to find, and nothing to say. Dodges into the last second as well, tries to slam down Seventy. They wanna go the high ground though, this is a risky, risky business. They've gotta respect them, we've seen in the past. They've gone incredibly deep, but Boke wants to jump to the back line. That's going to enable nothing to say. Get the kill to Pomlo. Pomlo's still alive, though. The turnaround with the shield crash 70. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't be cautious, my friend. <laughs> I was like, they're too deep. And they're like, no, we need to go deeper, right? That's uh, that's the play. And actually, it was the right move. Because you get a couple... If you start running away, the X's, the Frostbites, they just run you down. But here you get a... A kill more, and with the Marana being dead, then that cannot be done. Also, again, the reveal was a little bit too late from, from G to IG. I think they got confused when he got to the high ground and didn't see the Marana immediately, so didn't use it, and it uh, it could have cost them. In the end, it, it's actually pretty solid for, uh, for G to IG. I'm just, I'm glad we don't have a stomp in this third game. Uh, it's looking like we're in for a potential long one. 2,000 net worth lead at, at 10 minutes in. Oh, did he just, a 70? I believe he's got his BKB cancelled by Baboka. I, I heard the sound like it went off. He's got Blink and Swash shortly. I mean, he's not making up. Rolling Thunder actually up shortly. They could vision. A lion what? The, the lion? Was he not behind the tree, though? He was. He's actually out? Uh, <laughs> so no, he's not. Nothing to say he's got him. Oh, keep running. Since you might be able the to Asian's actually frostbite. How is he live? 
Because <laughs> he's a genius. He's tipping the vodka. He almost got me. Crystal Maiden felt bad about them not getting the kill, so CZQ just stays there to uh, give them a consolation prize. Just kidding, of course, you wanted the Wisdom Rune as, uh, as a support you want to do it. But Polo did steal the other one, while IG just dealt with the, uh, with the Roche easily there. Uh, these two cannot kill the Tormentor. You need, <laughs> you need more heroes. You know what there is? I haven't seen a Tormentor disaster in quite some time. And uh, it's getting <laughs> annoying. Please. Let's go. We need a, need a Cosmo Ace in Europe, brother. So that's <laughs> where we get all the disasters. I, I don't know. That region and not killing Tormentors, right? <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, maybe I got maybe used now. to it. Maybe I got used to it. Eastern Europe was somewhere where I uh, cast the most. And now didn't for some time, so... Yeah, it makes sense, makes sense. That uh, that has to be the reason. Thank you for solving my mystery. That's <laughs> how I got you. Yeah, this, this time Torment is not going to, to strike down one of the Radiance members. You got the Ag Shard now for Baboka, who already had it queued up for the Lion. I still yet to take the Aghanim Shard as well, or I should say the Tormentor. Oh boy, this Primal Beast, I don't know how you kill him, has the Eternal Shroud and the, uh, and the BKB. Is going for an Aghanim Scepter, so it's just gonna be so much damage. Taking away the uh, the Luna's passives also is is a big deal, actually. That, that's one thing that you usually don't think about Luna as oh I'm gonna break her, but if you do, she uh, she's definitely not happy about it. Looks like we're gonna get a trade across the map though. D2IG should be able to take the top tier to tower. Bottom's getting sieged as well from YSR. DKB is going to be the next item for the Lunar. Gun's got a good position to be able to scout this out. The rest of the team are a little bit too far away from the Conquer. It looks like they're just going to sacrifice his life. Not even going to try and think about getting the boat torn storm out. And so tower will be defended and top will be taken as well. So nice trade for G2IG. Or should say nice map movement. I'm surprised they didn't protect that angle with the Marana because she has more chances of escaping than the Kunkka. And her life is a lot less valuable. So, uh, pretty weird that they, uh, that they put the Kunkka up for it. Especially because Thorin Storm Boat is like your your biggest team fight spells. And that should be around the Lula at all times. So we've got two minutes left on the Aegis though for G2IG. They want to try and brute force this tower down. And it's still not into the BKB from YSR. They are well aware of Luna's current position. Who do you feel like though is a little bit more favored if we get towards the late game? Like with this slower paced game that we are having at the moment. Like ultra late game 40 plus uh, should be Luna being like the top dog. But the thing is, Gyro is not going to allow that. And even if he allows that, you're going to be ahead with the Gyro. That's why he's going for a Satanic. He wants to be the one just forcing things out with the Oracle behind. Right? That, that would be on even footing. Yep, they're going. No it is already getting cut from Pondlo. They can still get this tower down, I think. Well, through hitting, they should be able to. That will be all, though. Reboka's going to run into Ponlo in the river. It's just a lion, though, at the moment. Ponlo's out of mana. And he's actually going to go for the wave. I uh, know leap charges, I should say, so. Wasn't even able to maybe graze and leap away. He's done his job. Cut the wave and bring everyone to his location. <laughs> <laughs> Viboki's had enough of his, his shenanigans. Uh, he also wanted that kill. I I don't think that was necessary, but IG are not done. They're still going to be going forward. They're like, guys, we know what happens if the game goes 40 plus versus these guys. So let's just end it now. And uh, I really like it. I don't know how you kill Monet. 
He has Aegis for 20 seconds, but even one, once it expires with the Oracle in a good position, you have the split, you have the BKB, the cores of IG are just not gonna die. Oh, it's okay, a great ward. find an angle. That's a great ward from 70, but the bounce actually goes over the head of X Nova. So he can react with the false promise. 70 is gonna try and deal with Baboka. But none of the cores get in the middle of the team fight. They're still waiting for the perfect Aegis out. On. They're waiting for Erika to get into the middle. But it doesn't look like it's going to be a fight that G2 IG can take. You've got the split from JT running in, but Dino's going to get X back into the damage from the Luna. It's a 3v1, and they may be able to get up to J2, who's going to force out a defensive ultimate. Monet's now actually thinking about walking into the middle of the fight, but Wysa just cleaves through the Brulings, and JT actually might go down from these... Far out, JT. Got to be cautious. And now Monet as well, continuing to get chased BKB. down. BKB into the TPR, very close, that arrow. They actually get the x Is the timing, I think it's, it's not. Fine. Instantly went for it and it was a nine second BKB, so you are uh, you are pretty much fine with that. But that was an amazing fight for Team Zero. Finding the angle to go for it is insane and you have to do it because you cannot go for the gyro. And you, you could see there, the second that X Nova gets caught, he's like, yeah, I'm false promising this. Now, I think he could have went for the Fate Edict, to be honest. So he kind of panicked unnecessarily. But either way, that was a very nice team fight of approach from uh, from Team Zero. Also, it being nighttime definitely helped because the Luna constantly running forward. They had good vision with the wards and they had the nighttime advantage. So this was as good as it gets for, for Team Zero. But this is what you need. This is what you need to delay the game to get this Luna to critical mass, level 20, Kanda. This is, uh, this is what you need. Also do they has... need... So I was going to say, do they need in like a successful game though, Conker's net worth to be higher? Because it is, it's the lowest out of all the cores at the moment. Or are you, his role, it's enough with just like lowish amount of items. Not necessarily. I, I think the farm distribution is actually something that Team Zero are quite happy with. They'd much rather have this amount of gold on the Luna than, let's say, have 2k gold more on the Kunkka and, and that amount less on, on the Luna. So I think they're quite happy with uh, with how the game is going. You have everything you need. You have the BKB, not to get bursted down, and you have the Torn Storm and the, the boat. Like, that. that's pretty much all you, all you do. Buff up the Luna. This could be an interesting move. DTIG actually going to come through the portal. Maneuver behind Team Zero currently starting to set up a push onto the T2 tower. They're going to see JT teeping in though. But they're going to run directly back into them. This is so awkward. And Erica actually wants out. He wants nothing to do with the charge. Oh, he shot it short. Oh my god. Nothing to say. May have also cancelled the Lunas TP. Would have been disastrous for Team Zero. They're still going to lose too, so it's it's not good. But man, it was close to being horrific. You lose the Luna there, the game is very, very hard. This is the part of the game where you just cannot allow to lose her. I think it's part of the game where the Luna is not going to be saving for buyback. It's just not what you are allowed to do. The team needs you to do a massive amount of damage. And that is a... Uh, that is a necessity, so you need every little thing you can get. That was so close to, uh, I don't know if G2IG would win the game, but they would most definitely threaten the high ground, and without the glyph, you, uh, you probably lose a lane of Rax. I would just see what they're threatening, even after those two kills. Looks like it's going to be the T2 tower that's going to go down bottom. Maybe they can angle for the Tormentor if they want to as well. They might want to poke. At the high ground, again, with an Oracle lineup, you want to always be aggressive, right? So, Tormentor is uh, is that thing as well. Nice Monet. arrow. Arrow connects. Devaney needs to go straight to the back line and deal with the supports that are currently lined up for the Rolling Thunder. I mean, this Panko ultimate, and it's perfect! Again, no supports for G2IG to play with, but Monet, he feels strong enough to be able to take the team fight and look at all the AOE damage coming through from the flag cannon. Rum buff coming in. It's not enough. The rum buff keeps him alive. Now BKB's are over. And Monet, he's going to get hunted down with no remorse. Team Zero. They'll lose 7 e but the damage that he impacted inside the fight was perfect for them. And now Eric has got the remnants to be able to deal with the Brewmaster as well. A five-man wipe and they just lose the Pangolier.
25 seconds before the Roche spawns, it's, it should go the way of Team Zero. The supports are going to be up, but the cores not really. And if you send the supports there, they're just going to get taken down that easily. I think G2 IG need to get their priorities straight. You see the Pango rolling in. I think he doesn't have a Lincoln's. No, you pop the BKB on the Primal Beast, ulti him, and just lay every single thing that you have into that hero. If he's allowed to bounce around, find your supports, Force X Nova to panic and use his False Promise super early on the, on the Gyro. Last time he used it on himself, but doesn't matter. He used it super early in the fight. It is a problem. This Bango needs to be dealt with first. Nothing to say. I'm looking at him. He's the one that, that needs to make the call. Guys, I'm jumping him when he's next to the Gyro so that they can bring him down. I'm gonna say... No BKB. There's a couple of heroes playing behind him at the moment. Voke is actually going to get the jump over the top and try and deal with the Mirana momentarily, but Ponlo's nice. okay. Nothing to say, still getting hunted down though. BKB's back off cooldown. Should be okay though. The only reason that nothing to say is alive right now is because Baboka found Ponlo. If the arrow had connected, that was a dead Primal Beast. Hey, he's going to charge up the high ground. Oh, great reaction from 70. We saw what the Pink Lee was able to do prior, and now I'm gonna choke, but it might be the same. This time on Nate, the crits are too much for them to handle. The Rolling Thunder was a little too late, and we saw how much impact it's been having. Without that, they were not able to turn the team fight. They're gonna try and do it a second time, though, with everything on cooldown and these buybacks getting used. How the little things can matter, it's, it's insane, and I think. G2IG, the reason they're in the, this game is Baboka. He's A on disc now, making a difference. He's jumping now, forcing the Pango to move away, making a difference even though he didn't catch him. Him stunning the Murana earlier, not losing the Primal Beast to an arrow. Like, all of those things are the reason the G2IG are actually still capable of fighting. AT? I like the force out of split. They might be able to with the arrow, at least even a false promise as well used early on the poking. They're gonna get something. Wow, the trigger finger. Uh, guys, like some something needs to be used. Right? Something. Uh, arrow, guys. Has a buyback. Oh, oh what, Simone? What's going on? Has a buyback he as well. Then he's gonna buy back. Now Monet as well eats the boat. Monet's got no BKB. But they're going to be able to activate the false promise number the turnaround potential as well. Money. He'll be he's full. not going to no. be able to win he's this in the too end. They don't have to sustain. Swashbuckle from afar. Monet's going to die. And he doesn't have a buyback in Team Zero. I, 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 these fights are so chaotic. Why didn't the Gyro have the Satanic? When you use the false promise, if you have the Satanic there, you come back full and you can literally stand your ground. But I, when I saw him running away, I was like, what's happening? He should be coming back full. But no, his his uh, Satanic was on cooldown. So definitely not coordinating their spells too well there. Yeah, it, it all happened because they were going for JT. And the reason why JT died, he was trying to get the war down in them. Arrow, Frostbite. Uh, the attack speed getting slowed down by the lucky shot. Lucid Beam. He was just being annoyed, 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 annoyed. And then ultimately they killed him. Because uh, G2IG, they were like, yeah, he still has a buyback. But you need some time to get back into it. This time around, at least they focused on the Pango. But it was a little bit too late into the fight. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Right. 5,000 is a net worth lead in our game three. Second version with the H's onto YSR. You get the banner. Minor extra attribute. Let me know where the banner is though. Where'd they place it? They place it somewhere. It doesn't matter. Okay, I'm, I'm starting to think that G2IG have a communication <laughs> problem when it comes to uh, team fights. I feel like their positioning, their setup is always perfect, but when it comes to deciding on the targets in a team fight, deciding on what you do, when things uh, start getting uh, chaotic, it's where they, they lose it. I I don't know if maybe they uh, they need too many words to say what needs to happen, but it has to be. Pango, Primal Beast, Split, going in. Th those are the things that how you communicate inside of a teamfight and they seem to uh, to not have it. 
They're coming for you, JT. Enter and you should be able to get out. Uh, right? <gasps> oh, oh, they got... Oh my god, dude. 7 eight this game. It, it's been an incredible performance from him. I'm so impressed. And him cancelling that TP. Forces out the split. You're not going to get him. JT's going to be able to... Just don't kill the Earth Panda. The wind panda. That's what you do. Uh, you don't kill the Earth Panda, you follow it. Can he cancel it? Or did they change uh, it? No, uh, he can cancel it, but it has an order. Oh, it only goes to the... Gets. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well... Uh... <laughs> He's <laughs> running to the tier fours like, please kill me. Wait, they will. wait. They will. <laughs> oh my god. Get out, play. Oh they were trying my... to bash him and stun him, but they couldn't do it. <laughs> oh boy. What a play. That's so. Wow. Wow, wow. <laughs> so smart. <sighs> lucky, lucky it, it lasts so long with the shard. What is it? Go oh, like 32 seconds. That's so freaking long. They might still get him. No way, you do all that and they're still gonna get him. No way! Oh, that's so frustrating for JT. That's a die back too. Oh, they dip him. I mean, this is... This is a lot of objective damage. No tier 2 mid. 25 on Erica as well. Oh, force in. Force in into just the first life gone straight away. Got him. Radiance bottom tower. Not much attack. commitment overall. Finger is nice, but the, you are still super afraid now to go in with the uh, with the Luna. They can smash into the ground and kill you. This gyro is no joke. Oh, but seventy actually rolled off. And now nothing to say. There we go. This is what you were asking for previously. The pulverized into Monate's damage. And that's also a dieback on the Pango. So that will push them out of the base. And just small, small adaptations from G2IG. Firstly, a very crafty way to address the first life on the Luna with the four staff into the burst. And then that BKB pulverized, which is something you've been mentioning multiple times this game. We finally get to see it out of them to address 70's Pango. And this now gives them a window of 90 seconds and they're going instantly to top. I'm more and more convinced that G2IG, when they have like two minutes to talk things through how they want uh, themselves to fight, that then they do everything perfect. But if it's chaos inside a fight that they are not mentally prepared for, it's a problem. Okay, do you have a ward to place on the high ground? No, they're, they think it's easier to catch somebody in the mid lane, that there's more chances for them to do so. Didn't put it on the high ground, uh, expecting a sentry there, but would have been a, a better move. You should have went for the greedy route. Still, that's no buyback on the Pango. We know that he was the problem for them. Oh, Luna. Coming in. Eric is showed. If they got the damage, Lotus Orb activated. Now with the turn of this attack. Gotta destroy him. Oh, oh it backfires so gravely. Monet, he's gonna get caught as well. You're screwed. JT, can he fix the issues that we just saw? I mean, Eric is gonna be able to deal with the Brulings easily. And JT's ultimate is just completely wasted. Monet's gonna get dragged back. Perfect timing of the X arrow. And they have no buyback. So from one incredible play to a gigantic mistake, Team Zero are gonna walk it back down again. That butterfly and then the Lotus Orb put on the Luna changes everything because you cannot use the Pulverize on him. And then you could just see that nothing to say jumping into that one is like, well, what should I do now? Well, you can't do anything. And really that, that Lotus is, is the saving grace. For this Luna, really, really nice itemization coming out from uh, from Pondo. A glyph. I mean, it's at least a full set mid. Maybe even melee bottom. Oh, they have a. Is that a DD? Oh my God, that's a DD. Okay. Are they gonna hit T fours? Yeah, they, they look like it. Oh my God. The buyback of the gyro is more important than the lane of Rack's bottom. If you can get the buyback of the gyro, you're gonna be so happy. He's gonna- And they got it. Boboka jumps in. Look at the claim jamming, Boboka. It's Yarrow, Lion's gone. No 
far away. And they're actually going to knock G2IG out. It's a 3v5 against the world. All or nothing for the Luna. They don't have the damage. They got do broken. not have the damage. Luna will stand strong. Life still it all back up. And Oracle now they back. can turn to the Brewmaster afterwards. It looks like they may have goddamn done it. They will knock them out and book a ticket into the grand finals. Two against five. The underdogs have done it again. Two series against G2IG. And all of them, they will be victorious in. What a game three from them. He allowed the uh, game to go 40 minutes plus, and the Luna was just unstoppable at that point. Every single time, Team Zero have the uh, the better carry matchup, it seems, when it comes to the late game. But also G2IG, they do itemize for the mid-game ending of the game. That is uh, That is also one thing. And I think they're going to be so mad about this. This is the thing, though. I also think Monet is going to be cursing his item choices. Uh, not the uh, not the items that he has, but the order of it. If he had maybe gone for a Daedalus first, and then they focused on the Pango every single time during those early fights, this could have been a different game. And it's still nice to know that you could have done something better, but it's also pretty bad to know you could have done something better as G2IG. Everybody is expecting them to, uh, to at least get to the finals. And this is, uh, this is just not it. And it's another result for G2IG, which is incredibly disappointing. The... You do played in multiple qualifiers now, and you know the Bepum Darcher qualifiers that a seventh, eighth position. They Dream League season 22, they weren't able to qualify. Actually, they were able to qualify. Sorry, they got the Dream League season 22, they got knocked out in groups. Um, and the only thing really, you know, they, they made it to, to Birmingham, and we're gonna have to see how they perform there. But this new, like, star studded roster, they're just they're not performing. Something is not clicking for them. We are seeing some games go well, some fights go well, but. They cannot piece it together into a full victory. So, again, Team Zero, they're going to be able to take them out. They knocked them down to the lower bracket. Now they will knock them out of the hunt to Dream League. And that means we get a rematch of the upper bracket finals. Team Zero versus Azure, a best of five. Who do you think is going to take it? If you, if you had to put your predictions on the line in the best of five, who do you think is going to be favored? Let's see. So Azure did win 140 plus minute game versus them. So they can take it a little bit later. I I still want to say Azure as they are going to be able to adapt in the best of five series multiple times. And I think w when I look at Team Zero, I think that you can adapt to how they, they play. I think that you can prepare properly. G2IG, they showed it in this series. They just couldn't close out the games. They had a little bit of bad target choosing. But in terms of preparations, tactically, you you should have the advantage versus these guys. That's that's just it. For both the Zeray and we saw in the series for G2IG, G2IG, they didn't do enough, but the Zeray, I think they uh, they might have what it takes. Okay. Well, let's see if that's going to be the case. It will be a bit of a prolonged break. Importantly, Team Zero, they need to freshen up and get themselves prepared for that all-important grand finals, the best of five versus Azure. So it's going to be about an hour break. When we come back, though, We'll have our final series of the Dream League Season 23 China Close Qualifiers. Azure versus Team Zero. Let's see what we have in store for us after the break. We'll see you guys soon.
starts with this A person that you miss Mind draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality Lost myself
It starts with this A person that you miss Mine draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself
It's fine.
One series remains to determine who will represent China at Dream League Season 23. Will it be Azure or will it be the underdogs of Team Zero? Lizard, what are you doing? What are you, what are you popping up? It's good to have you here, brother. You uh, had, had a cast with Harry. Five One games. One series will be I like the winner. It. <laughs> <laughs> this is like yeah, this is like an advertisement. Have you done this? Have you done this role before? Jumped into some you know advertising, trying to hype things up. This I, you summer. Take the floor. <laughs> this spring, only one team will come out on top. Casted by Aries Lizard. <laughs> no, I have never done it for the, for probably for the best. Um, I have just woken up, had my coffee, so you can see a little bit of that hyperactivity kicking in. However, you, my friend, you talked about Harry Freak. You were stuck with my Serbian friend for... Uh, the majority of my morning, your evening, what happened? Oh, besides Snare not being there, of course. Yeah, uh, just quick fill-in. Had a pretty exciting series. I was mid-ranked Siege game and uh, got the call up. I'm like, brothers, don't you worry. I'll, 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 come, I'll come help the boys out. Came in, had a pretty exciting series. Team Zero were actually able to find a second series victory of a G2 IG, knocking them out of the qualifiers. And now we get a rematch. We casted this series yesterday where it did go three games. You know, when three games, yep. Azure was were able to take that in the end. So let's see. I Firstly, we have a best of five, right? So no matter what, we get three games. That's something we've been struggling, at least for us, to get a full best of three. So at least we're going to get three games. I just, I pray we so get sad. a best of five. Like I... I just I want a best of five. I don't care how long this takes because last qualifiers we were Harry Freak and I were bringing up that Azure and G two IG they broke records for the longest best of five. I think he said it was like six plus hours, maybe even longer, something like that. So okay. I'm not saying we have to break records, but just go game five and and have it competitive. Can I give a prediction? We're not gonna get there. Uh, I feel that the state of the game right now between these two teams are like, is like this: Team Zero no doubt about it like they deserve to be where they are at like they won versus g2ig twice now in the tournament at the same time i feel that they're a team that uh, figured G g2ig out they figured them out and they knew how to play against them and they had some very pockety strategies i think there was a little bit of morale kicking in as well when it comes to g2ig and how they played specifically um today in in their series uh, meanwhile Azure, I feel, I never felt that they're the worst team when playing this, um, when playing this matchup. So we'll we'll see how it goes today. But I expect Azure to um, to do much 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 better than yesterday when they played Team Zero. But then again, I might be completely wrong. Team Zero might be on some upcoming best China team streak ever. Uh, where they're even contending versus who's invited, by the way. Um, which team is invited? The see. Dream League? Not yeah, many. Yeah. It's just like Bet Boom. I mean, the Chinese team. The Chinese team. Uh, the Chinese team that's invited is Extreme Gaming, right? So they're even contending with them. I will say I also agree. I think I'm not. I don't have high likeliness it's going to give, go game five. I, I hope it does. I hope teams are able to you know, pull off an underdog story. I'm just very concerned, I think, in a lot of their victories that the, and this is something we were discussing in the last series, that really Team Zero have been able to take games and look good in games once it gets to the mid late game. Like if we go back to their series, which we cast versus G2IG, right? That game one where they had the Weaver draft, they were losing the early game. They were like 10,000 gold behind. And if they then, you know, they won a couple of fights, G2IG, you know, lost their group. And then we saw the draft actually, which was a draft win kind of in the end, once they got to that stage, the draft would play itself. And then in the second game as well, where they had the Alchemist lineup on G2IG, they also had a lead that game as well. They also had a lead and probably should have closed it out, but they just made some mistakes. Um, and it was very similar in the last series as well, where Team Zero, you know, you're playing behind a lot in the early game, and you just you kind of outplay your opponents through some of the mid game fights and then all of a sudden from there you look really really good but my big concern is just can you get through the laning phase hum and really the post laning stage weaknesses that they have been having um yeah i, I feel like as well for team zero one of the heroes that they make work 
Um, besides the Muerta that they made work in that last game, one of the heroes that they make work, but uh, they also play extremely well against this Kunka. And uh, it, it comes down to everything that you're talking about, this early game stage and mi mid stage and whatever stage. I don't even know how many stages there are anymore in this game, but um, when they play against Kunka, they uh, try and get these like three cores that just scale super well together. And in the mid game and early game, you're losing fights. Because three semi carries, I should say, not three cores, because three cores can mean anything off lane, mid, safe lane, playmaker, whatever. They basically get three super greedy heroes that can all individually carry the game if they get to that point. But uh, obviously they lose in the mid game versus a Kunka with some Ghost Fleet, uh, Torrent Storm, Tidal Wave, whatever. However, once everyone gets a BKB and an item or two, they default win. Like we saw in the, not in this series, but in the last series versus G2IG and in game one of Azure yesterday. Um, so Azure, they just have to figure out in my opinion what the real strategy here is do you crush them so hard in the early game that uh, these three cores look silly or do you just take it to the late game and fight it off with better cores but then you have to be careful not to get trapped with these heroes that don't really scale that well in minute 40 to 50 because team zero tends to take games there so yeah we'll yep. see we will see, we will see. We do have a draft getting underway very, very shortly. And I think going back to their previous series again in the upper bracket finals yesterday night, we're going to be able to learn a lot from that one in particular. And literally, game one, game two, and game three, it is just like the identical things. Conker first pick from zero, DK first pick from Azure. Second game, DK first phase from zero, then Centaur from Azure. Third game, Centaur first phase from zero, then the conquer from zero. So that is it. That was it. We saw Razor contested very heavily. We continued to see ranged carries for, for Erica for YSR. So they're probably big things that didn't change today in their series versus G2 IG as well. So, and, and where does the priority go with the bans on the Slaughter and the Centaur, which we saw were banned out today versus G2 IG? They got the Coddle in both games, which yesterday they didn't. Azure put the priority on banning it. And I actually think they can let the coddle through. I don't think the coddle's scary. I, I'm just like was not coddle, very. Yeah. Yeah. I don't winning, think the hero is very good. Yeah, they're winning with Muerta as well. Just let the coddle go through. Have some um, sort of heroes that can jump him easily, and he's good, but he's abusable. The hero is still good, but abusable. For me, what matters more in a grand final, it's like both of these teams obviously deserve to be here, else they wouldn't be. Like even. Uh, team Zero specifically because they had to uh, play through different teams multiple times and take the games off of them, take the series off of them. What interests me is the morale. Like what interests me is, uh, even though it's a qualifier, it's still a grand final. There are still nerves kicking in, even for these players that have a shit ton ex of experience between them and behind them. Uh, for Azure, maybe it's not as big, but for Team Zero, I feel like you might see an effect and that effect might be good might be bad i'm not sure but uh i'm looking looking at looking at, at erica looking at erica i want to see him huh? uh, actually do really well because i've seen some major uh games that are super important for him where the performance was and you'll be surprised but much better than it usually is like owns my microphone is maybe low I get messages from my Australian friends from the bush. <clears throat> but I got it. It's all good. Microphone sorted, draft sorted, ready to go. Game one, zero up against team zero. And we're going to have that first phase timber saw. So a real surprise there. Uh, I guess the surprise that Timber gets let through, and this is also a hero that I want to quickly mention before we get too far into the series, is that yesterday we also saw Azure pull out the Iro to success with that Weaver draft, yes, and they sir. looked very, very dominant. They looked very dominant on the on the Iro. We saw also in their first series that we covered versus one of the teams that got eliminated. I think uh, the goal of life is death. 
Uh, they played the eye there as well. So I think that is also something that needs Absolutely. to be in the back of our mind now through the entire series because it's going to be a long one. Hopefully it's a full best of five. And if you kind of have this mental uh, you know, mental fog and you let that Radiant eye through, Azure going to snatch it. Radiant team pick. I'm just writing to people about my mic. Azure but uh, yeah, like the, the eye of, like, that you mentioned is looking really damn good for Azure, so they uh, ban it out, and in because of that, you end up with this timber. Like, you have to decide what to ban. Also, what I've noticed from Azure is this team doesn't mess around when it comes to draft. They're not banning remaining. only meta heroes. They're banning meta-specific team heroes that have been played Five recently. So, uh, that usually means that they have a lot of respect for the team they're playing against. And, of course, you have to, even though you're playing, uh, like, versus a team that objectively it doesn't have as big names like you're playing versus a team that has been around for players that have been around for longer and also they are playing in the grand final so you gotta get rid of the best stuff that they've got um team zero answered the timber with a lion it it's annoying to play into like the, the suck itself the mana drain is already annoying and you have kunkka to always catch you which is also another thing, that, like Timber likes playing into Kunkka in a way that you can uh, bring him down very low very easily. At the same time, he hates playing into Kunkka because it's harder to have that mobility remaining. really kick in when you're flying in the air, you're X marked back, you're uh, tidal waved somewhere into the river. Like There isn't a more annoying hero when it comes to this positioning than Kunkka right now. You, you lose yourself on the map basically against him. Radiant team pick. What do we got? Oh, an FY Shadow Shaman. Radiant Can't get the lion, get the second best thing. It's a pretty quick Very response well from Team Zero. And they had a really good profit uh, yes. performance uh, yesterday. And versus Azure Ray, they crushed them with the profit. Now they get the Luna as well. I like Team Zero's draft. I like their four heroes at yep. the moment. Uh, and I'm thinking, is Ten there anything that they're lacking at the moment? They have catch, they have stuns, they have global remaining. pressure, they have a hero that scales well. Um, they did let Lifestealer go too. And there you go. That's like, when I'm looking at these four heroes and I'm thinking what their, uh, <laughs> what what the problem is, they have everything, but they let the Lifestealer grow through. And it's a Lifestealer into a Luna. It's, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's an issue. It's an issue, like, it, it's not perfect. The, the draft is Five good, but it ain't perfect. Um, Luna is decent versus melee cores at the moment because of the shards, Luna but they did let this guy go through. Um, and he's, like, always been a good matchup versus Luna. You don't care about yep. her uh, magic damage, you have rage, you can get on top of her, your build-up is good. You're also good versus Kunkka. So this Kunkka, no matter where he goes, uh, he will not have, like, if... If he goes mid, you can put Timber there, but most likely you won't. If he goes offlane, you're playing into Lifestealer. Right now, if you're Azure, think about a hero that's good versus Kunkka on mid, decent. And this guy will, no matter where he goes, it's not the perfect lane. But luckily for them, it's not an easy hero to counter. I like the Storm ban. I think that was a really good one, even though you're playing into Lion. Storm versus Prophet, Storm versus Kunkka in the lane feels good. Even with your X marks the spot, I know it's it's annoying, but uh, it, it can really heavily be skewed one way if you win the lane. How do you address a lifestyle then? If you're currently looking at the draw from Azura and you're feeling like this lifestyle is just uncontested at the moment with the heroes <laughs> that Zero have, like, is it one way I'm they trying. can look to try and yeah. make it a bit worse? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, mm, look, you, you, I think your solution is to put Kunkka mid, no matter what. Uh, have him suffer a bit and maybe pick something like an Enigma on, on, on last pick. Something that, that dominates the lane, that's good against the Lifestealer. Yeah, Crystal Maiden is a problem a bit, but they have nothing versus BKB uh, Black Hole. Remaining. And it makes your draft a little bit Five greedier. Not mm. a little bit, a whole lot greedier. That's a problem. But if you crush his lane and you have that black hole that, that works well against 
anyone and everyone on Azure, I, I think it might be a problem uh, for them. Like, you can't go Slardar, it was, it's been first fi first phase banned by Azure, so... And they ban out the I, I, I really think that was the best pick. Uh, and can a Viper slip through somehow? I, you this... can, but it's, you know, like, this Viper is good, but it... it I, I don't like it. It's good, it's good on paper. Yeah, you're gonna win the lane and then you have these four ranged heroes with a Kunkka, but lion stuns aren't enough. Like, the control isn't enough. That's what I'm worried about. And now they get the Dino to just break through everything. Like, Dino yep. or some Sand King would be so good. Like, I know Sand King isn't drafted at all, but this kind of a hero, something that just breaks through you, breaks your formation, gets in the back. Ah, uh, you know, it's... Yeah, okay. It's like, we didn't have anything else, we got Doom. That's how I feel this is like. Yeah, it, yeah, no, it's okay, yeah. It is a free lane, though, for the lifestyle. That, that yep. is what it is. It's a free lane, but... Maybe the one big thing that is difficult to calculate at the moment is like, what can these natures profit do? Like, that's what I look at. I think that is the big advantage for Team Zero. And what got them their game, their victory against Azure in, in their previous series is Nature's Prophet, like you mentioned, as soon as it was picked up, they played very, very well around it. So my eyes, they're on ZZQ. Like, how is he going to be able to perform on the Nature's Prophet? Because we do know, like, Doom, he can, in some particular lanes, and depending on the supports he have, he, he can play pretty aggressive and be able to find kills, and that NP can help enable it. But I don't is it going to be it. enough? I don't see it. I, I really don't. Like, um, his profit yesterday completely owned, but um, and it's a decent lane for the profit. Like profit Luna, they hurt ranged both of them versus Timber. He's not gonna have a lot of uh, good time. Shouldn't have a good time um, on that lane. However, there's this thing with with profit. <clears throat> you need other lanes to go at least kind of evenish, and then you TP in. You know, or or there's like a big brawl, and you and you get get there just in time to finish things off. It might happen, and it can happen. But I'm looking at the enemy safe lane, and I'm thinking, and I'm seeing a lane in which Life Stealer and CM are doing very well for themselves. So these rotations have to come quick from the Prophet. Like he needs to make a difference very early on. If he doesn't, this Life Stealer is always going to be on 100% HP. Like the UTP in. He's just calling Blaze through the trees. It's, I don't know. I, I, I think it's it's doable, but much much harder than yesterday. And, and I think the big issue to to counteract the nature's proper rotations is going to be Ori. Uh, this primal beast dude. Uh, it's just such a great hero at, at counter initiating. You just TP in, you, you charge from the tower like before they can get halfway past the lane into a position where the charge isn't even going to connect on them. Uh, this hero just it does so much, and Conk is going to be a little bit too slow to, to also react to that. So Or is just not only a great hero versus the Nature's Prophet just throughout the game, but also you know to be able to counteract his rotations too. So we'll see what Ori is going to be able to do on yep. the Dino Man himself. Uh, it's just a like I love that you're talking about the Dino Man because like when you think about Dota, it it it, it can be very strategical in the way that team fights are fought it can be like yeah we're gonna set like let's say there's an enigma it, it, you always know what the enigma is gonna do but you have to react to it when it comes to the primal beast you kind of know what he's gonna do but he always creates chaos and that's what he does like he's gonna jump in somewhere he's gonna mess up your plans it's like a timber but with a stun that's how I see it. It's it, it can get inside and just break your formation and mess up your plans. No matter what your plan was, you need to re respond to this primal beast. No matter what kind of a draft you've got. And uh, I, I, I really think that's why he's so good here. I, some blade mail build as well is pretty solid. Like he can, he can get that early on. Just get behind and uh, trash them. I don't mean it literally. So how do we feel about the overall draft, though? As we do have you know, a bit of a pause waiting for ourselves to get into this crazy best of five, but do we feel like there is a side you would prefer to play you know, the hero-wise in this game? Uh, for sure. I think you <clears throat> you got it from everything that I've been saying so far during the drafting stage. I'm heavily favoriting Azure. I'm not saying that Azure is going to win. Like There are benefits of having this Prophet Luna into Timber on the, on the safe lane. I think that's solid. 
I think you can also uh, play around X marks the spot and profit TP. Like maybe kill off the Primal Beast once or twice on the mid lane if you somehow uh, manage to bring him down low. Like your rotations are solid with the Lion as well. Like Lion, Prophet, TP, and it, it can work. But like if I look at these players and how they play and if I look at the draft, I think they, ident they identified what they're weak against really damn well and they banned it out. Like those last two bans and picks sorted everything out. Like the, what was it, the Enigma ban? And the life stealer pick for me, just perfection from AR. It's it's obvious from the plane. Like you can see that they're gonna pick it and ban it. They pick it, ban it, and they're good. Well, let's see if they're gonna be able to execute with the life stealer. Though, that's like I would say it's one of Flo's best heroes. Even though he's only gold tier, to see him have a lot of success with the hero overall. And we are underway. Game one. Who's gonna be able to get this game advantage? I think this game is like. Of course, every game is so important to best of five, but I feel like this one in particular for Team Zero, just like mm -hmm. momentum and confidence Your against the team. Goal. Like, because the best of five could be very draining, and then all of a sudden you head into game two with like a defeat. You could be down a little bit, but if you get that game one victory, I really feel like that is the big, big step to get them into a position where they can end up being successful in the best of five. So, it has to start here. So, so what's your what's your uh, idea? Just turn all best of fives into best of ones. Well, well, I mean more like for the underdogs in particular. That's like, no, oh okay, yeah. Okay. So it's if like the just... uh, add add an asterisk to a best of five, best of five. But if the <laughs> <laughs> underdogs win game one, it's best of one. Okay. I see. <laughs> then they win. Then they win automatically. I see. No, it's just it's just like because these are people that haven't played at land before. Like that, that it's just Erica. Erica is the only yep. one. Yeah, it's like, like when you look when you look at the teams that they've played, he's the one that's been on Vichy Gaming. Everyone else was kinda on E Home. They have played on land, but I think the Chinese lands, like the local ones. Sure. I think. I think they have, yeah. And th those local lands are hype, man. Like I don't know if you if you saw what uh, what kind of lands they've got, but it's better than most of our lands over here however not versus big teams for not versus big western teams but versus big chinese teams so i don't know yeah. i think it's I think it's solid solid experience let us see mid lane yeah, profit over. already tipping look at that i mean just messing with them never mind even tips <laughs> okay You actually see he's gonna TP even behind Bark, so this is something we see kind of often with that extra damage. Maybe it helps secure some of the range creeps. It's just so much extra damage early yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. You can't trade like he TPs, he, he gets armor, he gets damage. You just can't trade with him. You need to uh, you need to wait it out. It's it's silly. But I'd rather play against that than versus uh, trees, treants hunting me down. You know. Hitting me for 10 damage every second. I don't know. That that that, that sounds more annoying. So I'm I'm happier with the profit in this patch. Do we do we see any side lanes where there is kill threat potential? At least at the moment with the 2v2. I think Crystal Maiden and Life Stealer can kill off Lion very easily if he steps out of position. And they've fed on Ponlo yesterday, so let's see if he plays it more carefully uh, today. I think that's like a build ki kill threat. Bot lane, maybe the Prophet is a kill, right? Like you have this um, Timber and uh, FY Shadow Shaman. But they also have to be careful because Prophet and Luna, they hurt. Like they can, they can dish out a lot of damage. They can zone you out if you overstep your boundaries. You like the There's 70 bottle again, by the way, on Kunka. Yeah, very interesting. I'm um, actually not. No, not sure no why. double bracer. Yeah. <clears throat> I really don't. I'm, I'm not quite sure why, because I really thought this was a bit more dependent on if a lane was not as favored for the Conquer, but. 
Is this lane not like uh, good for Kunka once he gets X marks the spot, right? Like before that, it's it, it can be a bit rough, but after it, he's completely fine, I think. 16-2 on him, 14-2 on Primal. I don't know if it's that bad where you need Bottle, but I mean, I guess I'm just misreading when Bottle is required on the Conquer in particular. Yep. Which is very, very possible, so... <laughs> I don't know, like overall, oh, yeah. when it comes to the game, I, I feel that in every team you should have a Bottle. Like, one Bottle. I just like it. Like having one. It changes the way you can play around some... Like, you get a good double damage or a haste, you can save it a bit, it's... You can go to rush with it, you know, it helps. Top lane Lion is getting really damn low. Lion! The turn! Oh, Ponlo actually feels like he can turn. The turn! Okay. Depths in the trees and nice read from Ponlo. Beautifully done. Beyond able to step in, swipe that first blood. Yeah, Ponlo is sweating right now. Where was my damn prophet? <laughs> what happened? I'm baiting here and my prophet is chilling. Uh, yeah, ni nicely done, nicely done. Like, uh, Ponlo, what was he? He was Shadow Shaman yesterday when played versus Azure and he had some ooh, rough, rough games. So, this yeah. sets him up. This is much better already. They're going on beyond, but. Uh, prophet mm -hmm. tipping in top. This is the difference. There we go. This is it. An instant response as well from the Shadow Shaman Beyonds. Just gonna survive. And health. Tian Ming, he's gonna be okay Ponlo. as well. Now Lo's gonna Ponlo. try and fight back on a Ponlo. Still have the stun and the Infernal Blade. No way, Lo's gonna go down. Is he cute? A Blood Grenade on his dying breath. No, 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 he's not, not gonna, gonna be able kill. to get the kill. Tango and that tower regen. Oh, there we go. There's that Throat of the Nature's Prophet and the impact we were hoping for. Hmm. Uh, whose TP got cancelled? Was it Primal Beast? No, Shaman. it wasn't. Okay, Shaman. FY. Probably Lucent Beam, right? I would imagine, mm. yeah. Yeah. No. If he TPs there, like, the, the, the... It's absolutely different. I feel that's the... That was the game changer. Breaking that TP. If he TPs, they, they get a, another kill. Maybe Lifestealer survives as well, but... Very, very nicely jabated by Doom. But this is an issue. Or his rotations, and, and how are you going to be able to deal with them this game? Because it seems like, honestly, he has both side lanes he can rotate to and, and just get ganks freely whenever he wants. So, ZZQ. He's got teleport when he's back alive, so really not the worst, but you are just, you know, giving over a little bit of gold experience. FY is even going to move over. Yeah. It's a lot of kill potential on this lane because uh, Bach doesn't even have uh, reactive armor, so every time you rotate him, Timber is dishing out. Like, it's a lot of damage. He went 2 2 0. Not something you see super often uh, on the Timber Saw. I'm even surprised considering how much damage the uh, 7 E bot lane. Yeah. Okay. First part of the game gonna be dropped on Bach. And even though the Conqueror is a strength hero, you do have incredible ways to be able to deal with the Timber Saw throughout the early oh, game. Now, FY. Yeah, he TP top, but. They read it very well. They instantly went back. He so not... may have TP'd in the ward radius. Uh, they he do was have a very he... interesting ward. <clears throat> he was TPing in the in the trees, like down south. Maybe it scouted him. Maybe it did. Maybe it did. I, I I can't say for sure. It looked like he was fine, but Ponlo just ran back instantly. So probably saw him. Or he's here though as well, and he's got that haste rune. Oh, they're all coming. Yeah. That's a wisdom room timing. <laughs> that, that. Oh, Bonlo. Yeah. Crushed to death and... I mean, 70s here, but no bow. I, I don't see how. Dude, there's four AR heroes. And they're still not going in. Okay, now they And Ori's gonna get it. Oh, we got the wisdom room. Dude, this is so frustrating. Four AR heroes. It's supposed to be Radiant with the numbers advantage with the nature's profit. Lou has Not rage. The they do have bowed up shortly. Won't get the rage off now. In fact, he will never get it off. The chain control from Ponlo is perfect. And now they're going to get FY as well with the turret on point from 7E. All right. Great triple. response. A triple kill for the Conquer. You do get the Wisdom Room on AR. So that is something. But man, 7E is so happy. 
Yeah, this is like amazing for him. They get the tower, they get the rune, but they pay with three kills, I think. Yeah, show fight recap, let me see. Experience gain, experience change, they got 1200 experience. This is definitely worth it for Radiant, no matter how you look at it. Wisdom rune is just not that important. Uh, unfortunately, Lu was still level 5, so he couldn't really use him fast. He also waited with the rage. Couldn't really rage earlier because of DX Mark, so they bailed on him. Maybe they could have fought that differently, like if they take the wisdom and then they fight on, because but they expected the boat, maybe. If you expect the boat, you don't fight. If there is no boat, you, you might try and uh, make an aggressive move. Let's see, they have Doom. Hello? I'm low, gonna get low, ganked, low. though. I mean, they're gonna see Tiamming and look at the instant TP. I mean, Ori is just not even gonna hesitate with rotating. Only will try and TP out, but nice read from Ori. Yep. Able to catch the, the lion just as he's trying to escape. Was that Invis CM? It was, right? Like, she. He was just standing there in Invis. Uh, bot lane, though. So. 70 was... again. You think it was smoke? Yeah. Okay, bark. They bark? Oh, nice timing. Nice try. Very close. By the way, mm -hmm. Ares, you t Yo. you told me you were learning German. You can't call <laughs> okay, you, you call go. Johann Sebastian Bach. You can't call him Bach. Not a K. It's a. <laughs> Come on. Bach. Bach. Yeah. There we go. Let's go, baby. <laughs> I mean, it's pro uh. you're probably pronouncing it better than I am anyway, but yeah. Must mu must mess with you a little bit. The he's not having a... Um, uh, give, me, give me a good word here. Uh, what are you uh, trying uh, to say? A, a game word of a maestro. He's not having that on the offlane right now. He's 1-2, he's finding farm, but he's been dead every time. Kunka, mid. No, no, no. No. Uh, just Ori again. Whenever this man is nearby, you oh, got some issues. Might Let's Not with see. Bach coming up here as well. 70, that's a big kill if they're going to be able to slow down the Conker. Four times killing streak. Bjorn's going to Doom, swing sir. over to the right side. Veil is ready as well. Doom casts it from afar, but can they slow down the Timbersaw? Why is Aaron Bjorn's going to try and turn to deal with the Shadow Shaman? Ponlo doesn't have another round of the stun, but maybe that's where Wyasar is able to come into play. Low infest, is it leveled up? It is. Ori is going to be there. Ori up on the high ground, charges down. Now Ponlo as well is going to be in some danger. Fuck him in a couple seconds. Like they're hesitant though. Stop impaling me. <laughs> That's what they're feeling like. This lion is just one impale earth spike after another. So annoying. By the way, is that the reasoning behind the um, no reactive armor? Besides the lane, like you're playing into Doom. So it, it can get annoying to play against him as well. Can't heal at all. He's just going full in aggro mode 4 2 0 timber saw buying blink first like just wants to blink in destroy everyone bef and die together with them you know as the he's really not that tanky no he's not at all he's gonna be doing damage though he's gonna be dealing damage diner's gonna be dealing damage and it's gonna be pretty slow in the bkb department here for team zero Yeah, your Kunka is going blade mill Aghanims. No BKB on him. Doom actually doing Shivas first. Like, this is something that really bothers me now. I think this is the Radiant's first. Tower is under attack. I don't know if it's inaccuracy or, or whatever, but I really think they need a blink. Pongo can't be the sole one that they uh, rely on. And you need a way to initiate on these heroes before they initiate on you. Worry. How easy is the kill gonna be though with blade mail? Pomlo might just be forced to zap him down. In fact, kill looks pretty easy and nice lineup from Pomlo as well. Finds a second. That's right. They don't want to respond. Bark's gonna come through and with the frostbite, the whole the conquer into position so Timber can get all the damage required to chain it into a secondary. Like they will not catch up to Pomlo though. He's able to slither on away. Well, Pomlo, he's Pomlo? around. 
He's got 20 magic wand charges, he's got uh, tranquils that are active still. He's fine. Um, a nice counterplay by Azure, but you can see that this Dino, if he gets gone on with X marks and you have finger, of course he's gonna die. Blade Mail doesn't really save you there at all. He's not that tanky, no bracers on him, nothing like that, just magic wand and the Blade Mail. They're all playing in a super active mode on, on Dire. No cup and activity continues. You happy Pomlo pops a smoke? Yeah, I mean, he will. But he won't live uh, for sure. Oh, yeah. oh, that's a, oh, that's some <laughs> hate. That's so much hate. If we could uh, do the squat thing like you can do in in Call of Duty and stuff, you know, when you kill someone, they they'd go back and do it. All the hate used onto Pono means that YSR is able to TP across the map. Well, I should say go through the portal and actually take the tower first. So let's see if they want to react to bottom. Their, their own tower is full health. And they are going to start to set up. Pono is actually going to come through to the T2 tower. Interesting build from uh, Erika as well, by the way. Like, um, makes me think he just wants to join these fights 24-7. He's going for d -lands. so he has Mask of Madness in d -lands. That's that's just not the build that that's meta at the moment on Luna. It it's been it's been one. It's been the like a very popular build, but right now it's mostly Mask into Manta instantly. But, uh, Are we it, going with Erica as well? <coughs> Are we, is that what we're calling him this this series? YSR, whatever, Yashar. Oh, for all my yeah, Balkan, yeah, for all my Balkan friends, he's Yashar. No, it's just if you want to say Eric, I'm happy to say Erica too. But if... YSR, YSR, yeah, Luna, Luna. I'll, I'll go with you. I'll go. With Let's you. say Luna. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Don't even say the name when you say Luna. I mean, they change the names so frequently. Uh, yeah, I know. It's. Hey, you're happy. The the doom went blink, so he, he changed up. He didn't. He didn't. Yeah, I, I think I think she was was a was a real grief if he went for it. I don't like that they're smoking without the blink now on him. Are you gonna get the catch into the crystal maiden? It's a little messy. Like it's not a clean kill. It's not quick. They have to zap him down now. And yeah, this doesn't look good anymore. Like, Pomo's gonna die, they'll be able to cancel the charge, but meanwhile, Ori with the infest bomb, oh my! But I back. Oh, it's just not good! They're, they're so looking for Luna. Hunted down, and they're also there onto YSR. And you just see the big issues they had. No blink on the Doom. I mean, they couldn't instantly get on top of the Crystal Maid and blow her up. It was just, it was too slow. It was not fast enough. Yep. And now they might lose tier 1 mid, let's see. Like, they aren't that fast, and Lion might TP already, yeah, he's TPing in. So they, they might turn this, they have Doom with Blink, by the way. Are well, they gonna use an Ori? Ori's out! Yeah. Uh, uh, he's so fast, and now Lowe just kills Pomlo. And maybe Beyond as well, let's go! Uh, it has to go back, of course, has no infest. I'm not sure that was... Maybe if you Doom the Lifestealer, you can blow him up, but... They just needed to wait for one more hero. The two of them, it was just not possible. They're crumbling a bit. Those decisions are not the best. And when I say crumbling, I mean crumbling really under pressure because Azure, everything they've done is to make this game as fast as possible. Um, I, I feel like YSR as well, he decided to <clears throat> try and respond to that with uh, d -Lan's mom. It allows you to be in fights a little bit earlier and still position yourself well, but uh, I don't think that's worth it. You will see Ori start to go top, and this actually could be an opening because they have two heroes already here. I guess it's probably two of the worst. Yeah. yeah it's on cooldown. That conquer there. And CM is here now as well. And he has shield rune, by the way. That's that's why he's doing this. Without the shield rune, he probably gets blown up. But Beyond needs that stun creep. He needs the centaur. I feel like it would help them quite a lot right now. 
I think one nice thing is Ponlo's gonna have a blink dagger pretty surely. He's farming a medium stack down bottom. He's gonna have this wave, get, wave getting pushed in as well. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they give this to him, although it's gonna be a bit difficult with low nearby along with FY. A 70 is here. He's also very close to his axe, so. Low might die actually. He's not gonna expect Ponlo popping out of the trees. Oh, nice time well. in the rage and FY with a counter as well. They're gonna be able to cancel the shackles. And FY would just feed his life. Ori wants to come charging in. Is this fight they're gonna try to take? Under T2 Tower with a run buff. It'll make them pretty survivable, but YSR is incredibly hesitant. And not Tian Ming as well. Hang on a second. Charging down to the low ground since there's an opportunity to try and deal with 7E. And yeah, they're gonna get him as well. There was a, a slight opening there. But, but oh, maybe that... them to, to catch a life soul if they were ready. But all of a sudden, AR5 heroes pop out. Uh, that, that looked like an opening, but it truly wasn't because of uh, Shadow Shaman. With his blink, like you're, that, that's just not an opening. Lion doesn't have one, so no matter he didn't have one in that fight. So no matter what you do, Shadow Shaman is gonna break it uh, apart. Like if you try and combo with Kunka, he's gonna jump hex you. If you uh, go on with Lion, he's gonna, going to do the same. So. That's why they felt so comfortable, plus oh, they had Polo obvious might rotations. Polo might snipe low. Oh, well done. Nice, nice. And the tip. And the tip. Nicely done. The blink changes everything, right? Like on him. Now that you've got blink, it's easier. That's a, that's a feels good kill right there. Yeah. Gets him, I've just completed Blink, gets him a bunch of experience as well. Allows YSR to catch up. Who, I'm... Okay, so I know you mentioned that the Lunar matchup against Melee Cause is much better now with the Aghanim Shard. Yeah, Do you still feel better. like Luna needs to be playing from ahead? Like, if it's an even net worth with Luna versus Lifesteal, do you feel like it's not I think good it's enough? Bad. For, for... It's not good enough, yeah. Okay. yeah. I, uh, Luna should still be ahead. Bot lane there, searching for Pawn Long. Drums are popped. He's stuck. <laughs> They're Got gonna him. get him. I don't know if he revealed that there was a ward here. I don't know if they get the read. Dude, FI is doing this Midas Shaman again. Oh my god. I've seen him do it in the past. So, how does he justify it? What does he buy with, with the Midas? Or is it about the experience? Because his um, talents are pretty damn good. Yeah, I, I I suppose it could just be the experience. I have always been a, like a real like when Shaman was getting played a while ago with the BKB Shaman. Mm -hmm. Usually BKB and Shackle, it's like six seconds of free stun lock. Um, so just I'm not, BKB. I'm not saying he's gonna go for it. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't know. I want to say I'm not quite sure what he goes for. Yeah. Hey, just so that is the there... that important yeah. thing. Aegis is important, but also there is Manta now on Luna, so the farm should uh, pick up a bit for him. Unless there are any big kills happening, you should see this Luna take over the network shards. But that an infest I heard? Yeah, he's in a golem. Golem. Okay, no more, no more lion jumping you if you're in this big boy. Jesus, is it here? And out of everyone, Doom gets a shard. Yeah, well, uh, he's so what sad. Farm this game. Yeah, but it, it's not that bad, I guess. It, 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 you'd rather have it online, of course, but this is also okay. Your prophet already has one. Your Luna wasn't gonna get it for sure, so Luna needs to buy her own. How concerned are we though that Team Zero are going? Uh, do they have the capability to fight into these ages? I don't think so, but they do have eggs on on Kunka, so and a BKB on Doom. Seventy. Nice. He's gone. Four with these, and they just have a ridiculous amount of damage. He's just gone, yeah. They're just scaling super damn well. I, I love it that they gave it to Timber too, like this <laughs> Timber ages. And a life stealer in an ancient granite golem, just running about. And Timber went BKB too, so uh, just the respect. 
from Bach. Uh, yep. It's just. Uh, it's just, uh, the classic. I mean, I, and you can't really blame him as well. Like Luna hybrid damage, importantly the Conquer as well. But even though you know you have this Lager's life, just a lot of Bach control. Is... Uh, I think the BKB. Like, if I'm buying BKB, I'm buying on Timber. I'm buying it for the Torrent Storm. Too annoying, like to play into. Um, at least you'll be able to use all your spells properly. But like you said, a lot of damage, of course, and a lot of control coming from Lion. He's still in this golem as well, the life still. <laughs> the man's chilling. Not the fastest farming, of course, but he's got radiance, so it doesn't even really matter that much. Uh, what's important about being in this golem is you can't get jumped. Like, you will always be able to rage. They see FY, right? Yeah, he's out. And well, he sees Pondo. Yep. The wards are used at least, you know, some some silver lining for uh, Team Zero. Not gonna be able to use those wards to, to pressure the tower with. Middle tower is under attack. Oh, I'll blame Renai's Golem. Saw. He's got yeah. a TP right now. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't have a BKB on Luna, so can't really risk staying there for a moment longer. It's now with lead though, it is growing. I mean, Aegis yep. is going to be out in a minute. Maybe you're happy somewhat with... The... Okay. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, maybe you're happy with just the amount you're losing. Like, they, they haven't, they've only lost the T1 tower, tower or T2 tower down. down bottom. Looks like they'll lose mid as well, but it's not disastrous. It's not disastrous. Your Luna is... Like we predicted, t taking um, the net worth charts over as well. Like, slowly got through Lifestealer and Primal Beast now taking over Radiance Timber, Radiance. most likely, unless they get a lot of kills. And this is what you want. You want the Luna with a lot of farm. You probably Radiance don't want to be fighting just yet, top. even. You want the BKB and the Shard on top of that. But they'll probably take a fight with the BKB. Or is hunting a pup? I would actually run into ZZQ if he keeps pathing throughout the tree line. Uh, and yeah, oh, him, be oh, him, right. him. <laughs> <laughs> Some crazy raid from Ori. Well done. I just love how he's creeping in, you know. <laughs> some some creepy horror music in behind as well. And this dino hunting you down. You don't even know what's happening. Some animal planet shit, right? Right there. Uh, yeah, tier 2 has fallen on top lane. I, I was, by the way, just about to praise um, the Prophet and how good this hero is in a situation such as this one. Not because you're creep skipping or anything like that, just because you can set wards on the map. Like, you can make it possible for your team to make plays. Like, after they get their items. And they've got their items, more or less. This Luna has a BKB. Are you too far behind at this point? I'm not sure. I think you can take a fight, but it, it, it will be very difficult. They want the dragon, but the dragon's fast. But no one's he by. But he's going to be able to activate the rage and get away. X, X, X. I think, is there in time. And this? they're going to get him. Well done. Uh, that is a much needed kill. The momentum... And just a map control that AR had been able to gain off the back of the ages. It's been a lot, but finally, as soon as it expires, we, mm -hmm. we see him move out of Team Zero. He would never be there unless for that dragon. Punka? Oof, they, they just jumped him. He, they need to be careful, though. This uh, Doom still has his Doom on. Like, he didn't use it. Not really that smart to take a fight right now without the Lifestealer. He felt too too safe in the in the dragon. Oh, this Yori. Nice what? BKB reaction. Damn, bro. What? I Yori, the old man. What do you have against old men? What the hell is this? I'm sorry, bro. Are you, I'm sorry, bro. What, 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 what is this ageism? Wait, why'd you get defensive? Why'd you get defensive? Are you old or something? Of course not. How you feel in the in the soul? 
Uh, why saw? What? What is that? Yeah, what is that? Like I wait, they're coming through. The, they're coming through the portal. Hang on, F flies first. Now Tian Ming's gonna come as well. This will favor Radiant with the outpost. Like, what just happened? Dino just in. in the meat grinder, but they've got Doom. He's actually doesn't have enough mana at the moment or beyond. And two fights are breaking out simultaneously, but Wysar, he wants out. He's got a TP away from the engagement. Unfortunately for 70, he TP it in. Horn Storm somehow clips onto two and again onto the timber. But nah, they're gonna get Run him. Run 70! Wait, are they? Yeah, they're getting him. Okay, they got him. <laughs> Where's your oh mana, Doom? What happened? Yeah. Where, where was his mana? Know. Yeah. If he has mana, you just take that fight, don't you? You can dome the Timber or the Lifestealer or the Dino, whatever. Take the fight. Who picked up the gem? I think it was... Okay, it was Primal Beast, so they got it back. That's such a weird, weird engagement over there. Why is all this farming though? I'm impressed. Yep. I'm impressed. I think you... Radiance I'm a Courier bit concerned on the conquer scaling, but I guess you can just be Torrent Storm bot. No, the hunting top lane. I think it's good enough. Like the Torrent Storm this game, maybe um, it's gonna have a BKB to, to dish out some more damage. Um, the game changes a tiny bit how it's played now that... Now that Lou has uh, an Agonims completed. Legs can infest. This is a cube. By my friend? Right? What? Oh. He didn't have vision, but he had so many ways to get it the vision. Yeah, he definitely could have, like, like calling he... played it out or something. Like, the holding the, like, using Freezing Field is kind of crazy. Dude, he, he's, he's got <laughs> Quelling Blade. He's got the Sentry. Like, you don't even have to use the Ops. You can plant the Sentry on top of him where he was. You get a That's... little bit of that vision. There is no reason. He just reason. wanted to do it himself. He just yeah. wanted to kill him with Freezing Field. That's all right. Uh, <laughs> it happens. It happens. Double damage on low. Double damage. What can they do with this? Let's see. Uh, rush up in 50 seconds. So just about right on time when they get there. Who's that ideal Doom target for Beyond in, in this next upcoming fight? If you could choose anyone. See, if you can blow him up... Um, I, I, I still think it's life stealer, but most likely your target will either be primal or timber. Like primal for for the for the amount of control that he's bringing. But if you can get it on life stealer, I think you're using it on him. My only question is, are you winning the fight after? You probably still are. Dooming Bach just destroys the hero, of course. Uh, irrelevant afterwards. Oh. Someone left their tier 3 neutral token. What was that? Where? Where I missed um, it. Um... Oh, no, got it. I'm trying to work out whose it is. I think it's Dyer's. Yeah, it's Dyer's. Okay, so they're gonna be one tier 3 down. Ah, uh, they will get Roche though. So they're not down Roche. In fact, they are up it with an Aegis along with potentially Banner. a Banner. Someone would want it. No one wants Banner. it. It is pretty... Banner. Take the banner! Why are you saying it like the what's going? Why are you saying it in that accent? <laughs> what am I missing? I don't know what you're song? talking about. Uh, Shadow Sham, I'm gonna pick it up, right? Right, FY? Yes. Hey. Yes. No. <laughs> no. Never mind. <laughs> well. Such an important change to the game. But I guess people. Uh, Forget about cheese as well, so. Like some people forget about ages too. Yep. Some people deny the ages. Mm, that's true, we haven't had that for a while. Yep. No classic though. I love Ponlo chilling on top lane, by the way, farming the hard camp. They're just waiting this high ground push, I guess, uh, which is coming and 
High ground isn't that simple for them to push. You, they don't have Serpent Wards right now. Luna with D-Lance and Enchanted Quiver hurts. He's also got Kanda completed, so a lot of damage just for the, from the spam and already an infest, okay. I feel like they... you could just be happy with keeping the lane shot down, no? <laughs> yeah, I feel like they just forced them back in. Force them back in and continue playing. It's just that this, this force versus a prophet never works as good as versus other heroes. Um, one of the main reasons why you like forcing in because you get to devour everything and set up vision for the next fights. But he plays against that really well. So he can just be anywhere on the map, devoiding, warding. Uh, update: They did get the banner. Nice. Well thank done, congratulations. Th thank you for that update, Aries. Oh, you're, wel you're welcome, you're welcome, brother. I got you covered. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of damage. That's like a fixed of, a de of an HP bar just with one Lucent Beam. Kanda. That's what, so you need six more of them? Okay. Yeah, six more. Let's go. Let's, uh... <laughs> without, without him healing. I Okay, so not hitting anyone and just standing still for, well, all up maybe like 30 seconds by the time, you know, they all have to come back off cooldown. Oh, I'm worried little... though, a, a tiny little bit for Azure, even though they feel like they're oh, in really? front. Yeah. I feel like uh, the, the state of the game is really nice for them, for sure. Um, and they are scaling very nicely on Timber and Primal. I'm worried about the BKB on Lifestealer now. Like, he's just forced to be this infest creep. He's got eggs now next BKB. Just wants to be... It's so defensive, but he still dishes Bondo. out a ton of damage. Oh, it's so funny watching him be some sacrificial lamb in some games. He knew they were coming. He was, he, was, he was waving. He was waving before they were even there. Knowing that they were watching bottom trying to set up on him. And <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing <laughs> I, I'm not sure sometimes no, yeah sometimes it's good to feed a bit but uh, let's see if they can convert anything 20 seconds no lion and you see Prophet like tipping out warding this cliff like just setting things up for his teammates later on I I uh... I don't know the feeling thing you should be right often. Like I just, I feel like team fights don't look fun for Radiant at any stage this game. Mhm. Mm yep. Especially when FY gets that BKB you talked about. He's got Aetherlands now, and Ogre Axe. Let's see. Low already on fifty percent. Infest. Got to deal with the wards so. though. Lose actually. Yeah. They're actually gonna try and jump Mark. The Doom is out. A lot of damage. Torrent so much well should be able to secure the kill. Meme on the base low. He still Rage has a. gonna expire. Alright, PKP is gonna be put inside the inventory as well. Oh, well, gets the, the jump. Instant hex. He's gonna be able to, even through the Lotus Orb, F5 with the counter initiation. Protects low. Who actually looks to turn to try and beat onto YSR. Or he's gonna charge it, but that stops short. So deep though, under a T4 tower, Low will pop out and secure the kill. Mm -hmm. He's got BKB, uh, bye -bye remember. Death from Polo. Now with the X, he's gonna help them stop the escape. As Ori's gonna clip, get clipped by the stun, but the damage is not there with the follow up. Maybe they can turn to the life sealer, but nothing to stop him from raging and escaping is beyond wanting to try and charge for the back clamp, but still they're gonna have to deal with Low. Another rage of the BKB. He has not but enough once damage. Once his expires, he's in trouble, man. Ponlo's ready to jump over the top. FI, what a counter again! Always on point, and also oh. sees an opportunity to charge in! On to three! It's huge! It isn't enough! Mo now, he's in the middle of it all as well. The players from YSR, just not enough to win the man fight, and Ori saves the day! What an onslaught, crashing into the middle, and Lo, he may as well get the full set of Radiant's barracks now. He's gonna get it, and that's it. Like uh, after the set, I feel like you should be rolling back. Like no BKB on him, even though Luna is dead. I think you back out. Like, you wait your teammates. 
I don't know, like, you, you called it, you said Azure's teamfight is scary, but so is the teamfight of Team Zero. It's it's not that easy to fight into them. And this was all with an Aegis. They barely won that fight in the end because of some extremely nice plays by uh, the Primal Beast and FY jumping back in. It looked scary at times, but uh, this BKB that I was questioning was no doubt about it necessary on low. Okay, there's no buyback on Luna, by the way. He bought out. Who is back off? Not the way for the Lotus Orb. Seven, he actually wants to try and turn. With the torrents on. Uh, legend. What is this? What, what the hell? I mean, yeah, he uh, just got doomed. It's a crazy doomed. siege. He's just got doomed. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Do you remember, like, 30 seconds ago, we were we were just saying, yeah, they need to go back, wait for their teammates, you can't fight into this. There's an Octarine core zoom, like, he's going to have his doom off cooldown every fight. And there's a Hex now on the Conquer as well. That, yeah, that wasn't even used last fight, so... Yeah, uh, Satanic now fully completed on the Luna. That's why he didn't have a buyback there for the best. If he bought back, that would have just hurt them. Um, he also has level 25 uh, mini stun. On Eclipse, which is going to be useful. I don't know, weird. Yeah. A bit weird. Yeah, yeah. One one big Bach? deal as, as well on Bach, yeah. On Bach and on... Uh, Primal is the two Wind Wakers, right? Do you like them? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I don't know. I think this item is very, very strong. If you can get it, because it's expensive. Are you one of those expensive means? Good. <laughs> Do, are you wearing some Balmain shirt? Uh, uh, they have the burst potential to be able to blow him up. They will no way, Ori, perfect chain control beyond BKB TP. He doomed the Sharm and he had no one else to doom. I think that was a good doom, but you needed to use it earlier before your Luna is dead. So that she can pop Satanic and BKB. The the doom and was correct and this is game, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna walk it down. One misstep. And when they're playing like this, oh, ZCQ's trying to cut, but they do see him. And they're going to be able to cancel his TP as well. Does he have a buyback? He does at least. And while they're killing ZZQ, the base is also falling as well. So full set of barracks going to get cleaned bottom beyond. Oh, no, the Lotus again from Tian Ming. Oh, that's just yep. it. That game just fell apart so quickly. We were all waiting for this one um, team fight from Team Zero once the ages expired, once they get all the farm Luna. And this is the saddest way for me to lose as a carry. Because you get to all your items and then you don't get to use them. Like, not even once. Like, he got the Satanic. He was about to make a difference in a team fight because he has the Satanic, the BKB, the Manta, a lot of control, a lot of sustain. And then it all falls apart because of one, one little Are shadow really shaman. Try and jump now. I mean, the respawns are coming, but you just gotta die before they're there. And you're still losing megas. I. Okay. <clears throat> I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, at least. Like they lo lost megas, they didn't lose the game. It's it's a bad way to lose all the barracks, but still playable. The so megas really don't mean as much as they did. Back in the past. What shall I make of this? And after them. They don't, but it just n it never means it means you can never leave the base. Like any Roche contestion, mm -hmm. you're you're giving up your T4s. Yep. Uh, it, it's you just it really puts you on a timer to contest anything. Mm -hmm. Not for sure. You you have profit to kind of delay it a bit and then TP in. Which is useful. I'm surprised they aren't running to to ages because it was the fastest one in the 14.
Well, Ori has Refresher Shard now. On the Dino. Lowe's got Ages. Another banner. Lincoln's now as well below. This has to be a. It's one percent. Uh, it's got to be a miracle defense. YSR has a, a rapier queued up, but you uh, you will need to win one fight to get to that rapier at least. Well, they are coming with, with this refresher with the ages. Do they have some buybacks as well? Let me check the buyback check. Uh, primal yes. Hex. If Never mind, they really want to on AR, you can just give refresher to FI and just lay wards down. Yeah, gotta be careful, by the way. No, not a lot of buybacks. Oh, beyond early BKB on with the wind wake up, and that's just I mean that's so huge now. Doom without BKB to protect him inside the team fight. It means he will not get the ultimate off before go. the death. Meanwhile, FI as well as caught Polo over the other side. They're gonna try and doom the shaman. Crystal Maiden's actually caught as well. Both supports killed off. It's up to the cores now on AR to be able to win this last team fight of the game. Dying Bona doing a lot end. of damage. Mark as well, hunting the heroes to get back inside the base. But YSR, he's trying. Sealed back up to four, but once the satanic expires, low, he can stand his ground. He should be able to win the man fight. Nice load. We can't stop him from getting back, can he? YSR, stepped it up, Manta. Ain't gonna matter. He falls it down as well. Thrown exposed. This should be our game one going over towards AR. They are still fighting. FY is back. FY is back. Too many creeps are in. Yeah, Seven is gone. And the G's are dropped. Alright. AR take it. They strike first in our best of five. Such a nice game. Like a game worthy of uh, Grand Finals, definitely Team Zero. <clears throat> I know they had a lot of doubters looking at you, Ares, you were doubting them from the get-go. <laughs> but uh, very nicely done, even by them, like in, in a game in which they lost. I feel that they had the, that one mishap in which the mishap was called FY. He had way too much farm, he got that Midas BKB blink. Um, controlled the Lina really damn nicely in that dire jungle. I think that's the moment that broke the game completely for them because they were kind of on the on the receiving end, of course. They were losing the game and they needed to f claw themselves back in. They did manage to get the farm on Luna and just when they're supposed to get that one crucial fight, maybe even out the game for them, um, Luna dies without using anything. Very unfortunate, but overall very nicely done by Azure. Like you're playing into this Prophet and you're playing like you're the one with full global presence, like constant aggression on every lane. Even with the ZZQ TPing in a little bit early on, getting a couple of nice rotations. I, I really liked it. I, I I hope that Team Zero doesn't get uh, broken uh, by this game and that they continue to put out their best because they really deserve to be here. And it's obvious they're playing on a very high of a level, so it's it's enjoyable to watch. Yeah, of course there are mistakes. There all there always are, but uh, <clears throat> I think also the draft can be just slightly bit tweaked because they they got caught they got caught in this. Uh, in this place in which they couldn't really pick an offlaner that completely changed the game for them. Yep. Uh, the beautiful thing about a best of five, though, is you do get those opportunities to be able to tweak the drafts in particular. So we're going to have to see, though, and, and this is... your yeah, starts with the... I mean, it's always the strategy game from, from start to finish, so with the draft and, of course, through the gameplay, but what do you ban out? What do you let through? Does a timber get addressed now? Because timber does heavily heavily counter a lot of what you're first phasing at the moment. Again, it's DK, Centaur, and Conquer is pretty much what you are only first picking for. For them, so do you ban that? That means does the Iru get let through, which is going to be a big concern. We've, we've again seen Azuri, how good they look on the Iru currently, and one of the few teams that are still running it. And this is really the nice thing about a best of five. It is not only just like a, a gameplay execution thing, but also the uh, strategic gameplay as well that comes down to it. So let's see. Let's see what they're going to be able to do, how they want to adjust. They have a little bit of break. Again, it's a best of five. So it may kind of, they can make a mistake. They can let one game slip by, but dropping down 2-0 is going to be a difficult position to think for them to come back from. But they have not done that just yet. It is just game one. They are going to be able to take it in pretty convincing fashion nonetheless in the end. But let's see if they can repeat this success heading into game two. We'll find out though after a quick break.
All right, strike first in our best of five lizard. Hopefully we get a long haul series. Hopefully this is not, you know, one where it's a, a clean 3-0 sweep. We go the distance. It's early on in the night. I'm ready to go into the early morning as well. And I'm sure the boys are too to get that ticket over to Dream League season 23. What do we want to see though? When we look at the draft in particular heading into the next game, what are some of those adaptations we would like to see? Ah, uh, man, like... um. It's hard to say because I don't think uh, overall Team Zero had a bad draft four picks in, and then they just didn't ban out that that life stealer. I I really think that life stealer solves their draft. That pick was extremely good coming from uh, uh, coming from Azure. That was the problem. Right? Besides that, I really think that their draft was good and set up for success. Um, what else? I think the bans from uh, Azure were also super on point with their last two bans maybe you can just think about that and uh, adapt a little bit so that you have better control versus these tanky boys such as uh, life stealer so that you don't pick luna instantly into it even though it didn't even look that badly like maybe if they played the game a bit better overall the luna had a bit more farm it would be nicer uh, they they drew themselves may, maybe it was erica or ysr's problem that he drew himself into too many early game engagement instead of being on top of network all the time he tried going for that dean lance fighting with it didn't really work one death after another game falls apart so let's see let's see in game two i'm, I'm sure they can bounce back they have some really sick strategies i'd like to see a pocket strat from them just to bounce back in all right, let's see. Let's see how they can set themselves up with a successful draft. We do have our second draft getting underway here. I are going to be on the Radiant side playing with second pick. We got Team Zero on the Dire side Five, with seven, first seven. pick. So nothing different at the moment. Um, but we will see that. It also, want to add that's a game where. Zero loss with the Nature's Prophet, and we have to keep in mind their victory versus AR yesterday was with the Nature's Prophet, and then in game three, the NP got banned out. So the fact that you lose this best of five is a bit of like a strategic loss as well, because if you won with it, maybe that Nature's Prophet actually gets banned out and it could open up a pick for you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, instead, the heroes that have been banned out. Um, Last game aren't banned out this this game though. Like Slardar went through, so that's something for Team Zero to consider. Um, they did they did uh, do quite well with Slardar in the past, and it opens up different pocket strats that we talked about, like putting seven E on him mid, and then getting some clinks or Weaver on the safe lane. Heroes that really benefit a lot from the corrosive haze, plus it puts them on a much much faster tempo. Something that they also play uh, really well off of. So, let's see. I <clears throat> I, I do like Azure's DK Azure ban and Kunkka ban. I think these heroes are...
super difficult to play against and this is a bait right like this is team zero picking scent baiting out life stealer thinking about going uh weaver or slardar or both of them if life stealer gets picked up well it seems it's actually here we have not seen a whole lot of i know some regions are putting a lot of priority on like first phasing it and I, I suppose teams in particular depending on what team it is but so far in that games we've seen not as much mars as what i was expecting mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's uh <clears throat> it's a hero that fell off a bit i don't think he fell off only because the hero is worse by any means it's just that he also gets uh, banned out quite a lot when the game is right for him. Um, opens up the Pango pick for Team Zero, maybe. They're the ones banning out Weaver, which is interesting. So they might be thinking as well about that Lifestealer. Um, it is a really good hero into it, and they do like running their Centaur on 5, but if you snatch the Lifestealer, you can put the Centaur on offlane as well. They're, then you're kind of happy with the draft. I do like Mars into Scent, though, more than Scent into Mars. I like playing Mars when I'm against Scent. Yep. Uh, just because of that arena versus Stampede, which is also nice. Azure Rays, turn to pick. Okay, Dyer Weaver banned, Slardar banned. This is Lifestealer, right? Techies. Never mind, Techies. First Techies. So probably your Pondo hero plus, Dyer I think seven is. Maybe a Pango. Mm -hmm. Um, I think seven is look very good on the Pangolin so far. I would, I imagine they're just going to try and keep the flex of the Centaur. Ten seconds remaining. Let's see. I, I I do think so as well. Five like seconds usually remaining. you want to keep it as flexible <clears throat> as long as possible because of the picks that can happen, the, the counters. Like if you know that Life Stealer is coming, you can just switch him up, put him on that five. Or if you pick it straight away, you can feel free to do whatever you want to uh, with the scent. You can still play him on five, you can play him on offlane. I wouldn't like that lane in particular, but. Lion. Another support mm. first. Yeah. So, you know that Centaur is offlane, Slardar banned out, Weaver banned out. Is this another bait from Team Zero? Because this again looks like a good low life stealer game, like, like a really good one. You're playing into Bat, you're playing into Scent. Uh, I just go I'd with say it. it's a little bit worse, no? Why is it worse? Like no, Lasso and... And, yeah, like, okay. he, I thought... and Stampede, right, to run away. Yeah, sure. I mean, but yeah, I was mainly the last on the hex that I was like looking at. Okay, there's more control. It's 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 worse than versus a prophet. And definitely, I'd still think it's it's decent. Like you just itemize yeah, yeah, your yeah, supports yeah. a bit better. Like, if someone gets a lotus, throws it on top of you. You're a happy boy. You don't you don't go Midas on Shadow Shaman or something Azure like that. You get lotus on your five. Strong spirit. Okay, tell me, how do you feel about that? Mm -hmm. you, you, you've you been opinionated on the Storm Spirit before, so I want to hear it. I don't think Storm has many bad mid matchups. I think it's actually okay to pick it blind. Um, what about Puck? No. Are you worried about Puck? I am worried now. Like, they I th have yeah. no catch. Yeah. There's no yeah, last pick for Team Zero. I, I, I just get Puck here, right? I feel like remaining. might be the best answer. Five seconds remaining. Uh, I'm looking at like Puck. I'm looking at Quop. I think Quop's lower on the list. Mm. I'm also kind of looking at Lena, but we haven't seen Team Zero runner. And that is not 70s style, so I would, it's, I would shy away from that. So yeah, I, I'm happy with the puck. I do. I really do think though, like it's if Storm has a good game and he goes Orchid first, they will Pango. This is a very interesting Pango. So I mean, Storm has traditionally been quite nice first to Pango. Now, of course, I'll add. You know, there's a 
just the diffusal can be a bit frustrating for Storm and it can go back and forth. Pango offers a lot of control, but the big thing about Storm is you, you can get onto the Pango before like blink rolling thunder into the middle. That that has always Five really been the nice thing. And the lane is pretty it's pretty decent Azure for Storm. Rays turn to ban. I have to open 70 and yeah, as I as I expected, this guy doesn't play puck. That's it. It's as simple mm -hmm. sometimes as, as that. Like um he just doesn't play it. Ten seconds. Like remaining. his puck has nine games, eleven win rate. Eleven percent remaining. Out of nine games. I I I really think this is something that they scouted out and just uh adapted to. Also most banned by them is the puck by seventy. <laughs> and puck is never banned against them. <laughs> Almost. So it's it's it it really comes down to this. You're picking the hero that you're comfortable with, not the hero that that might Azure be the Rays best for the occasion. Which is also fine. I mean, what n not everyone can play everything. Puck is a specific hero, but he is one of those that your mid laners. I feel like at least in this patch should be able to play constantly. Uh, Life stealer banned out. Finally, by Azure. Ten they don't want to play into remaining. it. Team Zero probably wouldn't want to play into uh, Lifestealer as well, remaining. even though they have li Lion and Bat. And uh, we will get some new carries. Like, wh what's left in the pool that's really good? Like, if you're looking at Team Zero, you're playing into Storm Spirit. Yeah. So, but Morphling still feels alright. They ban out the AM for Erika. I feel like you just go back to some of the carries that are strong at the moment. The Sven is something that I feel like both sides could maybe look at. Mm -hmm. uh, Faces Void has really fallen off. We haven't seen Ten a lot of Faces Void, remaining. but I will just chuck that one out there just because the carry pool is getting limited. Five I think it's good. Remaining. Like Even though time dilation got nerfed, I feel like it's a decent Faceless Void game. I think Morphling, <gasps> Naga, these guys are on uh, maybe... Uh, a high pick rate possibility morphling. Azure um, I like the Naga for zero. Did they play Alchemist before? I feel like versus G G two I G they didn't. Uh, no, they, they didn't got play it in the last series. Yeah, they got alked. Okay, so Alchemist for Team Zero kind of puts the tempo right, like Ten makes remaining. the ma makes the game more interesting. All about this alchemist right now. Five seconds. What do you play? PB, Sven. Um, All he is low are, on the list. Yeah, like, like your Sven is a decent call, but it can go both ways. Like, we've seen Sven lose to Alchemist, we've seen him win against him as well. Uh, is it a good Sven game? It's kind of decent but there's a lot of control like once those bkbs mm -hmm. are down low you have scent you have lion you have pango um how how is low slark like is that something you'd like to play versus pango as well it's kind of rough um slark is good got a good slark i just i don't have a good read on here right now with how strong it is just troll okay this is like yeah. your standard I'm playing versus melee heroes. <clears throat> I get my troll. It's a low troll as well. He's he has. Yeah, I'm, I'm he certain he, he plays it really damn well. Yeah. Um, nice tempo as well versus the alchemist. Your item timings are pretty damn good. You get some extra control into the pango as well if you start connecting with all the all the all the ensnares. I don't mind it. I like it. The lane itself as well is not bad. Like crystal maiden troll should do fine. I like the zero draft, man. I, I, like I really it more like as well, the draft. Yeah, yeah. I would like it more with a puck, but I like it like this as well. It's it's all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you have I, enough control? Mm -hmm. I don't have as big an issue with the pango. It's just the big thing for me is that early game has been very concerning on zero, and I think the pango is a bit better in the early game than the puck. And I would like them to have a lead in the early game, and you should be able to do that. So Pango snowballing with Alchemist having a good timing. We've seen like Alchemist like Radiance blink, and they've been getting very active, like blink second item. And those first couple of fights when they've had that, 
has looked great. And then the game, they've never kind of looked back from there. Like their playmaking potential, they have all five heroes that can eventually make plays. It, it just seems, and on Azure, you're very reliant on Blink on Mars, on power runes on Ori, combining with like FY's rotations and the Crystal Maiden's rotations. And if you don't get those power runes, it seems like the early game, you, you're falling back on the troll. And I do not believe in the troll. I, I, I think this hero is very, very hit or miss. So I, I, I like I like Zero's draft. Okay, um, I I really like you, Ares. Oh, thank you, brother. I it's think so you're a, you're an amazing caster. In, in, even even with you being an Aussie, it, it's kind of battle. working out well. well huh? uh, <laughs> what is what does me being an Aussie have to do with this? Well, you have to fight off all those spiders and kangaroos, and you're still able to cast. For me, that's just incredible. You're wow. you're an inspiration. In any case, I think the glazing your points, is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I think your points were all right for for you. All Very right, good. just all right. What the what the for you for you? I mean, you had some nice calls. What's that here. supposed to mean? It's supposed to mean that I I do see the possibility for Team Zero to play in so many different combos and get kills. Like Lion plus anyone on this lineup, even with the bat, like the two supports can do so much work. Lion sent, Lion Pango, Lion Alchemist once he gets farm. I like Team Zero's draft a bit more when it comes to playing the way Azure played in game one. And that's like being active constantly and doing stuff. Is there enough chaos from uh, Team Zero? I don't think so. Um, not like in game one with that primal beast this is a bit different but it is ori storm and yep. like you can never really uh, go against ori storm that easily he's gonna find a way yeah i had to ori storm and a good lane matchup and with a crystal maiden as well that's like <laughs> that can be enough sometimes so let's see let's see how good of uh, games ori gonna have and what the item build's gonna be as well you know the I think arguments for him going Orchid, although Orchid was nerfed a little bit, I still think maybe it's a little bit more situational compared to what it was previously, especially on Storm. But it could just be your, your classic, you know, Witchblade, Kaya, the the triple the triple blade with Falcon Blade there as well if he wants. So let's see, let's see what Ori can cook up. I'd go, I'd go something classic and then um, get a BKB as fast as possible. Yeah, he needs it. Yeah, yeah. And you, if you have an incredible game, actually, I think Lincoln's is way too luxury. I was going to say Lincoln's kind of nice, but I think there's just way better items. Like I'd like a Septon in him this game eventually. I just don't know where you fit Lincoln's in eventually. It's just not as good as what it used to be. So what on, on store? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't want him to do it. Like I, I it's you know, it used to be nice before with the region and everything, but I think with the addition of Septor. I don't want that over Lincoln's. You're happy with just BKB? Yeah, we'll see. A lot of stats, no matter what. Like, th that Sanj and uh, Kaya, maybe. We'll see. Um, like you said, Witchblade. Paras the Parasma and Witchblade, they did get touched in the last patch, but still good. That's Parasma, not Witchblade. Witchblade it, was isn't Witchblade's uh, like, magic damage dot lower? Or is it only on Parasma? Uh, the Prasma only got nerfed. Okay. So I was oh. sure I saw the Witchblade intelligence down to 70% as dot damage. I'm checking now. Blade intelligence. Oh, maybe it is down as well. Okay. It doesn't say if you hover over Witchblade, it doesn't say it got nerfed. But then Prasma says Witchblade intelligence. Yeah, I don't know. It's a bit weird. Yeah, okay, maybe, so maybe, maybe it's only on Parasma. Yeah, maybe it's only on Parasma. In any case, uh, still a very good item for these int cores. Uh, oh, yep, from the yep, mid lane, yep. I feel like it's almost a must on 90% of them. There are, there is, there just isn't anything better. Uh, so far, nothing really crazy happening in the lanes. Uh, only Storm winning against Pango, which is to be kind of expected. You are playing into a melee hero that got nerfed, by the way. The swashbuckle is a nerf. Uh, in mm. my eyes, in my eyes, it's a nerf. I don't know. Like you're hitting less. But the damage early on is better. Yeah. One thing to to keep an eye on as well is just how Erica plays, how YSR plays on the the Alchemist. Because again, we've really seen so far there has been just a a trend for him only being on ranged carries. 
Yeah, we've seen the Clinks, the Drow, Luna, Weaver. Wait, uh, it, it, it's it's then less damage, Ares. What, sorry? Are you looking at the Witchblade so? No, 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 Swashbuckle. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, it's 3 okay, times yeah, 30 sorry. or 4 times 25, right? So it's, it's then less damage. It, Is it just maybe... level 1 that's less? On level 1 it's less, on level 2 it's 3 times 60 instead of... So what? that's 180 versus 4 times 45 which is the same. So on level 2 it's the same. On level 1 it's less. I'm not sure about level 3, I, 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 that's too much. The, the numbers are big. Too much, it's too much. The big big le numbers. Le level four, it's just more damage. By I'll bit. send it to my uni professor. He can he can do the <laughs> ma maths. <laughs> Math is not mathing right now. Alright, well, wonder what the build's gonna be for beyond this game as well. We just got the classic. We want to go some points in retaliate against the troll spam. Or if it's just going to be the stock standard here for the Centaur. Uh, Lo should have a very good lane nonetheless. And it is going to mean the supports will be a little bit more free to rotate. As we already see from Tian Ming. Try and secure one Pomo of the water runes. So much damage. Is, yeah, this is crazy. I mean, he wants a rune for himself. Another yeah, first by really not Pomo. worth it at this point. Yeah. At this point, he needs to base. Like, he, he just got zoned to base. Like, he was trying to run next to Tianmin without uh, using a build. Oh, Ori? Oh my god, dude, this is huge. Wow, that's so close to getting first blood onto a, a not a good, not a favorable lane matchup for the Pango. Yeah, let's go game. That, let's literally go base. I have to. Fuck, top, top lane. lane. Oh, nice flame no. break. Nice yeah. flame breaks. Easy Q. Wow. Perfect timing. That's actually that. That was hype. That was hype. Very nicely done. Huge wave pushing in for Ori, so he will find that farm under the tower. Lion is rotating back in though. Uh, what do you do though? Pongo is so low. He might even die here. This might be a kill. He has a TP, but there's a CM coming. This is your first blood. Ah, oh, that's huge. Ah, the hex! Oh. Yikes. That, uh, you can't be given Storm first blood. Ah, uh, it's just... He's been, like... All of this stems off of that Crystal Maiden River fight, because he never went base. He just continued running around with 50% HP. Tech is TPing now mid. They want this. He's level 6 though, and there's a ward. Just a refill. Level 3 is more as well on the swashbuckle. 10 more. <laughs> it took, me, uh, took, me, took me two minutes. Just had to, you know, I just, had, just had to do the numbers. I had to get my pen and paper, bottom lane, low. <laughs> Should be able to get the kill under the draw wall. Now they will. Now the river. Seminate's actually got level 6 before Ori. But he's gonna miss all the stuns. Now it gets one, but it is he's got very messy. Now they can actually turn it potentially with FY here. Oh, he's watched aggressively. He's got the shield. Okay, never mind. He's fine. I think he's fine. He should be. Fine. Yeah, he's got he's got raindrop. He's got nine one charges. If you dive him, you probably die even. Now the ward will be refilled as well. The the bottle that is. Yeah. If he didn't get that shield rune, if it was something a bit more useless, they definitely could have gotten that kill. I love how Ori was going? waiting on that one creep, by the way, to die. That one range creep. He knew it's gonna happen and then he gets six. Ori is going Orchid too as well. So, I mean, a very, very debilitating item versus the Pango. You are... Maybe looking at an early yours for 7e as a result. Uh, speaking of yours, I wonder if Bark is, even goes for yours this game. Yeah, we've seen this has been the Amar build. In fact, he just goes yours regardless. It doesn't even matter on uh, on who he's versing. Yep. So if he wants that to be able to set up for, for something. I do like it on Mars. It gives you also this uh, yep. movement speed, right? Like mana that you need. It's, it's really a nice build on him, but... 
With the soul ring and two bracers, I'm not sure. Let's see. I, I, I still think it would be fine. Get that extra catch going for you. Lloyd's having a great time down bottom, though. I mean, this alchemist completely untouched. Top net worth. And we'll see. He's going to be going for the Battle Fury this game. Already making his own stacks. Let's miss that one a little bit. Fortunately. And Ori's got some great stacks as well to fall back on thanks to FY. So importantly, this is going to give FY a lot of levels that he's currently lacking. I didn't actually see. What was the wisdom room like? It was a one for one. Crazy. Yep. Any stacks for FY? Why is that? A little bit of cup. Apollo made them once beyond. We might have to pop the stampede here. Yeah. How can they use it uh, on a different side of the map? Uh, they can't. Just Erika brewing up the stun, but stunning himself eventually. Whenever I see a random ass stampede that happens like that just to rescue the centaur, I see a kill somewhere else on the map. Unexpectedly, you know, that stampede mm -hmm. comes in. And this time it didn't happen. Might be eyeing up the alchemist top. There's a bit of a window with the chemical rage on cooldown. FY was stepping up, but I saw went back to collect the lotus. He might even go for his own pull if he wants to. And they're actually going to double rotate low along with Tiaming. Tiaming's already level 6. Yeah, this is that a good rotation to take down the tier 1 tower as well, ZZQ. Might be the one that dies. Most likely will be, yep. I've seen this move like so much from AR and uh, G2IG as well. Most uh, tier 1 teams just rotate the carry in. You can get the kill, you can get the tower and then you just go back. And you continue farming like nothing happened. Storm, tipping bottom. They don't have stampede yet. In a couple seconds, but I think they're going to be able to get the kill beforehand. Not going to use it regardless. Tiaming was holding Frostbite. Or came back yeah. off cooldown, I didn't see the start. He could have used it, but he dies. Like you said, Frostbite was still there, so... Nothing for Centaur hey. to go for. they got to get Ponless in levels. Only level 4 right now on the line. Got to get him involved in the game. Would like to see... I was going to say, I'd like to see them smoke, but... Are you going to smoke a level 4 lion? Not the best, definitely. ZZQ getting way more when it comes to that. Uh, when it comes to experience. The problem is, like, in a game such as this one, you're playing into a storm. So if you're sitting on a lane just chilling, getting experience, you might even get jumped. So he has to be a bit more careful, a bit more back. Not getting all the exp. Can make some stacks. When they are farmed, he's gonna get exp. Oh, he tried stacking with the hex. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd, I'd guess he knows, but uh, yeah. One creep goes, and the hexed one was just chilling after. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I'm, I'm a stupid creep. <laughs> Why was I a frog? <laughs> Uh, game slowed down. Uh, Alchemist is. Maelstrom, actually. Really? Top lane for. 70. I think. I don't know if they kill a Bark. Doesn't really have the greatest position to utilize the Rolling Thunder, and it's taken far too long as AR being able to react. That's your first movement out of 70 as well. He's cooking. This Alchemist is cooking something. Uh... Oh, he's cooking, is he? Alright. Yeah, right. he's, he's, he's cooking. Let him cook, let him cook. I want to see where this goes. What no kind radiance, of... really? What, what I... kind of a dish are we brewing? Let's see, let's see. Okay. I, just, I think Misfus Roll and Storm are quite nice. I agree, let I agree. Cook. But, but what about Lightning? Isn't Lightning cool? Ah. You get to, you get to zap people. I mean, it's What's got true strike, right? The the procs. So I don't yes. know if that is. Yeah, but uh... that's the that's like one of the best things about it. Plus, you attack really fast, so you're gonna have those procs happening very often. Uh, but yeah, radiance most likely my favorite as well. 
was most likely for sure my favorite item on him, but there there was a patch or two in which this was a build as well, and uh, there was a patch yeah, in which yeah, yeah. Battle Fury was a build as well on Alchem. So it's not completely crazy, but uh, let him cook. Just let him cook. Let's see what happens. All right, Orca timing 13 minutes in, and both sides are going to mirror at the top, and this without a doubt will favor Radiant. Uh, this Orchid reveal is going to catch him off guard. And that's the perfect hero as well with the pink glare. Then people get them out of the threat of the, the techies blast off. Yeah, that's what they are okay. Nothing. It's just because Polno was in the right position. It's like, <clears throat> he is level 5, but it's all that he needs. It's not about the damage, it's about the control. They are pinging beyond now. They, he doesn't have Stampede. This might be troll. Never mind. Too deep, too deep. Very passive game. Yeah, Ori is top though, so... Uh, he is jumping. Long zip in. No mana now to work with if they want to take the team fight afterwards. Devonese gonna show up. We'll be able to target down and find bouncing off the crystals. You even have YSR swing on over as well. Bark's oh. a much more difficult kill. Especially now with the concoction not getting cast in, and Bark is not dead just yet, and now with Low showing up, the Zap will blow him up. Beyond's gonna be forced to react as well as Ori's in a lot of trouble. Zero mana and a beautiful stun from Pomlo. Lined up onto three. Troll's gonna get chased down, ultimate activated, but what damage have you got, my friend? It is not enough. This is a gigantic fight for Dyer. Triple kill for 7e with. Zero casualties, I believe, or maybe one bad. person went down. In fact, no, no one. Bad, bad died. Uh, if you count bad, because he was the one initiated on, right? Like, Storm got him, and then uh, Pango TP'd in. Insane! Like, very nicely done by Team Zero uh, to respond. Even even though I thought it was going to be a disaster once Alchemist stunned Radiant's himself. He was cooking for way too long, didn't throw that uh, bomb on the Mars and got stunned. But now he has that full Mjolnir. It's a lot of damage, like this early on. It's a lot of control versus uh, versus Storm as well. And if you jump in and just use Orchid and all your mana on a Bat Rider, be damn sure they will counterplay you. The defusal on Pangolier doing wonders and now he has a Blink on top of that. Blink, Defusal, Arcane Rune. Expect a move from them. There's a blink on Centaur as well. Jules is purchased, mm. by the way, by Mars, like you like you wished for. That was kind of hunting for Bach. I've got a bit of an idea of where he is currently. Yeah, they want to steal his stacks, if nothing else. Oh, he's a sad boy. He worked so hard for that. Top tower is under attack. At least he doesn't die. That's the main thing. He does not die. Low is farming. Top tower has being progressing towards that next item, being the Sanjin Yasha. The T1 tower is going to be claimed. They're going to invade into the jungle as well, take a little bit of farm. Maybe they want to set up bottom. Beyond. Gonna TP in. AI do have some members nearby. They're going to go for the central. Nice sidestep from Ori. Pomlo's going to miss the stun. Or he's going to be cautious about the mana pool though. Seventy is going to reveal the blink. Jump got two heroes simultaneously. Seventy trying to address the storm spirit and they'll be rewarded. Pomlo zaps him down and Seventy's Pango. I was showcasing his true strength on the hero. Alchemist is in. I feel like they can team fight. Is this correct? I mean, FY is going to find a pretty good angle for the double stun. But Logis is having a lot of difficulties with entering on the troll or without the items. Stephanie with the shield crash is still in some danger, but Lo is slow to a crawl. He's going in. Alchemist. And now they might go back in. Tian Ming's going to be the target. They need to kite, play their distance. ZZQ's got a, a lack of health issue, but YSR does not have that at all. He can charge on forward. Oh, all these blink daggers coming into play. It doesn't matter that you can reset with the arena. Your storm is dead. Nicely done by Ponlo. Getting that zap in, and this is a guy that had min minute 11, level 4. Now he has a blink dagger as well on his lion. I mean, this is perfect for him. He's feeling it. Mid lane. They are TPing with the storm, with the techies, but 
It's not enough damage at the moment. Really not enough damage for them to kill off anyone before they get answered. And okay, they want to do it against... Ah. He's got the boys behind him though. Or he's going to jump over the top. But again, the rolling thunder from 70. The chain control is just proving far too much of an issue. Now YSR as well. A blink for Bill and Zero are cooking this game. They will not go down without a fight. Game one was a blip on the okay. radar, but this second game, 6,000 net worth lead for them 18 minutes in. Let them cook. And what's so nice about that fight is the fact that Team Zero read it perfectly. They didn't have any wards. They just knew it's coming. Like, Pangolier was reusing uh, Rolling Thunder, waiting for that jump to happen. Like, he knows it's coming. And then instantly as it happens, he responds with uh, Rolling Thunder and the Blink. 70 just playing out of his mind, really carrying yeah. his team super damn hard. I, the person who's feeling it the most is Ori Storm Spirit. You go this Orchid to the Snowball and get pickoffs and... Yep. He's got nothing since his item. Oh, we see he's falling very far behind now. Yeah, he's got a bit of a health issue, like you called it. He's uh, on no health. 24-7. Every time he goes in, he just dies. Um, the Stampede is messing with him, actually, quite a lot, too. They have a lot of control for him, and then he, they then they have Stampede to run away. The Mars Arena just wasn't there on, on the mid lane fight, obviously. He got controlled, too. Like, you, you can't save your spells for the perfect opportunity, that's the problem. Like, if you're playing this uh, Team Azur's draft right now, with a 7k deficit, you just need to use your spells. I saw he's gonna get a free kill. Is he on me? What's going on? <laughs> Bot lane uh, rush. Maybe an option for them after the tier 1 tower. It is still very early on, but you have DD on Pango. Alchemist with acid spray. Don't need to rush it though, it's not... Like, you, you, you'd waste a lot of your time. Alright, it doesn't lead. Uh, it, how much... If Lo is able to rival the Alchemist's farm, or, of course it's a bit difficult to do that because of the, the nature of Elk, but let's say like Lo is able to keep up somewhat in net worth, how do we feel about the Troll's potential for success in this game? I mean, he can, but it's much harder for him to have a good game than it is for Alchemist. That's the way I see it. Alchemist, growing up. I like the patience as well for YSR. You saw he was just kind of waiting for the Crystal Maiden to move more forward just in case there was someone else playing behind him that would they would have rather jumped. Polo. Polo yeah, he's him. gonna be able to catch him as well just as the TP comes through, so secondary pickoff. Is the finger Polo, well. come on. <laughs> the stacks. <laughs> Get the stacks. something extra for the Yeah. Double kill. It, it's just much much easier for I, th I like the troll to welcome's matchup by the way i think it's good for troll but you need um you need your teammates as well and i feel that team zero is doing way more for this alchemist than azure will be able to do for the troll they need bkbs on azure they need all of them straight up all three cores troll the closest one storm not really close and mars is yeah he's sitting on 2.4k gold you need these BKBs. I feel like every fight you take at the moment will be a losing fight. I'm not sure how big of a difference the BKBs will make if uh, the network advantage continues to be like this for Team Zero. But you need them. Like, regardless. It's the only way you come back into this. I guess it's just a question of like how much can Team Zero get across the map before the BKBs then? Because his network lead is continuing to grow, and really, whenever they want to, they can look for Roche. You know, maybe it's, maybe it's now. They are all clumped yeah. around bottom. Maybe they want this T2 tower first, just to it looks, make it, it looks a little like bit more Roche. difficult. Uh, you called it very well. Looks like Roche straight into the pit. Acid spray. Asher is the all-important thing. Usually, this is like. 
This can be the big thing about the Troll versus the Alchemist matchup if Troll is able to get it early on. But this will definitely enable YSR. Go for the man fight. Oh, and now you got the Aegis as well. Do you give it to 70, this Aegis? Two cards. Still picks it up. Okay. Yep. He's got... Uh... He's got a lot of damage this game, even without uh, the form. Even without the form, yeah, he dies most likely without it, but even without Chemical Rage, he still hits really fast, really hard. He's got SNY, Mjolnir, and Basher. Like, this is a hero on its own without the Chemical Rage. And then on top of that, of course, they are smoking up. They have a BKB probably on Troll, right? Yeah, Blue has a BKB. That's why the smoke up, but... The scary engagement anyway for them. Dyer's structures are fortified. Planning to see back to tier two tower. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Just gonna get popped there. They are a little bit disconnected now. This this Three fight under the smoke, they're actually gonna see the storm. Oh BKB from beyond. But 70 as well with a counter. We're gonna try and catch any stragglers before they get back to the safety of their half of the map. Now the doubt Crystal Maiden will not make it. Devon is also going to be able to catch up to low. Great stun from Pondo. Low He's going to eat the combo now with the arena. Oh my lord. Look at the damage potential. Okay. Finally, the combo is going to be there from AR, but the response. And Team Zero will still strike back. YSR blows up Bark. Yeah. I have to say, they, they got to be careful with one thing. Like, even though you're far ahead and in front, you're 9k ahead. It is an Alchemist game. 5k of death advantage is on him. You have to still take the fights properly with proper vision I, I don't think that you can just jump high ground and be careless even though you're in front if you get caught you will die to the techies and mars damage without anything else so and also this troll has a bkb now so he's starting to hurt too he can go to oh beyond nice stun is actually enough to be able to buy some time but still with a chemical rage on cooldown first life gone they're gonna set up for a second round. Rolling Thunder's still down. Nice YSR is able to get the blink away, but unfortunately Beyond will be caught and sent to his grave. They want to there fight. They got, a hug. they got a good ward. Well, it's gonna be the first to start. And the chain control needs to be perfect before the battle transit. It looks like it might be for the Yule Scepter. Ah, by some valuable seconds below. And now they might see an opportunity to be able to jump back in, but the Alchemist is not an easy kill again! On low! Another great double stun! Dion Ming caught on the cliff! Oh, and on oh. low, <laughs> having a much different second game. This Lion putting in work inside the team fights. Oh, very, very nice impales. I love how they get baited that they can kill the Alchemist just because he doesn't have BKB. Usually you see this Alchemist, you're like, yeah, he has no BKB, let's go. We can, we can do it, but... This man slaps, like he turns on you and you're just gone in an instant. Big, big issue they had that fight is troll without the BKB. And that's why Pomo can do everything. That's why the hexes, the impales, everything, ca earth spikes coming attack. from him. If there's a BKB on troll, he can just pop it, pop his ulti and go in, but... It's, uh, it didn't happen. And Team Zero, it Radiance looked a bit hairy, to be honest, for me. All this advantage and the fights weren't looking super easy. But nice, nice turn by them. Agony is already setting up for another fight. Yep. Hex completed on that Pangolier. Thank you. Or he's going to show him. Pondler's just open. The boys are behind him, but. There's a smoke. For them to jump. Mm -hmm. Who's the target? Lysar's going to go through the portal, so it looks like they will be off the mark with this. 15 20 seconds earlier and they even get him on the creeps but not like this they need to okay low because he's showing you know where they are you should at least zq he's waiting for that he's literally just Radiant's waiting for that smoke and his teammates as well because they might counter see he's attack. blinking in too far Like usually, when you didn't see the carry for the full 15 seconds, and then he shows up pushing in your tier 1, um, this tier 1 down bottom, you can expect the enemy team to be invading the triangle. And, uh, they just don't feel comfortable enough doing it without wards. They have this one ward around the tier 2 mid, but it, it's not enough. Mine 
is truly a blessed life. That's... I think it's crazy the fact that this pen goes zero deaths this game. Into a first item orchid on Storm. I'm very, very impressed with Seveny's performance. And Thonlos, by the way. He's the one that saved him so many times. There's also the Centaur with the Stampede that helped out. Seveny played out of his mind, too, for sure. Is under attack. Was helped. They will, uh... They'll take the Wisdom Room, which is something. They're both gonna go the way of Radiant. By See the how way, they can store this. <clears throat> you talked about Lincolns on Storm, and that's what he's buying. Actually, no BKB. He went for Lincolns. I... Radiance middle tower is under attack. I'm skeptical. That's yeah. all I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah. I maybe I'm thinking Lincoln Scepter, or it might still go BKB. I just don't know if it's he's gonna completely avoid it now if he wasn't gonna go at this uh, at this item. So we'll see. We'll see what the choice is gonna be for Ori or not. Yeah. Uh, smoke from Zero may actually run into Tian Ming, which of course is you're happy with giving up a couple kills. Roll up. Yeah. Looks like they will. So <laughs> even tipping in the Alchemist just in case anyone else is here. But it is just Tian Ming. So importantly, uh, this is what's going to happen when you're playing from this deficit. You will just, you're going to have to lose some members so everyone else can get farm onto the map. Mm -hmm. It's your your job, really, <laughs> from time to time. And Storm actually goes through the twin portal, goes down bot, continues farming. They do have these defensive items now, so arguably you could take a fight if you have perfect vision, but. There's a 15k advantage. It's not easy no matter how you look at it. BKB on Troll, BKB on Mars, but still no defensive item on, on the Storm Spirit. He just wants to creep skip, it seems like. He went through. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. You poke high ground here. Right, it looks that way. They see Storm, they see Mars. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Let's see if Dyer glyph as well to protect the wave. Is that cut pop? Are we gonna glyph? Okay. I think this is good enough, right? Like you force glyph and you move back. Ori needs to be Ori. extremely careful. Oh no, he zipped his easy Q. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> what? The the, the, the slow the, oh, the slow from God. the hit. And now mid lane, what? what's going on? Alchemist. Ah, uh, is this a fight they want to try and take? Seven E. Pump in, stampede to reset the positioning. Bark is still got Arena, 7 is gonna clip him just on the end of the Rolling Thunder. Is Bark going oh, to go illusion. for it though? Illusion. It's just an illusion. And now they may... Hey, it's gonna work out for them. Bark is just blown up. And Ori doesn't have a lot of mana to it. I would escape. He's stuck. Can't He's he like, boys, I need help. But the boys, what can they do? They got an Alchemist BKB running at them. And Low is nowhere to be seen. This troller... What's well, nothing to do with the team fight? Why is Zard's gonna be able to jump over the top and get the tech? He's there still on Ori as well. No mana for the Storm Spirit. And one by one they go in, and one by one they all die. Not all. <laughs> Troll is living still. If that matters, if that means anything, because he doesn't have a BKB, which is the reason why he didn't want to join. Like, no BKB, no Troll. Really nice bait there on the illusion. Everything fell apart, like. Box just got super baited. Like he went in, used pretty much the Yules, which is so important, and the spear. Baited the Storm as well. Storm was late anyway to the fight because he had no mana from the top fight. He needed to get that back. Yeah, terrible. This is uh, at least melee. And top lane is also very low. Looking for the spear angle. No BKB. Be able to get the connection, but are you killing Alchemist? It's a lot of damage for the mines. Are a little bit hands in now with Ori zipping back from base. Why is Hans gonna go down? Is this the start they need to be able to get more as well? 19,000 deficit. You need to catch some stragglers. Maybe and 70 as well. He's gonna be able to get the Pango. This is a vital kill. 7 0 streak. A lot of gold given over to Ori. Oh, that's a Lincoln's right there. 800, 900 gold for the Storm Spirit. You do lose a side, but this, this these are kind of a fights that you ha really have to take. How much gold did uh, Alchemist give? Just check it out, please. 1,200 to one hero, and then 1,400 among the other ones. Oof. That's a huge swing.
That's a huge swing of gold. That's a satanic control. Oh, I put the mark? Yeah, he can. Oh, can he? I think he can. Can he? Oh, oh, can he? <laughs> <laughs> 30 health. 30 health. <laughs> oh, bulwark. <laughs> How does it work when you're when you're uh, when you're a sheep? By the way, when does a shield? How does a sheep ha have a ah, shield? We don't, we don't question these things, brother. We uh, we let the mechanics do their own things. I see. I see. In any case, uh, Roche? it would be huge. Roche is up. I don't know why it's in there. It doesn't see it, right? They changed it, yeah. I think they changed it. I think they have. They see it. I sw what? Didn't I thought that got? Wasn't that changed? I, I, I thought I'm, that I'm... was changed. Yeah, same. Anyways, they're smoked up. They're going in. This is going to be maybe on time. Even radiant have scanned. Yeah, they're moving back. It's still decent for you if you can set up mines on radiant. Like, would be a nice fight. You have high ground. You have this outpost as well to TP too. What about the buybacks? They have by Bark was he, he was the catalyst for that uh, that recent team fight success. He's gotta go crazy once again on the Mars. Is it Q? Beyond's gotta try and jump in. Can't hang down low, but Lowe's gonna be able to activate with the BKB, but 70 comes crashing to the middle, but he's stuck! The Pango is stuck and Lowe is turning for Roche! Is there any way to be able to stop him? Beyond's gonna Beyond try and get in the middle, and he stutters! Got it. And he snatches! Lowe gets it! Second line! Another fight potentially for AR as well as 70. What a disaster of a team fight and how are we in this position where this game is even? I, I'm looking at that team fight and I can't believe what I'm seeing because sometimes Gaben is just on your side. I'm telling you, this is this is a thing. I think Gaben is like some big brother watching all these games and using creeps or ice frog, whatever. Like Alchemist jumps in, he has his Abyssal, right? And he has his Chemical Rage. And if he starts hitting you, you can't do anything because he controls you. You know what happens? He jumps in, Rosh slaps him, and he gets stunned for a second, which allows Troll to use all of his... It allows everything. Like, they lose the fight off of that one second goddamn stun. And then I'm, I don't even want to talk about Pango getting stuck in, in the cliffs and whatnot. Just... I don't know. I'm, I'm pissed. Like, really sad for Team Zero. They worked hard to be where they're at. Like, it, it looked like their game, and they did do a little bit of trophy uh, around the mid lane fights, but god damn, that was rough. Brother, what just happened? Uh, that's Lou with an Aegis now. What? Nah, they're gonna try and blow him up to zero. Reeves gonna activate the beacon, but still with the Abyssal Blade, he still gets the ult to up! That's where the last okay, was able to come into play. It's a lot committed on the first life on low, and Park, he's actually gonna miss as well, but we gotta keep in mind, Scepter was actually just completed for the Storm Sphere. That's not that bad though, they're Why? jumping in, refresher on Park. Nice sure Scepter. Not just a rolling thunder, now Park's gonna try and find another angle. Lacking a little bit of mana, will it be a concern? A lot was forced out, and no one dies. Yeah, that, that actually isn't that bad for Team Zero, because you force everything. I'm, I'm actually surprised Troll used everything. Like BKB, uh, ult, and Satanic. I'm not sure if he needed to, but because of that, they're able to uh, force them back. Still, can you do anything in this timing? Because it's the window is closing, you have 45 more seconds without the BKB. And realistically, you can't kill him. You can't kill him twice. Alchem's brewing up, but yeah, not gonna jump anyone. Oh boy. Just. Oh, well, the fact we are in this position. How are you gonna play from a deficit on Team Zero? I will add though. Their late game fights have been very good against a lot of teams once they've been getting to the stage. But let's see how difficult it is going to be, because you have the ecstatic feeling of leading game two and feeling like you're going to take it, and then you lose two fights, and is the confidence still there or not? This is a very young team led by Erica or YSR. 
against the experienced members of Azure. They've got some Iho members here as well. Come on, they they've been around. They've done something like they've they've had some success. I like the ZZQ and 7E combo as well. The Singaporean boy Ponlo. I don't know. It's always fun to watch him. Like it, it, I, I always feel like when I'm watching him, like he's half trolling. It's, you know what I mean? It's like yeah, half no, bounding in the game, and it's still kind of working. They're going top though. He has to clown defend the top lane though, and they make it. No acid spray, even to delay it with the combo. There we go, the first nice impaled, stun connected. Just X maybe. Yeah, just poke and force them back. What's the Aegis timer? One more minute. You have one more minute to defend the high ground, roll back in. Oh, Bach gets the angle. Onto the bat right, even speeds him out of the base as well. Beautiful spear. They want a counter though. Why size him? Seven or E. Crashes him with the Rolling Thunder as well. All or nothing for this fight. Buybacks are there. And they're just completely kiting low. Who cares about him? Get the supports. And now deal with the first slap and set up for round two. It's all up to Ori with the zip in. They're going to make sure they don't group up for the Vortex. And up with the chain control. Troll in some danger. BKB is going to be activated along with the Battle Trance as well. But they hold the lasso for the BKB. And it's not going to matter in the end. Lo will not win the man fight when every single hero is surrounding him. Now they can just do it the old fashioned way. Poke, prod, bam him out. The old the boys fashioned on way. Five on one. <laughs> the old, good old fashioned way. Just, just kill him. Uh, yeah. Nice. Very nice defense by Team Zero. Polo doing so much damn work. I really, really think that if you are Azure, you need to deal with this lion. The same way Team Zero was jumping FY in that last game, even dooming him on the Shadow Shaman, you have to do the same thing to this lion. They have a lot of control with other heroes, sure, certainly, but they're on lo longer cooldowns. Like, once this Rolling Thunder is off, like, it's hard for Pango to do as much, even with the Basher. You know what, lion is just one Impale, Hex, Mana Drain, Impale again, Hex, like, you gotta kill him. So they're actually going to be the first one to start. Techies going to buy back at least on FY. KB buff. Uh, oh, the Bash. No way. No way the Bash is there. Do, uh, do they really want to commit? Oh, the buyback. They see this Bro. as an opportunity to buy back on low. I mean, let's see how it's going to be able to get into the teamfight though. Low. He beats into the middle, but always out of mana and soon to be out of health. Buyback. He's got to buy back at least. Okay, so he doesn't buy back, but Troll does. This looks like a, a, just a mess to me. Like, you, buy, you bought back control, you didn't defend. This storm... What's he buying? What, what's he go oh, he's, he's queuing up the BKB, but... You have BKB on Bach, like, he could go in. He smoke Bach, though, and then buy back? They have Kempo Rage again. The lasso blink getting. Oh, oh, he's on to double stun. And now Ori with the buyback as well. With the Vortex. It's at least going to help Loki get into the middle. But does he win the man fight? Worst wide side. It looks like he will. Low brings down the Alchemist. Beyond will escape and 70 also are out as well. But AR, that is a very, very costly defense. Multiple buybacks used on some big cores. Uh, still, really nicely done by Ori to control the Alchemist before the stun. Like, he actually, uh, once again, used Unstable Concoction on himself, so he self-stunned after the Agonim's pull. L like you said, however, they need to get something done off of that, because it's a huge commitment. All these buybacks, they are hurting you. If... Roshan was about to respawn or something like that, it would be worth it, but like this... It's just so tough to say that they won anything off of that, because they really haven't. They need to force some buyback, maybe. Can you, though? Let's see. Bangalier smoked up, they have Glyph as well. Lion is up in three. I mean, the problem with forcing a buyback in this situation is, if you overcommit and try to force a buyback, and you do force it, they can end the game if they win that fight, because you're pushing high ground, they can initiate on you easily. And you don't have a mid set of Raxxas, so your throne is exposed. 
perfect position for Team Zero. Even though they're only 5k ahead right now, uh, they do have buybacks on the, their side and mm -hmm. that might decide the game. I don't, my big question mark is just this late game troll versus alchemist now. Because you have the abyssal and troll and importantly you know the level 25 talent is huge. No, I, I, I think it's just a good troll matchup in general. It's just that um, they were usually very much behind and they didn't have uh, good control or the troll on, on the Radiant side. Meanwhile, <clears throat> Dyer was just doing well. But, and have this rolling thunder, you have the stun from beyond, you have the impale, the mana drain, the everything from Ponlo. Let's see. There's Ancient Guardian on Alchemist, so some extra bonus damage for him. And you can see AR yielding this rush fight for now at least. Okay. Clear off all the mines, at least. No slight vision advantage for Radiant. Top is getting pushed in, so it is some creeps inside the base. Radiant will have to deal with mid as well. They got a smoke to contest. They do, they've got one. You have this outpost advantage if Rosh spawns right now. It will spawn while it's still on Radiant, but... How big is the outpost advantage when you don't have buybacks? That's the problem. Like you really don't have them, so Rush fights have been good for Radiant for uh, Azure yep. though. Like rush okay. fights they kinda clutch it always. Wait, they might just get the Sentinel while he's connecting to the team if they're quick. They're gonna see the Batrider Courier as well. And they're gonna see the Sentinel, dude. This is huge. Bark jumps and low! He's right near might be able to fall with the initiation. And he used him with the perfect timing. Stops Wysar, but importantly, Beyond's able to get away thanks to the Stampede. Now it's up to Lone Wysar with the man fight. Beyond's going to be able to reinitiate, and they got the troll! A dieback is online, and now 70 as well. Ori, it's all or nothing. But the Storm's really just doesn't have the mana to be able to win the team fight for AR. And it looks like Team Zero may have done it. They'll catch up to the it Storm's like group. Triple kill for YSR. And game two should go their way. This looks very, very much like 1-1. One, one. Uh, the question is, they know there are no buybacks. There's no question. You just go straight down mid, you end this. You, you're going for Throne. Can Bach do it alone with Crystal Maiden? Let's see. This is some ultimate defense. What does CM have? Let's see. I mean, I know they can't do it. I'm just entertaining myself here with some Freezing Field and Mars Arena, but they don't even have Freezing Field. You just... Buybacks are not Radiant up, not gonna be up. AC on the Alchemist. He's getting the bonus damage uh, from the Ancient Guardian as well. He is, right? Like, you are getting it even if you... It just says off yeah, yeah. an Ancient, it doesn't say your range. Getting the bonus damage. Uh, if they want a defense, they're gonna go. And yeah, no, uh, it's, it doesn't matter. Alright! Uno one one time! Well done, Team Zero. I mean, this was a very back and forth game, though. I mean, so the Alchemist for a while was starting to look a little bit scary. Then AR have the lead, then Zero have the lead, then AR have the lead, then we go back and forth. I think it's an exciting game in the end. It was back and forth, 100% uh, like you said, but overall, Team Zero uh, deserved it. They had a quite significant lead from the get-go. A little bit of, of throwing happened here and there, but uh, the bait on the illusion was probably my most significant play of the game. The one that they did on the mid lane. They won that fight successfully and then um, everything kind of fell apart for Azure. The rush fight for Azure was a gift from God. God damn, that was, everything went right. Everything that can go right went right for them in that fight. Um, I also think that, yeah, they, you, you got this Orchid on Storm Spirit and nothing worked. Like, nothing happened. Ori, even though he's extremely proficient at Storm, and he knew what he had to do, they adapted and they waited for those movements so damn well on Team Zero. Like, 
these two teams, yeah, you can say that Azure are favorited, but it really comes down to who has a slight advantage in the draft, the way it looks like, at least at the moment. Because we both agreed in game one that Azure had a huge advantage. In game two, we agreed with the team zero had a slight advantage and they executed on it. I really liked the adjustment, the cooking that Alchemist did. It worked out really well. Yeah, that it did. That it did in the end. So, 1-1 one, one tie. What we saw previously in their other series, of course, it was a best of three instead of a best of five. But like you said, it was just a very different look at at least Team Zero as a whole in regards to the carry hero pool that we've been getting out of YSR. So, may, and now this Pangalier, again, this this now when we have a best of five, you know, there's some extra heroes start popping up that teams need to consider. And Devon is... He's looking like he was looked pretty decent in game one for them as well, but game two, like his Pangolier and Ponlo and some of those fights really were some big reasons why they were able to even be in this position and come back. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to be looking at the Pangolier though and where the priority is for that. I'm quite surprised at how well he was able to perform considering, uh, you know, this Storm Spirit with the Orchid, they just got nothing out of it, like you said. So, let's see. 1-1 one, one tie here for our best of five in the grand final. Zuri up against Team Zero. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, though, we got more Dream League China close qualify action. See you guys soon.
Team Zero showing that they are not going to go down without a fight. A 1-1 tie in our best of five grand finals. Lizard, let's see what we have in store for us heading into our game three draft. In fact, should be up on our screen very, very shortly. We got Team Zero Radiant, Azure on the dire side. Is there anything from the last game that we saw out of Team Zero that you think needs to be addressed in the banning phase heading into this game? Hmm. Uh, from the last game, I feel like you might even respect Pomo and his uh, catching heroes such as Lion, but I don't think you're going to address it in a banned way. You might uh, get heroes that are a bit better against that. Overall, I really think that their bans are everything that was necessary, like your Kunkas, your Slardars, something that the Zure hates to play against, like the Slardar, they lost against it, and then Team Zero as well plays extremely well with it. Timbersaw as well, not something you want to give Bach. Um, so uh, perhaps something that uh, Team Zero could ban out and you heard it, I heard it, I have only one screen but I heard the sound, I know what's gonna happen. You don't want to give it but you gave it away. I did give it away indeed, so let's get that draft up on screen so we, uh, so everyone knows what hero we're speaking about in particular. It is going to be the Timber Soul for Azura. There is that Pango first phase ban as well, like I thought Five maybe they might remain. consider against 7e. I just love uh, the Timber Zone Bach way more than than the Mars. I feel like he's able to just get that pressure rolling, break Team Zero Azure before they even come online. Back. That's what he did last game, and this is the same exact answer Team Zero had last game. Like I was talking about Kunka, about how Azure probably doesn't want to play against it, but um, they did win against it with the Timber. <clears throat> they let it go through. They picked it up. What else the Team Zero had remaining. that game? They had a Crystal Maiden, right? Like it was Crystal Maiden Five and, and a, a Life. No, what, what? Which one? What, uh, are you saying a Zero yeah. or Azure. Zero? Uh, Shaman Azure. and Crystal Maiden. T -t -t Team Azure, Azure Ray, yeah. <laughs> Shadow Shaman and Crystal Maiden. That was on. Yeah. That was on FY Shadow Shaman, right? Yes, yes, that is correct. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. It's um, a nice opening. Like you get these two cores that are kind of flexible between the mid lane and Ten off lane. Remaining. No flex potential to the supports. I don't think at least Five like you can maybe remaining. argue for Kunka, but probably not uh, something you want to do. And uh, what supports have been banned out? We have Io out, we have Shadow Demon out, and Chen of course Radiant from Team Zero. Team no one wants to play against that. They ban out the Mirana, which is interesting. It, it, it makes me feel like maybe Maybe some Phoenix or Enchantress. But also you don't want to play Kunka versus Kunka Mirana, right? Like th we've seen what teams can do Ten with Kunka, Shadow Demon, Demon, Mirana or just Mirana, Kunka Radiant with that X marks the spot pick. into Arrow. It's super annoying. They do ban out the Life Stealer this time around, which honestly gave them most issues in that game one. Yep. When they were rocking the Luna. The low which, life stealer was difficult. Ten seconds remaining. Which makes me feel like they might go back for the the Luna answer again, though, because I I do, I do like Luna versus Timber. We have seen it as there's been other lane counters versus the Timber, but Luna is is lower on the list, but definitely still a, a relatively decent one. I don't think you counter it as much in the lane, but it's overall like what you do in the game. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, think it's that a, it's, a, it's a good matchup overall, right? And it's a meta hero, which is also very important. I... I was gonna say I'm just not sure if they're gonna pick the lion here or not. I am intrigued on the tiny double strength, but I also do think these are two of the better strength heroes against the timber. Mm -hmm. Also, can be seven e tiny, right? It doesn't have to be Ponlo tiny. They play, they play it mid. I feel like what team played? Remaining. Oh, never mind. That was JT that played it off lane. Yeah, uh, as, as well. So remaining. they're gonna get it. Uh, most likely will be your four. Um, you get the tiny and it activates some different kind of offlaners too for uh, Team Zero. Like this tiny can rotate quite a lot and then you can get some, I don't know, Enigma or something like that for... I do Azure like Polo more on these ranged catchers than on... Like on, on Shadow Shaman or on Lion. I like Polo more on these heroes than on than on a tiny. It's, just, it's easier to kind of clown. With tiny... Uh, by the way, when I say clown, it's... Definitely a term of endear endearment. I'm not. I'm. Uh, I'm not claiming him. Ten it's just that, like, with him, you can 
jump in and if you don't have this force use or some Five repositioning it's so three. easy to have only one move in a whole team fight and that's it which is sometimes Boxy. enough but yeah i, I think Honlo reminds me a lot of boxy and this is something that i've heard uh let's speak about in particular with like boxy is a player that is very like you just need to let him do his thing he's going to do clowny stuff but you need to have complete trust in him to make plays because we've seen what he can do i mean boxy is a world-class position four and i think ponlo is relatively similar like because how you're saying like you know he's a a bit clowny he makes funny plays but a lot of those times those funny plays do work out they do work out but you have to have that full trust of him and they kind of those just reminds me of boxy in his play style a little bit i think if you want to be of position four you have to be like that if you want to be like a master master tier position four because it's all about uh, making plays where uh, other people don't see a play possible we're just making stuff happen there are position fours that are just run of the mill i know exactly what's supposed to happen in the game how it should be played and i'm going to play it to the maximum and that can work as well but it's always nice to see a little bit of inspiration a little bit of lucidness coming from a position four where they can make stuff happen out of nowhere out of nothing um it makes them just scarier and you've seen players like that in the past and these two are probably uh, one of them like jerax back in the day as well just make stuff happen let's see elder titan and the crystal maiden do i like the et here is it a four or a five et most likely a five it enables a lot of these range cores into the luna uh, let's see what azure goes for mm, they have uh they have the lifestealer band out so that's not an option they still have this, like, we've we've seen Tint uh, win with Alchemist into the Luna, which is something for Lou, uh, that's a possibility. A lot of <clears throat> minus armor from the Elder Titan also helps out, of course. What do you think about some... Hmm. Let's see. Turn to <laughs> okay. Sh should've, I mean, should've that said is... it. Yeah. Go for it. We're, we're... What, what, what... A reflection, right? Like it's buffed up, yeah. and this this hero is played a lot as a four, but it's buffed up. It's good with ET, and it's like a ranged hero with ET in the lane, which is nice. It gives you slow with ET, which is nice, and matches up versus Luna really nicely as well. But gotta be careful though. Like the, he's not really in the meta that much as a as a core as a carry, even though we've seen him once or twice in the qualifier. And he can be blown up super easily. Like you have this tiny, tiny crystal maid and even Luna with a Kanda later on. It's not the easiest game for him. There's not a ton of remaining. control, like aerial control. They just have to be super... I wouldn't mind something Five like a Primal Beast remaining. again for Azuri. You want the pick? I'll give you the pick. You want the pick? Give me the pick. Give me the pick. Go Zeus. Go pick Zeus and, and we go game on, three. On zero? On zero? Yeah. Yeah, go pick Zeus. Yeah. We go game three. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I agree. Just put like the Conqueror it. offlane. Like Conquer Tiny. I mean, I don't think it's going to be too fun of a time, but just pull the wave. Whatever. Like, you won't get that much farm. Zeus will just... He'll carry this game. I like the idea of the Darkseid band. It makes a lot of sense. Like, uh, melee with the Tiny. And then, of course, first the Terror Blade just absolutely destroys him. Uh, I think also Darkseid is quite nice versus Shadow Shaman. Like, the vacuum to cancel Five the chains is very easy. And just like surging on top of him in fight. So I, I completely understand the reasoning behind that. I, I would love the Zeus for zero this game. Mm -hmm. I would love it. Any any sort of uh, magic burst that's ranged is also good for Team Zero. Um, so Zeus is definitely one of those and he's very active. Not any sort. Something that's not really too greedy. Because you want this Luna to actually be having a lot of space, a lot of good farm. So... Zeus, what else is there? I know this hero has lost recently, as we've seen him with Abed playing it in SEA as well, but OD, it looks like a Azure decent game for him. Like into the pick. Timber, into the TB. Panda needed to be banned, though. Like, these two heroes needed to be addressed. No, and the Zure they take Zeus. it. That's so crazy. That's so... Yeah, that... I really wonder if Zero were actually thinking about it, though, because it looked so good for yeah. them. Probably. No, you know, need, you're... like, some... You need a Storm Sp Spirit, I think, maybe. Dude, we are like one brain, like one brain cell. Not one brain, but one brain cell. And it's like, 
a, a, a bit, a zero or a one. I, I like any spirit, really. Like, Storm Spirit sounds really good. Um, a Quop is also an option. Yeah. Just these kind of heroes, you know, just a lot of burst damage with a lot of mobility is what they need. I think that's something without a blink as well from that mid lane. Or if you put Kuka on mid, what do you go on off lane? That's also a, a, an approach. I really do think this is a spirit for 70. That's what they need. I, I just can't see a range hero that they can pick into the Terror Blade. I do not think it's a good... I th You could make an argument for Enigma, but mm -hmm. I feel like AR's lane should be quite fine it's versus it. Ember or Void, like, th th that's what I'm seeing. Ember or Void, like Storm as well, like he's in the pool. I'm just looking at their heroes now as well, and uh, 70s heroes. And he's got that Void and Ember played quite a bit. Top three heroes with the Pango. Pango banned out. Those are the options. Like lower I, down, he's got some Invoker and Lash as well, but I don't think it's as good. I, I do want to say I'm really fine with Conker going mid. I think that's that's good versus Zeus with the, the level 6 timing and supports rotating. I just don't particularly see a better 3 that they can put into the lane. Uh, is Mars Mar there? Mars, 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 I was just about to say. Yeah, Mars is still in the pool. Dude. Like you... Mars Tiny is like a wonky, like... Ooh. So Tiny mid, Kunkao, off lane, or... Yeah, with Enchantress. Okay. I didn't actually Stop. think about that. Okay. Uh, they could run Enchantress uh, into the ET too. Yep. That's that's probably what they're going to do. You you get to this spell. You get to the spell his uh. damage. You also get to take one of the illusions if you want to. Pond of four Enchantress. I'm not really sold on this. I'm not completely sure that it's worth it. Because this Ench can be blown up in the game. They need to play really damn fast. But they're putting Tiny on 3 with Kunkka mid. So swapping those things up. It's not bad, by the way. Like, a lot of burst damage into, into ET and TB. Like, that lane can be really bad for TB with all the burst that Tiny brings. Like, some but, rotations from ZZQ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you... Because I, I completely agree, but would you prefer to go mid, though? Because he would have got solo levels? Yeah. Definitely, you'd get more levels, but like this, you can pressure him throughout the lane. Okay. Okay. All right, let's see. Uh, they're, they're cooking. They're cooking. I think this Zeus, like, steal from Azure, I, I, I really, I really, yep. really feel like this this was the pick for Zero. So the fact that you steal it on AR, it is, like, he is vulnerable this game, but let, let us see. Uh, the, the big thing for me is at least Enchantress enables the rotations to mid lanes a lot more. It's very, very easy to gank mid lane with uh, an enchanter creep and him rotating. So that is at least one uh, bonus benefit of it. And also, like we said, you're the enchant for the ET in, in the lane as well to be able to purge the astral. So I can definitely see what they're trying to cook up. <clears throat> I had nothing cooked, by the way. I, I took a bite out of the apple and I didn't mute my mic. Feels bad. You heard that, right? <laughs> I didn't actually. Didn't nice. I actually muted myself. Good, good. I have a button on this blue yeti. I always press it before. Oh, don't worry, brother. I, I hear, I hear the click every time. You hear it? I, yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind. Then I'll, then I'll stop doing that. As, no, no, so. you should. No, what, what, it's, what are you gonna do? Or what are you saying, mate? Oh, Erica said something first. Okay. Translate, translate. Come on, fast, fast. You fast. do it. Okay, wait. Opening. Google Translate. I hope Ori is a not a lightning hands enjoyer. That is what is I hope. I feel like he's uh he strikes me as a, a normal Zeus guy. It won't Damn. translate because it's looking at everything else but not that. Why is it translating well played into well played? Come on. <laughs> I know you could speak English, brother. So I'm just trying to help you out. F Y. Ooh, dude, I'm whirling death onto YSR. 
Are they? Okay. They're actually going to give up first blood. They went too far for the kill to the Luna. CCQ just Ooh. survived stick charges. Now Pomlo's almost going to die. Is someone going to die? No first blood allowed. Oh. CCQ maybe. Can, can they catch CCQ? Like he's going to switch. Oh, is he? Oh, 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 he needs oh. to decide. Yeah. Okay. So they did get the kill. It's just that no one exactly got it. it uh, a bit of bounty in between all of them. What? The what? Hell? We we got we we got the translation from our observer translator. Water carrier. Everything script. We're carrier. waiting for <laughs> Water Boy. Wait, we're waiting for you to be full moon? That's it. I mean what the hell is that? Maybe something with moon on. Okay. Who's half moon in this game? Yan Ming? Right, Tian Ming almost goes down to the Elder Titan. Sorry, Tian Ming almost goes down to the Elder <laughs> The Elder Titan, Tian Ming. He almost killed himself, dude. Didn't you see? Started smacking yeah. himself. I was listening to the translation, but yeah. Okay, don't smack yourself, sir. Sounds good. There's something about asking for a table, and then uh, the response was something about a full moon. Yeah. Some interesting stuff. Some interesting stuff, yeah. Exactly. What's not interesting is the Elder Titan's lane. Like, uh, you go Astral Spirits, you get all the damage, and then Enchantress the just takes it away. It feels bad. And it feels you know very what? sad lane. Mm -hmm. Did I'm actually checking now. Did Erica play with Ori? Yeah, they did did. Was okay. Ori in the Vichy Gaming? If, if they were in the Vichy Gaming squad yeah, yeah, they together, were. I don't yeah, think yeah. they were. Yeah. Yeah. That's it then. Dude, that, that Vichy check. squad, like the Erica that played in that Vichy squad, uh, it was, was crazy. much worse. Uh, for me, it was much worse than this Erica. I feel like he improved over time. Because he, um, <clears throat> Ori. Oh, the only games that I remember them winning was when. Not the only, of course, Erica did do a lot in, in a lot of games and they had a lot of winnings. Polo top lane. They're trying to go on him. Nice body blocks to the harp. In any case, Ori in that lineup really had so much work from the mid lane. He carried so many games. Ori's definitely been one of my more enjoyable mid laners to keep attention on. Very, very fascinating person to be able to watch over in China. I'm so glad he's back as well. Is anyone actually at the moment on retirement that left? Uh, I guess Paparazzi is the only one. Where's Fate playing? True, true. I don't. He hasn't retired though, but he's just not on a team. He did retire once though already. He 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 has for me the most famous retirement. Lasted about a week, maybe <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> and then he had that sin on Vici, and then yeah. Yeah. Is that a contract thing, by the way? Maybe some workaround. If you retire, you can leave the team and then you find a new one. <laughs> I wonder. I'm... Hopefully not, but I mean, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know the inner workings. I'm a bit surprised the Tiny's not getting as many last hits top lane. Only 14 at the moment for Beyond. Maybe this is the ET pressure. I mean, Terra Blade's definitely one of the better laning carries as well when meta's active. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't. They did have a couple of nice uh, astral uh, spirit uh, pressures on the tiny. Now they're going on blue. The reflection he should be able to get away, right? Yeah, things that way. Um, one of the problems that you are facing as Ench this lane is how many times do you use bottom lane FY? Yeah, it looks Scott, like it's going to be our first blood. He's got Wand, he's got Lotus. Yeah, maybe not. It's a big wand. Another round of the frostbite's gonna be up in a couple seconds. And it's easy Q. We'll be able to secure with a kill now. Bark. Uh, I don't know. He's got some mana for a couple of spells. Bark. Bark. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Yeah, I felt like maybe he could uh, join him a little bit earlier and then save the Shadow Shaman. That's why I was reluctant to call the kill instantly, but he doesn't. And he had too many creeps under the tower, it's understandable. So, Shadow Shaman does die, but he refills the bottle mid. Still is a useful death, let's put it that way for them. When it comes to the Tiny, by the way, that you asked before, I feel like Enchantress is using... Oh, might be dead Pongo here. Uh, never on, survives. Didn't have Enchant that time. He's using every Enchant to disenchant the Astral Spirit, so he's not really getting oh. a lot of creeps. How about Luna? Whoa. She gonna live? <laughs> oh, oh Zusult. <laughs> that guy's <laughs> yelling for it. Dude, or you get six, hurry up! That was... Especially, he's got infused raindrop as well, magic wand, but of course not enough to heal through Zusult. Doesn't really help at all. Radiance courier has been killed. This is a bit scary on top lane, that they are not able to pressure uh, the TB at all, because you picked Enchantress mainly because of that. Is Never need the auto titan. But maybe can they go on Luna? But probably not, right? Like she's got boots now as well. The lane is far out. That's that's maybe an issue. I really like this die observer ward as well, right next to the the T1 Tower mid lane. This was, I think, another big reason why you're picking the Enchantress to gank mid lane, but. That's in a great position, scouting Ponlo out. A really good placement. I think that was Ori that actually placed his ward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, he's playing into Kunkai. As long as he doesn't get text, yeah, he probably doesn't die. Like, e even Enchantress rotations on Azus used to be, like, cookie cutter super easy. It's no longer, like, as he has this jump, like, you get him close with the creep, he just jumps away. Uh, can Come they me? get the ET? Yeah. Oh, this is really deep. And FI is actually starting to TP in as well. If they got meta, they do, so there's definitely got to be a turn potential. Beyond's able to sidestep the stomp, but Tianming's going to be able to stay alive. And now Beyond is in no man's land for the tiny. I mean, let's see if he's going to be able to find an angle to TP out. Could maybe go for the kill onto Tianming. He's got the combo back up if he sees the ET, but Tianming will utilize the self. Oh, okay. Yeah, FI's fine as well. I mean, this is a huge double kill. I was so happy getting involved, a bunch of experience for the supports as well. Yeah, continues farming his around the Inspiration Aura as well. Mighty Mines. Uh, doesn't lose oh, Ori? A, a lot with that. Well, the Torrent. Oh, well done, Sebony. Rex. This guy is balling. Sebony, so far, I am incredibly impressed. This Both guy lane? is. Alright, never mind. Bottom lane, what's going on? Nothing, he healed up. I was thinking he might go on Luna because of that. Well, he still is going. Okay, he's going on. <laughs> Bach. Gotta be careful. Bach. Bach. Do it, Bach. Yeah, Bach. he's got him. I was surprised there YSR went back in. Like, maybe if he just ran back to the tower after the first initial go by the timber, he could have lived, but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he, uh... Did you play that or was that script? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Of production just playing back in our ears. You guys probably don't hear it. 70. What's Stunned. going on right now? <laughs> he gets the D-word, okay. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I was watching the Timber Taunt and I thought it was his new, like, Timber Taunt sound or something that bottom. I am so confused. It, it would be good. Because it's not copyrighted, like, you can use any of this music. Classical. Copyrighted by the Bach family. <clears throat> FY down bot. Not there yet when it comes to level 6, so no Serpent Wards to take the tower, but they can pressure this still. Uh, Skunka have a TP, let's see. He doesn't, so if they dive now, it would be a really good uh, opportunity. But he's not doing it. Timber. <laughs> what kind of a friend are you? Friend? Red? Okay. Looks like FI's fine. What? 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 ZZQ? I gave a Conquest TPing in. Oh, what's what's coming on bottom? 
Well, well, look, Kunk, uh, he actually didn't have a TP for 15-20 seconds. If Timber, though, they could have gotten a kill, but he waited too long. And now, 70. All right, Shackles 70. Should be able to get the point off, but it looks like that the majority of the damage is going to be dealt too fast. And a bark as well is going to be able to hunt down ZZQ. They even want more, but I think it's a bit ambitious getting Ponlo. Yeah, he probably doesn't die here. I feel underwhelmed when I see the two supports on Team Zero. Like when I see this Crystal Maiden and Enchantress, I just don't feel that it's going to contribute as much as a Shadow Shaman plus Elder Titan. But if this Enchantress gets a lot of farm, of course, if you find some crazy late game potential, you can find it with her. Tiny, beyond. He also feels like a support though, so it's like three supports on their side. Yes, sir, it is indeed. I wonder who that can kind of scale is the Enchantress. How do we feel about Pondo's item build this game on the plus four Enchantress? Do you want him to go for kind of the right click heavy build? Yep. I, I think it would be cool because you have this initiator on offlane. It would be nice to um, get some, something more out of the edge when it comes to the right clicks. But at the same time, you are playing into. Uh, Zeus Timber, like these heroes just don't care about uh, Enchantress if they get on top of you. Um, it can burst you down. I'd still go for right clicks just because how much you can do. He's going Mage Slayer, I think this is really nice. Such a good Mage Slayer game as well. Might be that though. Yes, he is indeed. Oh, Hori is a Mantra enjoyer. Disappointed. I thought he's one of the good ones to be honest. Apparently no one is. Lightning I'm hands, baby. I'm the only one. Why don't you like lightning hands? Come on. It's just, it's just flashy. Seven E <laughs> moves in, torrents the rune, X marks himself, steals it away from Timber and Zeus. Like the lightning hands do deal, deal a lot of damage. I know. I, I usually would like to see Zeus just dish out a ton of magic damage, and that's it as well. Even um, even the Aghanims isn't really bought on him as much as it could be, I think, but... Overall, Lightning Hands with Parasma are just such a hard thing not to get. It just does so much. FI is getting scouted out currently on his warding expedition. They are starting to move on over with the haste from 7e. They want to TP down though, Azuri. And the Timber's going to be able to get there in time. Oh, he's actually going to try and jump 7e. Meanwhile, ZZQ's actually stuck inside the wards. It's a bit of a messy kill with the damage from the freezing field, but... Well, this is how able to come into play, so... Bark nicely done. He's able to mm -hmm. get nearby. Tian Ming as well, wanting to get involved. Or he was far enough this time around, so he wasn't there with the phylactery to blow up the Kunkka. Seventy. Very happy that he can finally kill without being, uh, or at least assist without being uh, killed off. Oh no! Uh -oh. There's no mana on Zeus. Got a wand He's though. Yeah, if he wants to use it, Mango as well getting put in the inventory. Ready now responding though. A lot of heroes here, even YSR as well on the Luna. A lot of heroes. <laughs> Yeah, he's doing the same build he did last game. He played the Luna, by the way, with the D-Lance. And he's way more active than most Lunas that I'm watching right now. That I've played with. Like he, which is also completely fine. They don't have a lot of tower pressure. They have a blink on Tiny. So beyond, that's the hero to look out for. Like this Tiny, what can he do? Gonna pop inside the river. FY's got his own blink reveal as well. With Zeus and Timber together, they should be able to blow up the Conquer before the Blade Mail really proves to be too much of a threat. And now Beyond as well is getting run down, and this Blink is going to have no value. I mean, you compare Blink reveals from one team to compare to the other. Guy, without a doubt, a much happier 4,000 net worth lead. They are rolling in game three. Uh, realistically, which hero would you rather have on offlane? Timber or Tiny? Uh, probably Timber, right? There's a reason why this guy speaks more. Like, he is freer to oh. do whatever he wants to, though this stack... Losing this stack is actually big, like, you have a Luna. 
And this is what I sometimes mean, right? Like, you go for this D-Lance and you're joining fights on YSR. Instead, he could have been farming this stack, right? Instead of doing nothing, wasting your time, losing gold on the mid lane. Yeah. You could have had that farm and now it's... It's just way too big of a risk. Beyond? Beyond. Oh my god, look at FY as well, jumping up to the high ground and what a position for him to be in. Mark, he's going to be able to cut his way out of the trees as well to assist him. Now Pondler's going to rip it all of Radiant are coming. Paraplane's in a bit of an awkward position. If they got the first damage to blow him up before the sun, then they do. All right. Finally, nice finally thing. we get some signs of life here from Team Zero in this game three. Something had to happen. Like, they were losing way too much. This started looking like a stomp, but Polno managed to, managed to get FY. Even that kill on Beyond, by the way, the reason why it happened is the Shadow Shaman wards were planted for the tower, and one of them clipped Beyond, so he couldn't blink. It was extremely unfortunate for Tiny. They're still fighting, though. And yeah, I mean, they're gonna get multiple kills, not just one, but a second as well. Now, potentially, first split is gonna be huge. It'll split the two. DZQ, just the CM by the looks of it. Unfortunately, not the... Wait, hey, you got the Echo Salt? Okay, doesn't matter. Yeah, no follow-up. Tiny is all the way mid, so he can't really help the Radiant team. You know, and Kunka plus Luna. Couldn't catch him with just level 2 Echo Stomp. Radiant are scanning. A lot of these blinks is really proving to be super effective on Azure. Shadow Shaman getting his, like FY, just being on point as always. Like last game we saw how much he could do with uh, the Shadow Shaman when he played it. This time around, same build. A blink into Midas. Wants to have a lot of experience and a lot of gold. Yep. Do you, like so far with the status of this game, do you... Are you currently... How do you feel about their ways to address the Timber Sword at the moment from Team Zero? Because it very much does feel like this Luna is a key wave for them, but it seems like this is multiple games in a row where Ed has not done enough to deal with the first pick Timber. I think they have the damage to deal with him. Like, they can kill him. They don't need anything big like they had in that uh, game one, like a Doom. Uh, they don't need that kind of a hero. They have the damage to kill the Timber. It's just that... By the time you kill him, how many of your heroes are falling? And if you initiate on him properly with a lot of control. Because uh, these two supports are actually, even though I, I said I feel underwhelm underwhelmed by them in general, they are good against the Timber. Like you have ancient a Crystal Maiden, it's a lot of damage, magical damage against the Timber. You have Impetus as well to work with. Like, it doesn't care about his armor, it's pure, so it's also very nice, but Polno! If you get gone on... That's a yeah. Bomb. I'm like, these deaths are pretty important though. Because this is a hero who will have value late game, especially with going for this build. So... Uh, and usually you're okay, like, with supports dying, especially if they're tanking smokes, but... Just stopping his farm... Uh, I mean, he, he's, he's got no net worth this game, all things considering, like... ZZQ almost has more net worth than the, an Enchantress, which uh, is probably something that shouldn't be the case. Uh, but uh, that's all right and true. Look at bottom, though. You see this? Like, it's one of the heroes that... Uh, he's not really microing this troll, never mind. I was gonna say, it, look, he had an opportunity to continue farming there. It's, it's one of the heroes that continues farming even after that death. Like, all you need is one creep, because that creep gets... How much 40 damage level 3 is 60, I believe, 50 level 4. And you can basically clear your waves. So even if you're dying, you should be finding them. Or is in a great position to be able to spell cast in the team fight. How are they going to be able to deal with the Zeus, who's just freely spamming spells from the low ground? As Bark as well goes uncontested. Double kill for them. YSR gets blown up. The Thunder God scouts up Polo. Polo, Ponlo. He's going to be able to escape. They will get the D ward, though, I suppose. It is something. Nice two kills. The best kill that they can get in the game right now. This Luna is, once again, you know, not in front, not feeling that great. Like, game one when they played her, it was pretty much the same scenario. You're constantly waiting for this Luna to be up front, to be actually leading the network charts. And 
Okay, this ain't it. Let's see, they're moving down mid. They will have the Sagnins on Kunka soon. They'll have an Echo on Tiny. So these are the items that we're waiting for. Bot lane, apply. We can kill him, yeah. Clark is coming. Link up in a couple seconds as well for Timber to chase. Or he has haste. This bounce is a cute. Alright, they'll get the Chris Maiden at least by the looks of it. The glimmer is nice and it is useful, but the active itself, like the invis, will not help you against Zeus. He's got uh, Manta, I believe, completed. So now you have Zeus with Manta completed faster or at the same time as Luna. Faster than Luna. Like, usually you want to see her in front at least a tiny bit. They're smoked up. Uh, they're out. They're out, but I don't know if they're going to go for the kill into YSR. Let's see if they oh, go kill wards. No wards yet. No, they do. Got to back up now. And yeah, he's gone. I, uh, <laughs> Tiny was there. Like, Beyond was actually around. And that's why they were hiding together. I feel like it was his job there to maybe jump in and break that and go on the Luna. But most likely what happens is he dies as well. So, mm. reluctant to... Mm, not, what? Not, I, I haven't seen... Oh, okay. I was going to say, I haven't seen Kyra after Manta on the Zeus's, but he's going to change back to Witchblade. Yeah. He had Delini? to open towards the Delini's uh, guide <laughs> to see what the next one is. Don't see what they're going to be able to do. 10,000 deficit. And we did see though Team Zero again, like a lot of games they've been playing from behind. Got set the now on 70. Yep. They are smoking up, let's see. Still no Manta on Luna. They're moving too much with him. That's that's like, I feel he's falling behind. Even Kunka has more farm, but they have to. This Roshan is falling. Oh, my the coming so, Oh the it's positioning. Are you serious? <laughs> oh my god. And they're gonna at least, smoke. Uh, at least you did stop Rush, right? Like, they have smoke on both sides. Uh, Radiant has the outpost advantage, but I don't think these buybacks are up for them. Smoking up ZZQ to scout it. Okay, they know Rush is not happening at the moment, at least. So they can fall back. Thunder Gods for vision. And Bark to jump. Seven, he's already Seven. down to a quarter. Gets the boat combo off and he's not even ditched just yet along with the torrent song. Oh, FI with the jump on the back line, but FI might just get blown up. So Shaman's gone, but it doesn't seem like it matters though. These fights look impossible for Team Zero. If you're Team Zero, Team Azure right now, you open up your teammate uh, list and you tip the Elder's item. He had Echo Stomp on like three, four heroes, three heroes, and he stomped all of them, and he also used Earth Splitter on all of them. And now you get obviously a free Roshan after it as well. If you are Radiant, if you were Team Zero, at least you didn't lose any of the cores. It's just the two, two scores that died, and you can uh, continue playing off of it. You just need this Manta on Luna. You're playing into TB. Even, even because of him, you need it. Like that reflection hurts you. <laughs> if nothing else, the reflection is a problem. Now they have it. And but now the farm will ramp up as well, right? But it's a big question of is it too late? I don't think it's too late. I feel that there's still a lot of scaling from Team Zero. This is something that they've done in previous games as well, in which they have multiple heroes that scale them well in the game. Tiny is one of those. The problem is he didn't have any of a good lane. Like, he feels like a glorified support at the moment. But once he gets a bit of art, he can hurt. He gets the shard, it's a good one. Radiant's middle tower mm -hmm. is under attack. A lot of mana now, though. Like, you can't freely use it like you did before. It was... I think you actually talked about this. Yeah. As well. Oh, it's dumb. It was, it was dumb. 
150 might be an overkill, but 50 was was pretty. Tough. You reckon? Yeah, I don't I'd, know, dude. I'd this is. I'd go 100. You want hit creep waves with it? You couldn't do that before. I think. Yeah, you don't think this is fine? Too much. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. All right. The hero I see still doesn't le level. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you don't even level, like, back in the day and even right now I see some players not even leveling level Radiant's 2 rules. Too much mana. The, you have a lot of um, nice things from the arcane aura, of course. You're giving a lot of mana region, but you just can't spam. Dyer's courier has been killed. It's something. Look at the courier from Shaman. Oh, this soul. I saw. The cat oh my god. Was that a long TP? Maybe, I think yeah, Pongo TP to the tower. It was, yes, get that. Get it, ZZQ. Nice, nice. I think you're really enjoying it. He's getting a course next. It's not bad for him. Plus, th this is how uh, he plays. Right? Good man, though. Yeah, he's alright. He doesn't have a TP Ooh. though, I don't know how alright he is. Oh, did they see that as well? ET TP top? I think they did. He's TPing. Yeah, he knows. TPing. Right? Does he? Is he gonna wait? Uh, they they aren't completely sure if she ran south or north. They sh Not one. They should Dyer's kinda get the idea, but maybe she's too fast with Mask of Madness or something like that. You see, he's still scouting. He's still thinking she's here. Oh, they're gonna um, see. Oh my god, they're gonna see. Something else is happening on the map. Who they got? They got CZQ. I don't care. Who cares about that? They, they got low. Uh, did they get YSR? Hang on, they got low. What's going on? Low? Oh my god, he just got the Sunder off. Okay, so CZQ goes down on the opposite side of the map. Honlo is really dishing low? damage, man. All right. Back to YSR. All right, they're still chasing. Meanwhile, that's just space. Is it space? I don't know. They need to kill on the terror blade. They haven't got it just yet. YSR will finally die. You've got the uh, Aegis. You've got the Aegis on terror blade. You got the Luna, but you lost the Luna. That is, if your team zero, but you did get the Aegis, which is something. Like it's not uh, the worst. It's still a bad trade for you, of course it is, but could have been worse. Luna could have just died without anything. Polo. Ah, he's dead. He's next. Yeah. Oh no. I'm top lane. Ooh. Up high ground they go. They got Serpent Wards. We've got Meta, Serpent Wards. Uh, Luna is dead for 10. <laughs> nice little clone glimmer action. How's the BKB on Luna looking? Not really that close. Uh, that's also an issue. Yeah. Radiant's top barracks are under attack. They should be able to get... Oh, uh, they might Glyph it. Let's see. Let's see what they're wanting to do. Almost back up in 10 seconds. Glyph will be there. Meta quarter duration left. This could He's get still... messy with the toss back when Meta's about to expire. They're doing a good job with the Astral to try and hunt this Tiny down to stop the blink. They're also grouping up the Illusion on low. And he won't even go. He has BKB. Right, like the TB has a BKB, I think Zeus bought it as well, yeah. They have two BKBs on, the two, on these two cores, so if you're initiating... I'm not sure, like if you initiate with some stun-toss combo and you don't blow them up instantly, you're probably losing that fight. Good for them to be uh, a bit more disciplined. How's Luna looking on the BKB? Still not close. Die, they actually spank up themselves as well, looking to try and protect the double damage room. They will get it and Radiant. They slip on past to the right. Mm -hmm. And now they are away from YSR. He's going to run underneath this ward soon, but it's too deep. I think it's too deep. He's moving back because they used two scans and uh, nothing connected. They used it in the triangle, they used it in the Radiant jungle. They smoked up to maybe get a pick off with the Stiny, but nothing worked. And now 70 is actually the one. Hello, FY. <laughs> he ran into three oh of them. Oh my god. 
he literally just ran into all three of them. ZZQ, let's get the wave. Just trying to delay at this point. Your Kunkai is 40 off. Where is the meta? Meta in 5 seconds. Oh, this is rough. So sad for Team Zero, because they just played top without Luna. Now they're playing mid without uh, the Kunkai. He does have buyback, but... Middle tower. Yeah, I think they're gonna lose this by the time. Yeah, they're gonna lose this by the time Kunkai is back up. Oh wow, they pop meta. They want more? They could. I. It is a bit greedy, but with the meta, with the BKB, why not? You probably don't want it, right? Like you don't have um, serpent wards. You don't have to be this greedy. You can wait. I'm just thinking, they're 20k ahead, and they know it, they feel it, but still, yeah. it's high ground push. The one way you lose this game is if you overcommit there. Oh, beyond. Beyond the end. An aggressive jump onto the timber so if they truly got the damage to deal with Bar. Maybe with the damage from Pomlo, but it's not gonna matter. The Earth Spitter comes flying again. Echo stop as well oh. once again, and they just all Did got you? to call it. Just call it. Yes. Mercy, get us out of this. Go next game. Yeah, just obliterated them in this third one. Yeah, this this last fight was just sad. You still, I believe, didn't have a BKB on Luna. Tiny jumps in. He uses the toss back to... Uh, I, I, I don't think he was aiming for Timber, by the way. Like, you go in, you're probably hoping for either some Zeus pick-off or some Terrorblade pick-off. He jumps in, he catches uh, the Timber, and then it's like... This is the one guy you don't want in front of everyone else. Echo Stomp is there, Earth Splitter is there. Rough game. I, I think it also comes down to the draft a bit, but also to lane execution. I'm, I'm fairly sure they expected more from the Tiny in the lane, which didn't really happen. Like Tiny was an over-glorified support. Luna joined too many fights, couldn't really scale against everyone else on uh, the enemy team. Pongo did all right. Like I, I questioned the supports. I still kinda do, but he did alright. He he brought a lot of damage to, to some of these fights versus uh, Terrorblade. It's just that it wasn't good enough. They could never uh, find enough farm on all of them. And they were always picked off. Like that that's the biggest issue. Like we we never really saw Team Zero play a decent team fight. They were there was no team fights in this game. It was just pick off into push and that's it. Just yeah. one team fight around the top lane, right? Like when uh, they got three heroes of Azure. Yeah, I think heading into next draft, I want to see again the Pango band out from Azuri. This really feels like this is a, a staple hero for 7e and how they just need him on like some playmaking hero. I don't care what you do, Timber has to go. I I, I don't want to see Bach play it again. You're, this is two games now where you've tried to address it with the Luna or address it in Luna and something else. Uh, you, you, you haven't done a good enough job. Just, just accept that you're not going to. Accept you're not going to... Because in a best of five, sure, you can make the argument like, let's look for it in game one. If we beat it, it frees up our upcoming drafts. They haven't done that. They've lost twice down to the Timber. And really, they, they have their responses haven't been close. Like, I, YSR has is, is really struggled on the Luna. Yeah, I think there are better carries on him uh, than the Luna. And I also don't want to see the Enchantress being last picked. I, I, I mean, you can last pick her if you really need a position four or a five. But in this game... Realistically, they could have adjusted their draft in a different way. Instead, they put the Tiny on offlane and this Sench pick, like... Even though he played alright, it doesn't really help. Yeah. You, you, we can see the the angle they were going for with the Enchantress, though. Like, on paper, we could see what they were going for, but this is not like that last pick oomph that you are really expecting when, we, when you have that ultra last. So... Um, I also think just very quickly, the, the Zeus steal as well, if this was even something they were thinking about for Team Zero, but I mean, Ori, you know, he, had a, he had a great game on it. You know, had a great game. There was so much damage early on was a big reason why just they were blowing people up with him along with the Timber Saw. So AR, one game away now of qualifying to Dream League. Let's see if they're going to be able to do it in 3-1 fashion and how the boys on Team Zero can respond in this game loss. We're going to send to a break. When we come back, we're at Game 4 around the corner.
starts with this A person that you miss Mine draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself Right, Lizard, I'm going to pose to you the ultimate question as we wait for our fourth draft to start. If you are in the Team Zero camp, what is what is the pre-game? <laughs> what is the the pre-game four pork that you need? Round them all up. Yeah. All right. Damn. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so you 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 what the hell is this? you get them physical with them. That's this is, yeah, this is really how to do course. it. I I all take. Right. Take them all out of the room, make them walk around the house, around the team house, you know, just... And But I make them walk so they meet each other as they pa walk past. And they have to look at each other in the eyes as they go past. Everything will be sorted. You know who lifts the eyes first, who looks at you for, sternly, who looks at you with like, I'm sorry, I failed you, daddy. You know, you, you know, these, play you know these players, you know who's, the, who's at fault. Everything is resolved outside of the house inside of the gaming room that's the holy temple you go back in you're hyped you just took a walk your dopamine levels are up right like your body is not used to this amount of exercise you're a gamer you just walked you're a bit tired you give them some coffee you make them play the next game but realistically you don't uh, let the timber saw go through and you probably think about that luna pick that those are the two things that i would force them to do at least okay all right, so uh, we've, we've moved away from the slapping. We've gone to exercise and walking around and looking each other in the eyes and hopefully apologizing with uh, without words. And just uh, yeah, this is it's a very, very interesting way. I would uh, really hope you don't coach any of my teams. Sounds like not a good way for me to get hyped up for a game four grand final. Oh, you'd love it. Draw. You'd love it. Would I? Would I? You reckon? Yeah, you would. Let's yeah. go into the draft. Yeah. Come on. Let's go on to the draft. Enough of this. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see what we got. So Pango again will be banned out from Missouri. And we do get the timber though. So I will like is kind of interesting. You know, they had first pick on, on Zero. So if they really wanted to pick the timber, they could have. Obviously, they feel like this is not something in their wheelhouse. Tiny band out, which is a little bit interesting. And we are gonna see the conquer from Team Zero. Damn, it's snowing outside here in Bosnia, by the way. Really? Yeah, it's weird because it's kind of like we didn't get any snow during the 
uh, during the remaining. winter, like very low mountain, now it's snowing. In any case, yeah, like as you Five said, Kunka, they, they really. pick it up. Um, look, we might, this might be a r rare occasion, the snow outside, but this Kunka is definitely not for Team Zero. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not sure why they are adamant about picking it. The hero is amazing. They play it really damn well. They can flex it on offlane and on mid. But I feel that they play so well into the Kunka as well. Like, they actually play well into the hero. They they won the games that I watched so nicely. And Slardar did go through. Like, Azure yeah. was like, okay, we're two games up. We have uh, one game to win. Mm. Like, we could let this Slardar go through. And they still don't pick it up on Team Zero. I, th I think it got let through last game as well. They banned it second phase, if I remember Dyer correctly. Team Wait, no, there was a game. Never mind. Last game it was banned first phase. Let me check... Maybe second uh, game. Game I two. Think... Yeah, second second game was banned second phase. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I believe they are the ones that... Never mind. They picked Lifestealer anyway. Dyer but Slardar needs back. to go. And it didn't go through. Uh, Team Zero with this ban of Lifestealer makes me think that they don't even want the Slardar. They're probably not thinking about it. They do play it on the mid lane sometimes. So you could still argue for some Kunkka off lane with Slardar mid. That's also possible for them. Azure I just Blaze like the way they play around ban. the hero. I like when they have this mindless brawler coming from the mid lane that's just constantly making stuff happen. Same goes for 7e is Pango. But unfortunately for them, it's banned out. Uh, how do you feel about the Shaman though? Because this is Azure actually upping the priority on this hero, which is something that you know, we, we've seen. I think the first time they picked it was in their previous Five series first zero, remaining. and I think a reason was because the lion wasn't actually available for FY, so they wanted that style of hero. They drafted it, then we go into this series, right? We've seen the Shadow Shaman priority's been upped, and now game four, it's like, hang on a second, like they're they're now really feeling the strength of the, this hero. Do you, what what do you feel like the reasoning is behind it? Do you also agree after now seeing some recent Shadow Shaman games that you know? there's maybe value to a first phase pick well, you really can't pick. argue with the shadow shaman picks for them right like it's working out so well for the boys like they're Dying owning with pick. it like they're doing uh, all the control comes from him in these early game rotations i like his blink midas bkb build as well he's taking towers which is uh something the teams are lacking with from their supports like objective taking he does that Overall, I feel like some heroes just get forgotten, you know, they just get forgotten for one reason or another. Like in the last patch, Lion was Five always the better Shadow remaining. Shaman because of the Mana Drain um, shard. But now that has been nerfed, so maybe Shadow Shaman has a spot in the game once again. And not only Shadow Shaman, now you have the Lesh as well to play with. Dire team pick. A lot of uh, objective taking capabilities. Nothing changing really. We get the Pondo Lion up next with the Kunka. Rays, Very similar drafts. But this is kinda different, right? Like the clockwork. You you get this hero that's actually really good into the Shadow Shaman. He hates playing versus all of these disables from the clockwork, like the hookshot is good. And getting that battery assault uh, versus the shackle shot the remaining. shackles, not the shackle shot, sorry, is also nice. Five um, seconds remaining. You probably won't be doing anything to a lash though once you hook into him. Unless you're some super bulky clockwork with two blade mail, with a blade mill and two bracers, you're probably just trying to get away from Lesh. Is is nice with Kunka as well, I have to say, by the way. Like the cogs and the Kunka Torrent Azure Storm. Rays, so much uh, dispositioning in the fight. Instant Sven. Best end of the grand finals as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Dire team pick. Let's see Sven and Mirana. Do they have any big setup for Mirana? Just the shackles at the moment? But it's a hero that doesn't care too much about clock. Dire team like back. a support that can uh, easily get away from him. And the Coral. Uh, now you tell me you didn't like it in the lower bracket finals, right? No. Azure Rays turn to back. No, I'm... I, I really, 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 I don't know. I don't want to say, I don't want to critique it too much because 70 plays it very well. Mm -hmm. But I, I even, I think in the victory they had, it was quite lackluster. I'm trying to remember if they, I'll check now if they played in two games. 
They played the two games, yeah. Yeah, they played the two games. They lost one in 25 minutes. They won the other in 44. And I don't mm -hmm. think he was a big reason why they won that game, even though he was seven and three. I just, I don't know. Teams are first phase banning at versus Team Zero. Like, uh, there's obviously some read. I know 70, again, you know, he's one of the few players that still does play it. But I just, I, every time I see this hero, it just feels very lackluster. Yeah, it Dirty is also back. putting your Kunkka on the offlane. So you know that you're playing against Kunkka offlane, which isn't that bad for the Kunkka. Like, Kunkka into Sven feels really damn good. Like, Kunkka Lion, um, even though they picked the Sven into it, you can just rotate the Kunkka offlane, so it will be beyond Kunkka. Uh, you have a lot of stuns that go Ten through seconds, BKBs remaining. as well with a hookshot. Not a lot of them, but you have Impale, you have... Uh, um, Five hex, you have remaining. hookshot, battery assault. There's enough control, I would, I, I, I can say, for this uh, Kotal mid. There's eno enough chaos in front of him for this to work. Um, once Sven gets eggs, it becomes a bit wonky. If he jumps on top of you, you can die with that one single Echo Saber crit. Uh, but up to that Dying point, uh, if you're rotating across the map, if you get fast boots of travels, Kunka can set up for you. You can do a lot of damage. Do you like the Weaver? I, I mean, it, it is, if I'm thinking of Erika, I am thinking, see, why is that is, I am thinking of uh, Weaver, so it, it's definitely one of his he better heroes. Remaining. They have Shadow Shaman, they have Leshrac, though, Five seconds even remaining. Sven with the stun it, uh, later on. They have a lot of control. They ban out the Mars, which is really nice. I want to see Legion back in the game or Axe. Like, it feels like yeah. such a nice Axe game. Like, just jump that Weaver one call and he's gone. There's no saving that boy. Now, the hero is kind of dead, but like, this is a really good game for him. Yeah, I just want some blink here. I, I, I the Mars Ben I really liked, and I think the Weaver also prevented the Brewmaster, which can have some issues versus Clockwork, but but like, he's probably one of the other decent offlaners that was available so I, I just want to blink here for for Bach do they do they go back to their um, Beastmaster like that's also an option nice auras yep. for the Sven just nice so uh, uh, tower taking as well I I'd on if if I could pick all the heroes I'd go axe but I they go with the Titans yeah. okay this, this actually works just as well it's also pretty damn good I the really Titan like that tour. pick Mm -hmm. you, your team fight was decent, but I feel like the tide now really elevates the team fight higher than Team Zero. So mm -hmm. I, there's nothing the Weaver does to the tide in the lane, right? Uh, is is it not a free tide lane? Um, Weaver plus Clockwork. It's it's a good tide lane. There isn't a lot you can do. You can dish out some damage. It depends on how they trade, of course. Um, I. I think that there is some kill potential if uh, Pondo rotates, but overall, it's a nice tight hunter. Why I like the tight hunter? It's not only about the lane; it's uh, about the shard. Like I like the shard into Weaver quite a lot. Sure. Like it's very similar to anything that has catch, and Weaver hates playing against it, so that's pretty solid. Not only versus Weaver versus Kotal as well; it's solid. Where do you, where do you tilt? Uh, AR, I, I, I just, uh, I don't like Coddle. <laughs> mm. I, don't I don't like mind, Coddle. I, I actually, I, I, I like Coddle into Lash. I have to say, like, the match camp and the burst from distance is pretty solid. Like, the lane itself isn't bad for you as well. I like him in that aspect. So you're AR fanboy, I see. You, you're you not uh, game, game 5 fanboy, you're uh, <laughs> AR. 3-1, that's what you want. I see, I see well, you, traitor. It's not what I want, it's not what I want. What I want doesn't matter. It's what I think is gonna happen. Oh no. Uh, let's see. Fuck, did, did you meet all my friend? Put the cork in it, that's enough. <laughs> oh, he hasn't muted at all. Oh, maybe he got nice... told to... Maybe he got told what he said. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Beyond. Beyond. Uh-oh, this 5 hero is nice stun pond, though. Is this still looking scary? What's going on? Tyrant's gonna connect on the Sven. 
double nope. blood grenade. Wow. Oh, what? What? What is the fuck died? No way. And Obi Wan's gonna die too. What is going on? I I actually can't believe he got that. He gets it. I I thought they were in a lot of problems after the impale, but yeah. Nicely done. He's way too tanky early on. Their their heroes are tankier, right? Like you have this Twin and Tide Hunter with 900 HP running in, Sven with 750. Like good luck being a weaver with 600 running around there. First blood, another kill. This is so worth it for uh, Radiant. Azure, they get the bracer, free bracer for Sven to go into the lane. He gets a stick as well. This isn't this isn't an easy lane for him, so it, it feels so good to have an advantage early on. On who, sorry? Oh, said... On Sven. On Sven. Yeah. What are your oh, this... what are the main concerns for Sven in this lane? It's just a lot of spam, a lot of damage going your way. Like Tide Hunter uh, sorry. Yeah. Tidebringer, my bad. <laughs> Tidebringer, and then on top of that, Mirana hitting you. If the Mirana doesn't die here, let's Homo? see. Yeah. Dude, what, 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 what's going? What That's is how the star? allies hit you. That's how the allies hit you. They, they, they feed kills to the enemy team. Pomo's gonna get the Kari snipe too. I Pomo's gonna cook it. Okay, Might also die. He's also dead. <laughs> it's blocks a free the... reset. It's a free reset. <laughs> he blocked the body blocked the small camp before he died, so he got that as well. Yeah. Like this is probably the most perfect lane they could have wished for on uh Well not the most perfect, but pretty good. Starts for uh Radiant. Yeah, I don't know, Tiamming, you're not really winning this right click battle versus Ponlo. And something that we are going to see from them is the Earth Spike into Torrent, which will be a bit of advantage that Team Zero are going to have to at least out spam the Verona, who usually is quite good at trading. Yep, usually she is. Arrow. Alright, ZZQ goes down. Yeah, Weaver can't really help you here too much. Especially on level 2. With with levels, he becomes a bit scarier. Like, But level 1, Squitchy, you go in if you're caught. The, the cooldown is too long. There's just enough time for them to kill you. So, better be careful with the clockwork. Denied. Interesting lane so far. A lot of uh, a lot of harassment. I, I like what they're doing on bottom lane, by the way. Radiant with with uh, spamming of Stormhammer and Arrow. Like, they're not saving resources. They're just spamming out beyond. Just returning that... Uh, Resources battle basically. You, they're not letting him just spam Tidebringer on them. Look at this. It, it's blue, one, they used one set of spells and he's on 50% HP. Yeah. yeah. So Radiant doing it and Dyer doing the ab exact same thing. FY See, Dyer have a big advantage as well. Okay, top lane. What are we going to FY? He's actually going to get blocked inside the cogs. Is Q able to close the distance? Um, Alright, we're starting game four off with all the kills. Seven kills in, who gets the Lotus clock on one side, Sven on the other. Yeah, a ton of kills happening. Level 2 arrow, by the way, on Murana, so they really want to make this thing happen, like Stormhammer into the arrow in the lane. I do... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I do like the adaptation from the earlier series with the Coddle, where they they already blocked, so they've already have a sentry down at mm -hmm. the um, at the hard cam, which we saw in the previous series with the Coddle twice. They, they weren't able to do that and unblock the camp early beyond. Not clean. And this got... Torrent still Tion Ming. Okay, not going to matter. Yeah, he had a Lotus, the healing Lotus on Sven. So he wouldn't probably die there if they went on him. It was him making the aggressive move. Kind of funky that Murana is blocking his hard hand. It's not that bad for her. Like, he can still farm it with the arrow, but just making sure that all the resources are there to 
make this Sven's lane as easy as possible. And we are again going on the like, Should we find arrow? Missed this time. Radiant structures are fortified. You can see the potential of this bottom lane, right? Like if Kunka had a, an even lane from the get-go, he'd be dominating. But <laughs> just Mirana tide, getting Tidebringer is so funny as well. It doesn't seem like it's going to get any easier as well. So I mean, I, I guess you know this friend does have, of course, the capability to be able to go back and play in the jungle. That's a nice stun combo under the tower, though. Beyond. Down to a quarter, and this could give them an opportunity now to hunt him in the trees. Maybe they want to turn to Ponlo Stanky. next. He's got a wand. Like, they're not killing him. 13 wand charges. Level 3. Got the blood grenade. Mirana. Just like, nice. Nice stun. Is it going to matter? It's not. Okay. No. Imor Ori is also making his first rotation. Only level 5 at the moment for the Leshrac. It's like one experience point for level six. Oh, that was a nice cog. Right there, ZZQ. Just manages to get away. Can he? It's like, you don't want to wait here with Wisdom Rune a minute and a half, probably. <laughs> uh, seven nice, is rotating, though. Uh, that should be a kill to Bark as well. Great rotation. Potter looking to get active early on. Remember the round blast. Okay, he still lives. Yeah, st they still get him, but... You gotta be careful with the Tide Hunter because of the Kraken Shell, right? Like, you can Kraken Shell most things off. You gotta be careful Radiant's not to lose the kill because of that. Attack. Nicely done, by the way. I... Mm -hmm. I said they couldn't look for a kill if Ponlo got the Radiant's stun where 70 was nearby. I want the stacks, though. This is nice. They will respond, though, on AR. Nice, Pons. Once again, he will die, but making them work for it. They stole a couple, right? Like, they got some creeps. Yep. It's still pretty damn good for Caudal. Still has his own stacks to chew through if he wanted to. So, I'm gonna get uh, the vessel next. What's going on with, uh, uh, with the Wisdom Runes? It looks like Lion will pick up the Dire one and FY, the Radiant one. Nothing... No shenanigans. So, I mean, yeah, you're able to take that hard stack, but damn, there's some gigantic ancients for Radiant. Mm -hmm. And none for Dyer, so... Let's see. I mean, you'd love to give it to the Tidehunter, you'd love to give it to the Sven. I think, importantly, though, we've seen almost every Leshrac game, it has been Ori that's been taking the ancient stack. With the smoke, right? Like, that's what they do. They Radiant's smoke him up, they move. You call that out Did previously as well. So making an attempt onto the less rack, and this is the burst potential you were mentioning. Ooh, ooh, and he's going to stick out to the urn. This EQ doesn't care if he dies. In fact, I mean, if he gets a cogs, there might be another kill for 70. FY. Wow. All right. Yep. Very, very nicely done by 70. Like, this caudal. It was a nice... I'm, I'm pretty sure... Oh, We're not done yeah. just yet. On low. Arrow. We have to set up for the blast onto low. You've got ZZQ once again coming around. <laughs> and this game, they are playing very well with the Coddle. I mean, you will have the TP in from Ori. Even FY is actually going to rotate. Where did Beyond come from? Why are we going to clunk you here? Why not? It's a party eight minutes in and Team Zero. They will enjoy this. But there's a Weaver. Everyone is here, like, they yeah, they don't give a damn, man, like, they just want to crush this mid lane Lesh. And don't even allow him to leave the lane to go for those stacks. There's a smoke on FI, that's, the, that's what this smoke is meant for, but at this point, like, you dealt so much damage that you might even smoke up on ZZQ and Quarrel. Like, he's got his vessel up. Look, if we know what Leshrac does every game with the smoke, right, like, if, if we know, look at this illusion from 70, he's going in to scout it. I'm, I'm sure he knows as well. I'm sure he should be prepared for this. ZZQ almost level 6 on the clockwork. Ooh, if they contest this, it looks like they're going for Tidehunter instead. And if they contested those stacks. 
But the tide is a huge kill though. Yes. I'm with the best one, the best from Cotto. It will be easy. I am very impressed how they're playing around 7 this game. They're going. They're going for the stacks. They're in. You might... Oh, I was going to say, you might have to TP the Sven, but he's... I no god strength can... and no TP. I, I, like, these stacks are actually dangerous for Dire. I don't think they can have them. It's... How is... I, I'm, I, it's I just bay. don't know. It's, it's... It's just so risky. If you get them, it's amazing, but... A bot with a Ravage, maybe? Yeah, I was going to fly, but it will f slip past the two. That's exactly. Yeah, or he might just take the stack now. Yeah, okay. They helped him. Right? Yeah. <laughs> they literally <laughs> just helped him. That's it. That's all they did. Top tower is under attack. Yeah. They knew the stacks? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they needed to go as he was farming them. And then it maybe works if you kill him and then you take the stacks. But trying to take them on their own, that's not going to work. They don't have a hero that does it. No, not in a form of Flash or Tidehunter. They just don't care about the Ancients. And they're gonna keep going though. Another smoke. Hot on clock. Top lane. Combine together. Top lane. Top lane though. Arrows there. Do they need the Ravage? They do not. All right. Can they take the team fight afterwards? So Ravage still up from Bark. Dizikyu's gonna be able to get the hook shot into middle, and just importantly, Seventy is freely spell casting. They have Ravage still, remember? Still available. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you miss all your spells, it happens. Especially on Mirana. Uh, yeah, ZZQ is still around. With Tranquils, he's gonna heal up. Doesn't even have to go away from here. Nice setup, by the way, still, for uh, the kill on Weaver. Nice setup by FY, gets a big kill. They aren't getting any objectives, so they smoke up. Is when Beyond gets blade mail though, so the kill would be a little bit trickier. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Actually gonna make their own smoke play as well, so might run into the two on the high ground. A lot. FY and Pondo, the Hex brothers together. Full shack was bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm still waiting for Ah to actually have some Real Ravage, he sees beyond. There we go. Oh, he's gonna Ravage him. Alright. Blade Mail's gonna be Not activated. Now Pollen might be able to blow up Ori. Sven's even gonna try and enter the team fight as well off the back of the God Strength. We'll cut down the line. Daisy Q now stuck in the cogs as well, but 70 wants to clean up. Why is on nearby? Doesn't really have a whole lot of damage to add to the fight. It's very low, That's yeah. Just, yeah. Even with the ulti, he doesn't go back in time far enough to be full HP so one big difference in this fight was of course no coddle like he had travels but he wasn't really there on time uh, way too late to rotate they do get Ori and the Ravage is used so if you're team zero it's not like you're too sad about what went on only if you're beyond maybe but everyone else is yeah that's why they can probably yeah they've gone pretty deep for the lion no God's turn. Is this worth it? Apollo does a catch and baiting. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> like, yeah. Apollo is so is laughing up. right now. Hookshot? Oh, <laughs> He'll land. I'm anxious. Tunnel vision onto a lion and <laughs> two cores die. Yeah, some of these moves from Azure are questionable at best. They do pop the wards and they do take the tower uh, I, I'm not sure why they expected no response because there is there are travels on Caudal right so he's going to be in every single fight and then everyone else can join in mid lane FY both combo I'll be killed by the looks of it oh nice arrow onto the Caudal actually or he gets clipped no actually even he doesn't get clipped by uh, Illuminate so is there a shot? No, in 14 seconds. But they're just dominating this map, it's crazy. Like, good luck if you're Sven finding any farm. You want your ancients open, but you can't have them. They're not letting them get close. 
shot available. Apply. Bot. I'm killed. This is really one of the first few games we've actually seen Team Zero play from ahead off the laning phase. Yeah, like uh, all on the back of the skull, I would say. Like he's just playing way too well. It's also not only, um, it, it's also his matchup. Like Lesh just doesn't feel comfortable doing anything. He's buying Eternal Shroud now. He's got Yules as well. It, it does make things a bit different. Like he can go in a fight and then maybe Yules himself as Illuminate is flying in. But he's got more problems. He's not tanking up. Pondo even with the finger is blowing him. Uh, blowing the Disco Pony up. So... Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. They, they did not look this good with the combo early today. <laughs> I, I'm very, very impressed with how they're playing around him, though. It's just a good game for him. Maybe the game you watched wasn't as good of a coral game, but this one certainly is. Uh, I, I, I have one issue for them. It's like this physical damage uh, from them will be... The only physical damage you're really getting is from the Weaver, and it will be mitigated quite a lot by Warcry and maybe the Aghanim's Shard on Sven eventually and uh, uh we'll see how much he will be able to do so once the bkbs so are up on azure yeah, yeah that's what we're looking at i was just gonna ask that if the, the bkbs is gonna be that thing what your bark has mid. got no mana <laughs> yeah it's being a yeah. bit annoying Pondo has a shard already so he's just using that they're running it low though I saw. Giving them a lot of information for them to actually work with, and there's oh, shot. Unfortunately, it's gonna get tanked by the Mirana. Did he not see the Mirana, or did he just want to go on Mirana? I wonder. I feel like the goal should have been the Sven, but maybe just the body block, yeah, like you said. Ori? Is he stepped too far forward? It's okay, 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 okay. Uh, wh what, what, what happened? Why didn't they go? They were afraid of Ravage, I guess. And uh, they should be. He has a blink now. Here they can catch. They need a high ground ward. FY's got blink too. Not a bad timing. 7,000 deficit. We could see this team fight bouncing back into the game, but they need a pretty big ultimate from Bark. That ZCQ is difficult. not enough. It's not enough. I mean, of course, they're happy with it and maybe leading to the T1 tower. It is something. You're going to need to play pretty passively afterwards, and they may not actually get the tower. Let's see if there's a response. And Lo can die. Four seconds for Blink on Tide. Um, okay, he's got it now. Back again, so... They'll, they'll still go back. Weaver is one of Dyer's better heroes to deal with the wards and... Okay, he just denies, farms a bit. Doing light near, by the way, so more control coming from him. Buff, buffs him up a bit. Don't mind this build. Not the most right click uh, heavy, but still pretty good. Low needs to be careful. He has only Mirana around him. Nice D ward though uh, from Tian Ming. That was the ward that we were trying to set up on. I mean, they've got their own ward that scouted them out, I think, moving to top. ZQ on a hunt. Mirana just too hard. You need Lion as well. Bondo. I like the shard. I'd, uh, it, it, it's nice to have versus Tide. Like, he jumps in, you use your mana drain, you don't get impaled by Ravage, and then you can play off of that. It, it, it's a nice counterplay, kinda, to Tide Hunter, but overall, it, a Blink Dagger this game would have done a lot for them by, by this time, I feel. Okay. They're struggling a bit, like Clockwork can't find targets, but he has no follow-up to, let's say, control of a Mirana, so can't really go in. Yeah, we saw it was okay through a lot of the earlier rotations, but maybe it's just because the position they were playing across the map. Now with the towers going down, you have to go a bit deeper, and it's not as easy for the clock. Why is Sars? By himself, we'll see Ori starting to move over. See if they're going to be able to catch him. Time lapse back. Okay, baited nerds. See ya. 
And there is a tight hunter around, but he he has a shard as well. He just blinked in the wrong direction. He could have waited. Yeah, if he just went Radiant north, he'd, he'd get the beaver. Attack. They are moving now. They're the ones smoked. There's agonims, of course, on Kunka. It's a huge difference. Agon is, by the way, on Keeper of the Light, next item, and he's not far away from it. Like, no Dagon, nothing like that, like Dagon Z-Blades, nah, 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 this guy wants eggs. Oh, oh wow. Dude, <laughs> just imagine this hell, Torrent Storm and Agonim's Disco Ball on top of it. Willow <laughs> Wisp. Just imagine the hell you're in, like, it's literally the Dota equivalent of hell. I am very impressed with AR's ability to store this game out. I thought they needed a little bit more with that pick off mid lane, but it seemed like just the one kill was enough and, and happy with getting an objective. And we see just how the pace has slowed down since then. Five, it dropped the 5k net worth lead, and I think it was up to maybe 8k at its peak. So you're getting to these bkbs and low has his and this was like the all important thing you were mentioning about ar's like ar's lineup like you need these bkbs they are vital for them in team fights yeah let's see what they can do you have everything that you kind of need the blink ravage the shard dead in the water on, on tide hunter is also super strong versus both kotl and weaver like, the most valuable player right now is bach and um <clears throat> like you said bkb on swan let's see here they come. All eyes on Bark. What can he do with the Ravage? It's Ooh. good. It's on to four. They need more damage. Low. It's going to be able to enter with the BKP, but all he is is targeting down the line on the right side. Though. FY. Pick up the Coddle. That is a lot of the main damage source for Team Zero at this stage of the game, but no one is locked onto the Coddle. Just multiple fights breaking out simultaneously. As soon as the BKP expired on Low. He wasn't able to gap close and get the big right clicks out that were required to take the fight. Now, maybe FI will go for the Hail Mary play, but somehow they sniffed him out. I thought they they don't, the they boss. don't, they don't, they don't. They, don't. they didn't see him, they didn't see him. FY, uh, the cogs are there as well. He needs to put a slot in. Yeah, he's, he's gonna be too late. Maybe he's just tired. Yeah, he's gonna TP base. By the way, the main reason why Carl survived, which is pretty damn sad are the wards and the one of the biggest issues they had in that fight were the serpent wards i'm not talking about normal wards like they blocked sven on the south part of the map like next to the uh. an ancient uh, next to the roshan so he couldn't join the fight he needed to circle back all around walk he doesn't have a blink so he needed to just walk waste all that time Plus, it didn't really do a lot, right? Like, the Ravage, it caught four heroes, but they only got the Lion off of that. Oh my God. <laughs> He's fine. Yeah, but yeah, I think that was a, that was a greater Lotus that he had to eat or something. Yeah. It's such a sad shard here. And to, to get it on Mirana, like, feels bad. What do you mean, dude? Great one. You're like 170 damage on leap. No, I'm joking, it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. Tower has fallen. It's great. It's <laughs> alright, FY Midas is almost there. Top lane, they're actually coming through the portal. Ooh, Ooh run. Run, run. Okay. Back to the stall game. Back to the stall game indeed, but I don't know if you have to do it if you're uh, easy. They have eggs now on Coddle. Mori is caught. It's just that he's got to pay. Uh, oh, sorry, let's see. Ravage is ready. Is Bark gonna find an opening though? Like, it. like your Lash didn't have enough mana to fight, anyways, so. Even if you Ravage, even if you counterplay and save him, you're probably losing that fight. And plus, you're playing into Weaver with an Aegis. A really difficult to kill to, to make it twice. Is he gonna... Okay, so Lu is actually buying Blink. No Aghanims this game, just pure old Blink. 
Mask of Madness, Echo Saber, Blink. Radiance Maybe it feels like the scepter might be too attack. slow. I think so as well. I think that's probably the main reason. Because it's not that bad. Like, you can follow uh, Cottle through, you can follow Weaver through. But oh, Lowe's gonna go back. Like he, can, he can't pick a BTB actually, because he's EQ. Someone needs to block the hook shot. Oh, he's gonna go for it, but there'll be an angle. Oh, and they're still sticking around. They're actually gonna try and take a fight. Oh, I'm gonna do ravage. huge ravage. They need more out of it though, and they're not gonna be able to find it. Low once again. Can't fight without the BKB. Somehow he slips past the Conker's grasp, but only for a second. X was still there from afar. We'll have at least one oh, TP Pondo. up, but Pondo also catches Bark over to the right side. And they will. Everyone else is going to funnel on over very shortly, reaping the rewards of a great team fight from them. Oh. What? What? No. No. Dude, this is. What? Ridiculous. <laughs> I can't believe that. How did he leave? That, that joke, actually, yeah, that joke, I can't believe it. What? Yeah. <laughs> no way! There's no way! <laughs> Alright. What? Uh, what dishes out yeah, AoE damage on Team Zero without using it? Do they have anything that, that deals AoE damage without being clicked? Like, they don't have any uh, neutrals that do that, nothing like that, right? What do you, what, what, what do you mean? Like, Conquer? Kodo? What do you mean? I'm yeah. so confused. What's this question? Oh, wait, just a sec. When Buck was hiding, he had Blink yeah. off cooldown. When Kotl passed him, his Blink got... Uh, yeah. Damaged by him. Him. Yeah, um, when Selene passed him. And I'm thinking, like, is there something I'm forgetting? Vessel used to have it, remember? Like, <laughs> one patch? It, am I crazy? Did it? An AoE? Yeah, yeah, it, or I'm just insane. I, I feel like Vessel had an AoE uh, one, one single patch or something. Whatever. It didn't have charges, remember? I, 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 might, I might be just going insane uh, at this I, might, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Ages is out, Ravage up in 15. But Strength is up as well if they want to try and take a fight. They are splitting, so FY did use the Serpent Wars down pot. Do you ever have dreams of games, by the way? Like you dream a full game of Dota or something? Or is that too much? I had that, like, too many times. Alright, FY will escape. <laughs> just out of. Alright, never mind. Well, FY lives with Tiamming, does it? Yeah, but that's jump. That's jump for 70. That's a big loss. I do, like, I don't. I haven't really dreamed a full game, but I will have stages where if I'm. And I had this in school as well. In school, if I was playing a bunch of Tetris, I would like, as I was trying to sleep, I would see like blocks falling mm -hmm. uh, in, my, in like my mind's eye. Or uh, also if I've been playing a lot of chess as well, if I'm spamming like chess, You'd see the board, I, like, yeah. I can kind of, yeah, I can see the board while I'm falling asleep. Uh, oh my God, look at this. this is, uh, what's, what, what's the name of the Netflix series? You're that girl, the Queen's Beth Harmon. Yeah, no, but yeah, it's, you're... no, but it's, 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 uh... I am casting with Beth Harmon here. <laughs> 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 no, I know, I know what you mean. Smoke up, though, from Rebella. AR. There's no ages, you mentioned it. They Radiant's could pull up this weaver, though. Oh, BKB. Oh, and he's actually just gonna instantly gonna pop the BKB. And now the Sven, hookshot as well as in, Lowe's BKB is getting completely wasted. This is not the ideal fight they were hoping for. And meanwhile over to the right side, Orion Barky it? getting controlled as well. All or nothing for Lowe, but the Torrent's gonna connect. Torrent Storm creates too much chaos. And a disaster of an initiation. No buyback, and even if Sven had it, what would he be able to do? Yeah, that, that's the huge difference that they have in this game. Sven, if he wastes his BKB, like, fighting afterwards is so difficult. Weaver, 
he pops the BKB, goes into the fight, like, loses the BKB before anything is done, really, and still can easily, easily just continue fighting. There's so much AOE control. Ravage on the other side is just not enough. They do have Glyph, they can delay this a bit. Mirana and Shadow Shaman are back up. Maybe some arrows. Fire. Exit oh. arrow, not bad. Need the Ravage. It's gonna come too far, too late. I mean, they're able to get YSI down to the low ground, and again, it's just... It's not clean for me, I like we've been seeing. On low might die, though. Chuck you have to Sven back alive, or he's gonna try and charge in the middle. But Sven has to be so cautious how he takes the team fight down BKB. He's waiting for an angle to jump in, of course, has the blink ready to go. But now with the control coming on shortly from the Torrent Storm, Lesh is going to get clipped by it once. Why is such just freely right-clicking? Yours is there. Is it going to matter in the end? They're stuck inside the circle. Sven's in. not paying off for himself, but low. Tries to find the jump in. Stun's going to come out. It's not enough damage. Bjorn will live on a slither of health. Now they're trying to catch up to YSR. Again, no team fight. It's just working for them. Everything is off by one spell. It's never perfectly in sync. Uh, it's never perfectly in sync and it's way more difficult for them to take these fights like Sven pops the BKB jumps in but he needs some follow-up and this is a pretty poor Sven this isn't your uh, I'm gonna jump in and break you Sven with some Daedalus and whatnot like two hits and you're dead no this is a Sven this is a humble Sven with a blink BKB and Echo Saber he jumps in hits you and asks you can I please continue hitting you can you please be so kind to not run away of course, they all have so much mobility, they just move out. Kunka gets away with uh, Ogre Seal Totem and they just can't follow. This Will-O-Wisp was... I know it's not the most favorite item or most Keeper of the Lights, but it's been doing wonders this game. Am I crazy to feel like I still think that AR with like actually decent Ravage and Sven jumping can win fights? Yeah. Do you see that too or no? Ah, uh, you're crazy. Yeah? You don't you actually you don't feel that way? Not with these items. They need more. They need a crit at least in Sven. I feel like with the crit yeah. it, 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 it can happen. They, they still dish out a ton of damage with Ori with Sven for sure. I do think that they, this Kotl needs to go now. Like you're not killing the Weaver anymore. That uh, you might, but it he's hard, much harder to kill. He's getting surrounded very shortly. It's easy cube with a great angle if required. And he's gonna pop the big hit. He actually wants to fight? I mean, he gets a kill, but is he gonna be able to get out as well? Somehow got the blink? And it looks like FI will be called though nonetheless. So YSR was able to get the ages and join in. Yeah, he's Remnant got Daedalus. He's got Daedalus on Weaver, dishing out a lot of damage. By the way, from low, that was literally the only play possible. He needed to pop ulti, BKB, and hit. The only way he stays alive, because he needed to kill Clock, right? Like, he can't TP away from Hookshot. So he kills the Clockwork, and that's why he lives. Like, so I, I love the mind clarity in a stressful situation. Really nicely done by him. Still, though, this game, for, in my eyes, isn't changing a lot. Daedalus... Lincoln's next on the Weaver. Surprised there's no Hex on Kotl yet. It's going for Octarine instead. Low is pretty close to Daedalus, and I think you are in a game where you buy out on the Sven. I do not think buyback is important, especially if you use BKB Godstrength. He will die here, though. No unless BKB he unless he just heals the creeps and blinks, but no. Kotl gonna make sure that is not a possibility. And they are instantly smoking to top though to take the team fight, but they're already out on Dire. So great read from them. You're gonna get the quick and easy kill on to low, and they will make sure there is not even a, an opportunity for a 4v2 up top off the back of this smoke. Now the scan is there, but oh, YSR. You're going in for the creep? Just, yeah, just the creep. Right? Nice retreat from them, from the top lane, of course, on the Weaver and Kunka. There's no Sven. He does have a buyback that you so wished that he didn't have at this point. But no, I get it. I get it. Uh, unfortunate uh, catch on the Sven. For him, that is. This is Raxus. They don't have a good... 
13 seconds, no glyph. They do have glyph for bottom or top if um, he's in goals. Two more. Four. There's a lot of danger, man. Look at just the poke from them. Ravage gonna come through from Bark. They're still trying to hold the buyback out of the Sven. But there's just no damage without him. So FY is gonna die and the Cox as well from ZZQ. Holds the tight onto into place. Pomo prevents him from getting further back to base. Team Zero. Interesting fight. Like you pop the Ravage, but you don't buy back the Sven. I mean, I, I get it. Like, but he didn't buy back. They don't lose the side. But now that he's up and they smoked up, has the crit to work with. But there's no Ravage, no control. And they wrap up. Look, look at the pings. Like they know. Nice scan. Yeah, they just know. Easy kill. Max is there. Long range hex. Oh my god. Okay, eye of the vizier. We are delaying it. Oh, push up this. The Ignis just gonna clip on the outskirts. Alright, Lou. What have you got in store for us? And it's it's just too late. Maybe two uh, letters. You've lost Ori. And Bark's just gonna get critted down as well. Huge right clicks out from YSR. He's stuck in the trees. Do they see him? They do now with the flare. Oh, we just got the base. Alright, what's Low pop BKB, yeah. and yeah, they're gonna go. That's realistically what had to happen there. They couldn't find a single fight this game. Good job to Team Zero. Like this is this is the Team Zero that I like to see. Very aggressive from the get-go, get these kind of heroes with camp roll, camp fight early on. I think the Kotl into Lash was the perfect response. Extremely well played by them. Like, no worries, really. Uh, <clears throat> Bunka as well did all right, considering that he had a really rough... Uh, look, the, the lane matchups is not that hard for him. It's actually easy, but into the first blood, into the Mirana getting a, a kill on his lion. Like, he's, he did all right, got the eggs, and there's just so much mess. On one side, you have this Ravage. That's your control. On the other side, you have this Willow Wisp tied... tied uh, what, what's it called? Like the the, the, the water park. I'm forgetting. Torrent storm? Yeah, the torrent storm, not tide storm. The torrent storm, the tidal wave. Like you can't get away from it. You can't fight in it. Once the BKB is over on Sven, it's just too rough. But has to be said, I don't think. Uh, what's Ori's damage? I want to see that. Like he dealt actually 13k. As much as his Shadow Shaman. Uh when you said 13k had me a bit confused that time it sounded like the the tone was was like it was a lot like actually 13k wow uh but no yeah actually 13k was not good enough well no one else no. dealt more that's the that's the thing like your sven dealt how much 13.5 you dealt 13.5 dude ty did the most that game for them <laughs> ty did the most for them and he did as much as the lion on the other team they just couldn't connect they never had a good fight that game Really nicely done by, yep. uh, by Team Zero. Gotta say, I mean, my uh, at least my opinion on the on the Coddle was uh, was completely wrong. I again, early today, was not very impressed with it. Uh, they played around it, they got a victory in it, they got a loss with it. But this game, we saw just like it, it looked, it looked like it had a perfect combo with the Clockwork, right? Those early rotations, early hook shot, just diving deep, uh, enabling the Coddle to play outskirts of the team fights, and you really brought up this hero how it can just absolutely destroy the less track all the burst damage at the early stage made it impossible for him the spirit vessel for the tide hunter as well and they just they looked great they looked incredible this is a team zero we have not seen as well so far where really they are the ones calling the shots from the early game usually it is the opposition that has a net worth lead and, and they are playing from behind so let's see we get a game five we get a treat Listen, we we usually we don't get game threes, and now in a best of five, we are we're going the distance here, all the way for the Dream League season twenty three close qualifiers. We're gonna have to find out who will reign top, and of course represent China in the ever so incredible tournament that Dream League is. So we'll take a short break. When we come back, we got game five, the final game of our grand finals. We'll see you guys soon.
we are back for the final game of Dream League Season 23 China Close Qualifiers. You get to go the distance, we get a treat of a Game 5. Let's see what we have in store for us. The previous qualifiers, China had two slots. We saw Azure take one of them and G2 IG take the other. This time, it's only one slot and only one team will go on to also represent China along with Extreme Gaming. All right, let's see. Well, Lizard, let's... Let's see, so let's see, man. One. Perfect inter introduction. I'm hyped already. Uh, how are you feeling, my <laughs> friend? You did the lower bracket finals, three games. Now you have five games straight back to back from this. You're feeling all right. You need some water. Go wash your face. Um, you good? Uh, yeah, I'm good. We're cooking. Good. We're cooking. We're uh, okay, nice. We're zen right now, but we'll uh, we'll just wait for the action to kick off. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, the draft is also quite chill. Doesn't have to be like too extreme. Mm -hmm. And then the games are, you know, the early games, nothing. Your know, landing phase is very basic, and then you know it hypes back up, so it's all right. I got uh, <clears> a gonna slightly see... prolonged break. Are we gonna see a slaughter dart uh, in this in this last game of the series? The hero has been literally banned every game. I feel like so far, not in the first phase anymore, but he's been out. Do you think that that's something that um, Team Zero might think about? Um, no, I think it'll be banned again. I don't think they're going to first phase slaughter. I don't think it'll... I don't... Do you want them to first phase it? I don't know. I don't know if I would want them to first phase a slaughter. I, I, I don't think it's a good first phase. I think it's a good response pick. Like, that's what they did with it. They responded to some lifestealer really nicely with it before. But if that hero is getting picked, I feel like slaughter is most likely getting banned. So you're not going to get him. But in any case, looking forward to the to the last game of the series, no matter what the drafts are like, I feel Team Zero proved to everyone that they deserve to be be here. I know there's a couple of question marks around them. Uh, they were there at least, but no longer. They uh, dominated G2 IG two series in a row. Now they're winning. Well, not winning super hard, but that last game was a stomp against they are. Like, they actually stomped them. And... Uh, yeah. They did have a perfect draft to do so. They just understand the meta very well. And I feel like 7e is this kind of a mid lane player that has a lot of niche picks that can come in handy in this current meta. So it's a perfect time for him to shine. And I hear something. Is that draft going on? Draft is going on, my friend. So let's uh, let's jump over to that one. In 5 ready to go. Team Zero going to be on Radiant. Second pick, we're Azure on Dia with first pick. Conquer is going to be stolen. So pretty much we've always seen zero play it. And their responses to when they can't really get the Conquer has been DK or Centaur. DK is also Bandit as well. So let's see if they go the Centaur route or not. Just a, another thing to add, in the Elite League recently in the China qualifiers, Team Zero got to the Grand Finals. And unfortunately, they lost that 3-2 versus Kev Gaming. So they played in two back-to-back -back best of five, Mat 5 Grand Finals as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep, that was also uh, a lot of hype. A lot of good games. A lot of uh, good uh, brainstorming when it comes came to the draft. But Kunka, so far for me, is just not the brainstorm hero. You just pick it every time he's on. And yeah, Shadow Demon went through. Like he was also, we didn't really talk about him, but he was banned out in every single uh, every game. game so far. Yep. Yeah. And he, for a reason, like every region feels to be Radiant really uh, enjoying this Shadow Demon, does so much in the lane, gives you that save. But uh, my, my maybe slight issue with this guy is uh, when he was picked, Faceless Void was picked constantly, every single game. And that's one of the reasons why he was so broken. Like, not only is he strong in the lane, not only does he Ten give you purge remaining. against some melee cores, and not only does he give you the spell, but... Five just ruined Radiant these team. meta carries and those carries aren't really picked that much any longer uh life stealer is banned out opens up the centaur can still be a zzq centaur but most likely is on the offlane i do think with the shadow demon though like you're mentioning about like save with the bring up the faces void i do really like banishment versus the conquer who is a combo heavy hero mm-hmm so, and Five we are seeing a, still a very stack heavy meta, even though 7.35D or E, whatever it was, we saw experience D, get yeah. nerfed a little bit from stacks. 
Oh, okay, yeah, that was uh, a bit before. Um, no, I <clears throat> I agree completely. They uh, can mess his uh, um, combo up as well. It's decent with Ascent too. Is Mars in the pool? Like, this is something that Bach played and lost with. But it does, uh, to me at least, it strikes me like a decent game for uh, for an offlane Mars. You don't have to pick it right now. You can still go for your Azure FY Rain. hero, Shadow Time. Shamans in the pool, Lion in the pool, Tiny in the pool. They get the Tiny, FY Tiny. Just um, maybe a bit nicer versus SD than uh, these Shadow Shamans and Lions. Because you, you can jump him or any target and just blow it up before he can Ten even react. So. Remaining. That's always a nice thing to have. Five seconds remaining. And some more damage as well versus uh, Centaur is pretty solid. Mm -hmm. They just CM here for Zero. We've seen a lot of the CM and the Marana for Tian Ming. I'd like the CM. I, I'm I'm a big CM enjoyer here. Like the the route that's such a that has such a long uh, duration versus Stampede is also nice. Tiny Kunka, big mana enjoyers, so you you can have some fun with the CM for sure. Radiant team pick. Let's see. ET instead yeah. can't use Shadow Demon recklessly anymore, because if you use that disruption recklessly, you might be comboing up a uh, Echo Stomp or even Earth Splitter. So, gotta be a bit more mm -hmm. careful. Ten seconds remaining. It also kind of. Block picks a little bit of the, the Rubik for Pomlo, if this was big, going to be a Shadow Demon 5. I know the lane for Rubik versus AT is not very fun at all. I think that would be very similar to the Lion as well, where it would have some difficulties with AT. Like you would just be constantly using Earth Spike to, to retreat instead of like anything aggressively. So, But again, it could just be Shadow Demon 4, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, could be, could be. Could be SD4. I'm, th I'm thinking there's <clears throat> Death Enchantress that they picked before. Like you mentioned, like the spirit needs to be dealt with, but then you you can get blown up by the tiny as well. Do you think this is a support pick? It is probably right for Team Zero because they yeah, did yeah. flex Centaur very often to the five, but I don't think this is a game in which you do it. They they've always been leaving like Wildside Zero to last. Yeah. So I think it is. I I think you just showed support plus mid lane Radiant probably. Team pick. Alchemist, wow. there you go. They <laughs> never mind. <laughs> They're like, never mind. They don't. Screw you, Ares. We're getting a carry. This is just for you, <laughs> just because you called it. Um, okay, Grimstroke, good combo with the scent, right? Like, uh, good with Alchemist stun with the demon purge as well. Besides that, why, why the Grimstroke? Why, why the 10 seconds? Why exactly remaining. is this hero so valued by them? Maybe they're expecting something Five on the other side. Remaining. I'm really not sure. I, I, I just don't feel the insane value, but okay, your position Look, five or four, it's strong. I don't know if it potentially block picks the Terror Blade, which we see often as a like a nice late game response to the Alchemist. Like you have then Shadow Demon and Grim, and we, we've already seen recently like ET, what they ran it, right? The ET Terror Blade lane, so. Yeah. But they ran it be more, more, more because of the Luna than because of the anything else i feel like that's that's one of the reasons why they picked it it was a really good game for tb it was a death win basically just mm. too strong let's see what they go for i i wouldn't mind the tb if they go with the gyro instead uh, you have this melee melee support with something that's constantly ranged they played i believe they played one of uh gyrocopter games but it was with an io so this is a big difference yep. without the wisp Ten Still, a lot of remain. stacks, Elder Titan can uh, help you farm them as well. Five a lot of damage remain. coming from Gyro because of that uh, resistance gun with the ET Aura, Ancestral Spirit Aura, that is. I, think, uh, I like the Dino Ban. I think maybe Void Spirit's another one that might be looked at. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I don't particularly favor Ember at the moment. And I think Storm is probably... Yep. Lower on the list, just into the control. I think Void into Conquer is a little bit easier with Dissimulate to dodge. Mm -hmm. And you, I, I really just want a hero to jump in with, with Inks. Well, I, I think it's fine like having three people to I, initiate. I absolutely agree. I want a hero to jump in that's not Centaur. I want something without a blink. I'm worried remaining. that they might go Razor. 
because it's a yeah. really nice hero to get, catch Five and to gri- play into gyro. They played it before, they did well with it, but I, I'd rather have some more... Like, if you look at it, it's such a hard game to say no to Razor. You have... You're, you'd, you'd be laning probably into Kunkka. Uh, you have this Stampede to get on top of Gyro. It's a good game for you in general. Azure but and I'd, I'd, I'd rather see something flashy, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, the flashy thing. I, I think 70s look the best on those like temp, uh, playmaking tempo heroes, flashy heroes, and Razor is in particular that. What about the Pango? Like you have Grim it's already. Bad. First phase, first phase. First phase band, yeah, yeah, of course. Ten of seconds course. remaining. After well, that, what, one for game Pango. Mm-hmm. Do you want conquer mid or off? Seconds remaining. You're playing into Alchemist. I don't think this is the worst offlane Kunkka game. You're playing into Shadow Demon. Do you think this is... Because I like Shadow Demon more on 5 than on 4. Do you think this is Pomo Shadow Demon on ZZQ Shadow Demon? Which one? I prefer 4 for stacking, mm-hmm. but... It also gives you like a setup for Centaur. Stop. You don't really need that setup anymore. Uh, I would actually like Shadow Demon into Kunkka in the lane. Just the poison is kind of even though you're tanky, okay. it's it, it's very Radiant annoying. Team but they could be more with Grim Stroke. They're the ones. Oh, they're tanker. <laughs> By the way, they... uh, my my second pick for Team Zero was Zeus. They they so they take one and they uh, ban the other. What have you left? What what, what are your thoughts? Ten like you could go need. some uh, co-op, but this. Can be Razor offering uh, as well with the tiny. I hope they don't get better by the co-op. I don't know. I feel like I don't want that here on the f- game five. I don't trust it. Give me, give me your seventy hero then. What do you think? Just, just, just go some spirit. Any some spirits. Okay. Yeah. I do prefer the void a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Again, like we brought up, but. Is there something we're not seeing? Some something off of left field. Uh, Magnus, oh. there you go. It, it it is a seventy hero, by the way. It's something he plays a lot. Uh, we haven't seen it recently, though. Gives you some, I mm. guess, some power to YSR. He can so initiate. Greedy it. man. Yes. Very greedy, and it will be offline Razor, by the way. So they want to play the Razor into Alchemist and Kunka mid. Why not? Like you're playing into Mag. Nice adjustment by Azure. Uh, it is greedy with the Mag, but maybe it's greedy from Azure as well. Like nothing uh, that can that easily initiate from them as well. Until FY gets a blink, that's like minute 15, 16, 17, depending on how his game goes. I like both of these drafts. I, I feel like Azure is maybe more meta at the moment. It feels a bit easier to play. But you can get on top of uh, Gyro. You have this Magnus with the RP. I'd still value uh, Fade Beyond. Actually, <clears throat> I don't know who that is. This Bach guy. He's much a better offlaner. Uh, I, I, I do think that he's going to do wonders with his Razor. I might be jinxing it, but it looks like a really good Razor game. All right, well, let's see what Bach is able to do. And he and Azure get over the finish line. Make it over to Dream League Season 23. I, th- I think this would be a nice way for us to start this game. When we get in, let's start. I know we've done it. We did it yesterday. Let's take another look at Bach's mini profile. Just so everyone is remembers for what it is, if they didn't see yesterday. And Scriff so is they on can... It. <laughs> Scriff is... Just click the name. Yeah, uh, there we go. Like, uh, he had problems yesterday as well. There, there we, we go. go. He gets it. So just so we remember, what happened in that TI run of Collapses Magnus? And let's see if 70 gives him a similar fate with his own Magnus this game as well. Dude, don't do that. Don't do don't do that to, to Mr. Bach. Like he doesn't need these this emotional damage. You might get it though. A nice spirit. A lot Run, my friends. Oh, oh, one low. A level one three grab. 
How much damage? Plus 68 damage on Horn. Like level 1 Elder Titan with a lot of damage is... Yeah, it's good, but... Scary, yeah. <laughs> Just to run away from that. Hi, my friend. Who's, who's taking it? M5, we can... Uh, let's give some predictions. He wants some predictions, though. I would like some predictions. I want some predictions. I don't know. The AR. It's it's hard. It's a hard call, really. I like both drafts. I feel like both drafts have some things missing in them as well. They're not as good as in previous games, but this alchemist looked really damn good in in one game that they played it. On the other hand, you are playing against a razor. The lane won't be simple. I I'm, 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 uh, yeah. You think zero got it? Okay. Yeah. You. I just. It, it's not that I'm trying to be uh, like mysterious or trying to make it more fun. Like not to call it one way or the other. I just can't can't say for sure. I'm okay. seeing. I'm seeing up like the pros and cons of both sides. I will go through them. L -l Listen, I mean, sub sub and zero. What do you like? Don't the pros me and the cons the of the draw. <laughs> Ah, uh, so I you don't have pros and cons. No, you I just, do, I do. You like, just... I, I feel like this Magnus is a wild card. I think that's my yep. first thing. I know what Tori does. I know what uh, uh, what Kunka will do. What he'll build. I'm not even sure what the build is on 70. Like on the yep. on this Magnus. That's that's the first thing. Like he plays the hero a lot. Like he's, he has this in his top 10. But I don't know how greedy he goes. Is he doing some crazy? Echo Saber Harpoon or something like that, or is he all about just that blink, di this positioning of the heroes? He just misses as I'm talking, he misses the first cure on Ori. Okay, yeah, keep going. Yeah, another thing is, on the other side you have Fate, you have Fate Bach on uh, the Razor. I want to see how, how hard he'll be able to dominate this lane, because I've seen... Uh, Alchemists do fine against almost any counter they're they're played against, and he has this Grimstroke to to play with, which is oh, they they messed the hard cap. They they actually allow the pull on bottom lane. That's another thing. Like uh, Razor is the next fa factor for me on the other side, and then the build from uh, YSR. Like Erica, mm, Pondon might be dead top. Yeah, blood grenade inside the river. He hasn't gone for a TP just yet, and, and due to that, Tian Ming's going to be able to chase Branch him down. And he got him, first blood. This is another one. I, I think this is a pretty good game for Elder Titan, a good lane for him. To, to solo zone and make Lu's life good. Yep. Like, the, moment, the, uh, the moment disruption is used, you can start running them down. So... Uh, at least for me, I feel like the big advantage that AR have is just... Mid lane? Mid lane? Ori? Is, is it actually an F? Wow, okay. Never mind, it's not. I thought those two tower right clicks would do more. Uh, um, they did. He just had uh, stick charges and a fairy fire, so it didn't look like a okay. damage. But for me, I feel like the big advantage for Dyer is just the ability for them to actually execute early game fights, it seems much easier than Radiant, where you can just run down towers and have Conquer X, like high levels in X, and then playing, you both supports can play with him, you can also play with the Razor. Whereas Radiant, you don't have that ability. And this is the big thing like you're mentioning with the Magnus on, on how he's going to skill build, uh, item build. Like, does he go for the early blink to be able to make those plays? What is it gonna be? We see some early scepters sometime as well. But that is the big thing for me, where I feel like AR, their early game movements will be much easier than Team Zero. And as a result, can they get a big advantage off the kills they can find from that and also the objectives they can get? That's on the back of Kunkka, basically, all you're saying, right? Like, yes, yes, the, yes. He's the one that does. I completely agree with that. Like, it's much easier for him to... Uh, it, it, at least it's much easier to see what he's going to be able to do. Mid lane, they have Echo Storm here. They're actually gonna get a kill as well by the looks of it. They need the Tidebringer here. Oh, Ori. Cool down. Cool down, cool down. He was waiting on it. He didn't have it. That's why he didn't hit. He needed that one. Bottom lane, CZQ. Alright, why Sars gonna be careful now as well? Has been filled up pretty surely, yeah, so yeah. Oak's gonna have to run up to kind of the northwest. 
He's fine, he's fine. He can run away, but this is uh, the big issue with the lane. It's not only the Razor, it's like the combo of Avalanche Toss into the Plasma Field and Static Link. Like, you can't mm. get away. So, gotta be careful. Even with the stun, it's just not enough. And, yeah, Razor has a huge wave under the tower. He's already winning. It's looking rough for uh, Erika. And this was, I think, something you were trying to bring up before as well, was the hard camp being open and small camp being closed for the first five minutes of the game, which really hinders your ability to manipulate the wave from Team Zero down bottom. Yep, yep. And uh, it's not even only that. Alchemist likes farming it, so that's another problem. But they are stacking the medium camp. Not something you see too often, but they're stacking the medium camp underneath the tower. On just to survive. Playing Polo. He has his disruption to work with here, so he's fine. Lane? X into the TP. Polo's there. Devony. Oh, uh, oh, Polo? Is yeah, it gonna matter though in the end? Good. Okay, well done, well done. Uh, nicely, nice. Ni Nicely read. He actually started TPing as soon as the X marks the spot came, so he knew what's going on. One problem that they have is you make all these stacks and then ET is doing this, you see. Like, I'm not sure if he's gonna do it again, but just uses the spirit, gets all the damage from the creeps. Uh, this time not. Structures are this is a huge power rune, dude. They, they're just actually got a haste from Ori. Probably the best one you could hope for, honestly, for the Conqueror at this stage of the game. We were mentioning about his ability to manipulate the side lanes and bottom lane as well. Fi, they might go for the dive. Box a coming. decent chunk of damage. I guess he'll get the courier instead. It's all about FY here and how he plays. Like you can see everything that Razor is gonna do, uh, and you just stun him with Alchemist. That's that's how you play against Radiant it. But you can't fortified. count on FY being too far. Let's see. Oh. ZZQ, you're a god. Very nicely done. Meanwhile, YSR is farming that camp that we talked about. He might stack it one more time as well. If he's lucky enough. Devonee's gonna react to top and... I'd actually be able to get low. RP laid down. Ekrosom does a clip on the Magnus, so he'll find this skewer under the tower. The boat... It's not enough to be able to keep him alive. They will get the return kill and looking for more as well. DZQ is going to try and react to this, but the Grimstroke can only really watch as his support dies. Maybe he can get involved. Never mind. Echo Stop again's on the mark from Tian Ming. And now with the Stampede as well, is the damage going to be enough? It is, and they can look for the Elder Titan, but Tian Ming's trying to beat back one of them. Got to respect the damage from him. Uh, Shadow Demon is sleeping in. Though, let's see. He can't Echo Stomp him, remember, so gonna have to take a lot of poison stacks before he uh okay never mind disruption maybe he can make us not tp now or just a cooldown yeah he's fine he's fine not enough damage <laughs> well played by him like basically for polo to get this skill he cannot use disruption he needs to use it a bit later on he used it way too soon and then you're just a one tp away bot lane though there this, this is the siege of alchemist it looks like they're actually kind of predicting this dive, especially with Beyond taping in early. This would be a huge kill onto Bach. And they're going to be able to get it. Uh, that is deal. much needed. Much, much needed. Is this Ori a will worry Ori, so. And Lois well comes through the portal. To the dryer? Uh, well, screw it. Looking to get involved, and he'll be able to cut down the offlaner. So great response from the carry on, on AR, looking to get active pretty early on, key top net worth is low. I feel like these carries have to be, at least in this series, the carry that starts rotating in first wins the game, the whole game, like even. In, they're basically doing to Team Zero what they, Team Zero did to them in uh, the last match, right? On the mid lane, if you remember, minute nine, everyone was around the tower. They're doing the same thing about the Alchemist. They're, these guys, you know what they are. They've read the books of the great da Danish uh, poet. I don't know if you heard of him, Sin Sindarin. <laughs> they, they've they've is... read his they've read his work. If it's an Alchemist game, 
that it's an alchemist game it's the famous saying they're making sure that this alchemist does not have the best lane forcing him out all the way deep into the jungle have you been able to get said poet's autograph i've heard he's uh, of course he's I quite have. famous e even a hug even a Ooh. hug yeah you good, good hugs Ah, the best damn that's Cinder crazy C shout out to Sindarin, by the way he's very nice guy Sindarin yeah. is a very nice guy comes with knowledge comes with wisdom <laughs> His stream is literally one of the reasons why my stream became popular as well. <laughs> Back in the Did day, he rage you? What happened? I don't know. I, I, I entertained him a bit. Let's leave it at that. He heard some... He had some music provided by me. Radiant some harmonica. You want to explain? Are you a music producer? Or are you... Did you... Do some weird yes. noises on his stream? What? Oh, no, no, no. So I, I, I just produced. I produced some good music on his stream. Mid lane, seven E in a game. Yeah, seven E. Oh, oh wow! Him. Nice timing. And nicely done with the skewer. Yeah. Now in the river as well. John Ming runs into pop two. Look at the damage. Seven E. You're gonna be able to win the man fight. There are I guess the important thing means there's no boat. And now the Inkswell is gonna connect up to two afterwards as well. F Y does his best to disrupt them. The AoE spells really coming to play, but as soon as Lo shows up to fight, we're oh. gonna see the carry difference in this final game. And it is ever important once again. Can he steal this? Ah, I don't know. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. The two of them, the two of them for sure. Did Tiny is here as well. Oh god. Oh, god. oh god. massive. Massive. Grimstroke at least snatches a couple. Ooh, and Come that's one. That's so sad. And it looked so nice, by the way, for Team Zero, because I don't know if you noticed, they tunneled vision completely. Magnus caught them from behind with that RP. Just not enough damage, even with the Inkswell. Not enough damage from the supports, from the Centaur. Died. Oh, man. I don't want to stomp game five, but we might have a. Relax, relax. Let's see, let's see what uh, Alchemist is cooking. He's going Maelstrom again. So, uh, actually, uh, last game it was good because of the mischance uh, versus Troll. This game it's good because of a Razor and Static Link. Like you get the proc at least, you know, no, no matter what. So, yeah, no, not a bad build. We'll see, he had a very early Mjolnir last time. Though. Well, Blink is almost online from 7e. Yondi is also rushing his own blink, but of course it's going to take a little bit for him to get there with his current net worth position. Only 33 last hits. The offlane centaur. Uh, uh, we have really seen the the emphasis he's been putting on this game is just rotating. You know, we even saw down to bottom very early on to help the alchemists before they even tried to dive him under the tower. So he's playing much more sacrificial. Uh, CS is just a number, man. Just a okay. number. It's an well, important number, but uh, as number. a support, they don't think it's good enough. It's okay. It's, it's a poor mentality. <laughs> Smoked up by Ori. Let's see. Moving down bot. Like, this is a smoke that they'd like to get Alchemist with. They know they that he's farming. They should know. Yeah. F5 was under the ward and then disappeared. And yeah, okay, he also showed in the lane. I don't know what happened there. Onlo might survive as well. This is... is oh man, if he lives. Oh, the creeps uh, actually are the... attacking him. Yeah, oh, the creeps are working! <laughs> <laughs> He's waving. Lane, we got something going on. 7e. Uh, he tried to go fishing with the blink. And uh, the instant response from AR. Onlo to actually keep it in! <laughs> so they could kill him bottom, they might kill him mid. Stampede's out. Or he's gonna have the X up in a couple of seconds and... With the vision for the actually, I'm gonna toss Ori in. Level one. And a tower probably to add to the tally. His low is here for the damage required. Get in there, brother, says Mr. Tiny. Have more stacks to take. Oh my god. Not again. Not again. Uh, yes. More stacks. For the gyro. This guy is effortlessly. Having some 10k net worth, minute 15. Are they gonna do this? Oh, the RP is nice. Have they got the damage though? 
Ink Swap with the Hoof Sun. It looks great to start. And finally, YSR is going to get involved as well. All right. All the AOA Suns they need, and they clip onto multiple heroes. Great RP setup. Very nicely done. Used all their stuff. It's kind of sad to see an Alchemist. He didn't even have Maelstrom. He had a Bracer, and he's running in 13 minutes in to take a fight. That's usually your Radiance timing. It's kind of sad to see that, but uh, then again, he needed to. They wouldn't. I don't think they'd uh, finish them fast enough. So nicely done by YSR. Let's join in. State of the game is still very difficult. Now that you don't have those spells, now that you don't have RP to work with, and keep in mind that they were super clumped up, that they were being very greedy, they were taking another set of ancients. And they do have their own. So now the gyro is back. A thousand gold more or less away from his agonims and... Okay, never mind. He leaves the Ancients. He wants to go fight with his teammates. Bot lane. Well, they also say Alchemist farming mid. They just want the neutrals by the looks of it. Just take away a little bit of the economy from Radiant. They will smoke wrap around. No one is defending mid. No one is showing Alchemist. I don't think... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Is he actually going to farm this? Oh, or he's, he's even going to self-stun. No, they're going top though. They saw Magnus. Oh wow! Never mind. Uh -oh. Oh. They need to toss. They need to toss Kunka on him. Okay, Back never mind. And he's close to the T2 tower as well. RP's importantly on cooldown, but yeah, he's gone. Oh, they used oh, just the soul bind. They don't have they have RP and he could blink, but that's without the alchemist now. Do you really want to take this fight? They are tankier as well. Radiant are scanning. Good vision as well now planted. I'm actually surprised that YSR continued farming that. Like no one is showing mid for such a long time. Your creeps are even pushing in. It looked like a dangerous position to be in. Is it Q? The big day ward though. I think a freshly planted ward. Going to make this jungle even scarier. I do want to talk about the Magnus Iron build for a little bit. I am kind of intrigued on 70 going for this Echo. The more I look at the mag, the more I actually just want him to go Scepter first. Mm -hmm. I feel like you are going to be playing from a position pretty shortly where you're trying to defend high ground and just relying on pickoffs, which I think the mag can get with like Inkswell buff on him. Mm -hmm. The only thing with that being said, I don't know how much of the X is a, a counter to the Magnus, so maybe... I, I would, uh, like, <clears throat> I get your point completely, but it's a little bit defeatist. Like, I'm going to be on high ground, so I need the Axe. With Echo Saber, maybe you won't be on high ground, just waiting. Maybe it will give you enough damage to take these heroes down in, in an RP outside. So maybe that's the mentality. Mjolnir is up on Alchemist, like, this guy hurts, like, he can join these fights. So maybe, maybe that's the idea. Agonyms I have an incredible just... ward. Maybe some observe what's going to do so much for them. RP is good. RP in once again. RP on to two. Now the full top up. Oh, it's perfect. You might lose YSR, but Pomlo's going to give him some breathing room with the banishment. As soon as he pops out, Low will crit him down. And if they can cut their losses at that, they would be happy. Yeah. That's it. Just get more damage, just get more damage on this Magnus, like you don't have to be on the high ground uh, to be defending, you can actually take some decent fights outside. Very nicely done, nice RP. So, you know Magnus, it's just a fun hero to watch no matter what, is it TI Grand Finals, is it, is it Arise, our favorite Romanian streamer dump, dumpstering people with Magnus, it's just always fun. Ooh. Top lane, x Speaking the Magnus. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, they miss the X, but yeah, doesn't matter. Oh, they're rushing. They have decent damage, right? It's not amazing, but it's good enough. Uh, tanky Kunka can stand in front as well. You've got Seeds of Serenity. Yeah, this is the point in the game in which Gyro feels really strong. Like you have the Axe, small crit, going BKB next. Sometimes if you get the Sages like this, you don't even have to. But most likely he still will. Oh. 
Let's see. Onlog is farming also very nicely on Radiant, by the way. Um, he's doing the Aghanim's build. Straight up Ags, which is... It's not bad versus Razor as well. Like, slows him down, makes him unable to just move in with that Eye of the Storm and Static Link. Enables YSR a bit better too. But your prophecy of high ground defense, even with that big... Let's see, what they have like... 70, 70, 70! The Razor! And under the T2 tower, they should get the kill onto Buck, right? Oh. No damage, actually. Yeah, nice stomp. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Oh, I saw bottom lane. He needs to run. Yeah. I love that he got that last hit with Mjolnir, by the way. He dropped it on the creep and he still gets one extra creep. Always something you should do when you're leaving a lane. Just drop the Mjolnir on the creep, move back. Um, they didn't use RP, that's why Razor lived. That's why, why you were surprised. FY? Is he's potentially baiting. No. Okay, never mind. They're coming instantly over. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. FY. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Go on, Harry. A bit awkward, though. He's doing so much work, and all he needs is vision. Like, it's so important. As long as he has these wards, he can be the one jumping in, tossing back. And 70 is responding really damn well, but in that situation, what do you do? You jump in, if you RP the gyro, it's wasted. He's got Aegis. You really don't want to be uh, catching him. They might smoke here. Let's see. Why is On Radiant or Dio? On Radiant. Wait, 70 is on the low ground. They see FY and they're going to be able to blow him off thanks to the high ground observer ward. Also get a D ward as well that FY actually just plays, so... They were also stacking to uh, to smoke, I'm pretty sure. In any case, Alchemist has a BKB now completed. With that one kill, they can move out. They, this skill is so important for them, because every time Tiny is dead, you're free to roam the map. You, you, you're like breathing with full breaths, like you can go out, devour the triangle, make sure Alchemist continues farming without a threat. Yeah, I'd like this call for them to... Yeah, it's a nice one too. Yeah, potentially for the Shadow Demon or the Magnus. Not bad for the Mag. ZZQ. Oh, he's fine. Almost, dead. almost, almost. Yeah, he already has his shard. He, he got it. So the one on him is extremely important too. Uh, it's well. The heal, the damage, of course, everything is nice. Dyer are scanning. Oh, not Radiant too far from Ags as well, by the way. 400 gold. I'm not wow, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's a really nice Ags. Getting uh, two charges. I was just surprised he was that close to it. I guess he has Rush at him. Philosopher Stone is helping. Gold is a great... great item versus the Razor. Great item versus him. Unless he heard that wants to be running into the middle, potentially be able to kite the Gyrocopter as well. Mm-hmm. Bottom lane, they are smoking. They're probably going to wrap behind the T2 tower. Yep, they have to Play... storm as well. He got a glimpse of Beyond. I'm not quite sure if he did. Jumps over the top. Beyond on the low ground, unfortunately. Oh. Okay, wow. That was... <laughs> I think that was more about him seeing Lulu than low than seeing uh, FY. But in any case, nice blink. Super. I'm playing the setting on 7e. Oh, we skew it into Tian Ming and up links down. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, it's ZZQ. He doesn't know where they go, but they don't know where he's going either. The ZZQ will die. Bottom lane, though, they're still there. Do they want to stampede low? for low? Low? He's got the ages, though. Still 45 seconds. Of course, they'll kill him the once. And Dyer gonna have to come through the portal to get there to protect him in 70. Breaks the static link, tries to get in range for the RP of the Sempi, it's going to enable him. They got the damage through the BKB though, it's taking them quite some time, but it's not going to matter. Low will die, but now here come the reinforcements, and Bart went uncontested inside that team fight. And Ori's going to be here to clean up, F fires well with a jump over the top. Gets the Shadow Demon, BKB soon to expire from YSR, and that will mean his life therefore will be depleted as well. Yeah, we questioned how much Bach can do, and yeah, he can do quite a lot without his sag still on, uh, well, without it being used properly on him in the fight. He also blocked the Magnus from getting on top of, uh, on top of BKB's gyro on time. 
And because of that, they had to use Stampede as well. They used everything to kill the Gyro off. And you, like from every perspective, this is a good play from Team Zero. You wa you baited a lot of TPs on top lane. You're going in for the stragglers. You find the best one. That's the Gyro. Unfortunately, they just not they're just not fast enough. They just don't have enough damage to kill him off so fast that they can respond to everyone else coming. But they are fast enough with these smokes. Straight up, next one. Radiant are scanning. Where do they go? Ares, talk to me. What do they do? Can they do this without Alchemist? Do you have faith? I don't know. No RP as well, which has been the pivotal ability for them in these previous fights. Actually, a fighting chance. Is he Jiro? Really low? Is he die though? BKB is going to be back off cooldown. This is an all or nothing play in. They just were not even close to calculation. Off the mark. Pongo's going to get caught by the Torrent Storm. You're also continuing to chase down the Grimstroke as well. That Who was... will not escape. FY on the hunt. Ah, uh, just ambitious. That was nothing or nothing play. Not, not all or nothing. I'm not sure. How do you imagine to kill the Gyro there without the Magnus, without the Alchemist? The damage is just not it. It's not there. You, If his teammates are all dead and they're not showing up then maybe but with him having a bkb and the team and mm, yeah it's not gonna work boys Radiance middle tower need to cook something better interesting i don't know if they usually go for this 15 town on the elk I'm, i don't remember but he went for the acid spray armor and he's yeah, going ac next they so they do they do they do okay okay I mean, of course, there's a lot of physical damage on Dial. Guy, mm -hmm. Razor. A lot of minus armor as well, right? Yeah. Very nice to have versus Bach. The plane FY is already in position. He just needs the Kunka. What do you think? Ooh. It's not TPing. He has to run. He'll be fine. It's a rough state of affairs, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I know. it's very rough. It's an alchemist lineup. Down 8,000 gold. Not a good position to be in. All your other cores are struggling as well. Beyond is... Uh, Bach. The port almost. He has a TP. I'm gonna have to go for it straight away. Bach has got damage. Oh. oh my god. Oh, that was so close. That shard pulling him in. And you have to keep in mind that every hit deals more damage. So, it almost happened. He almost got him. It just shows the potential of this Razor. You need a BKB on 70. It won't really help you against that, but you need a BKB in general. In lane, they know the BKB is on cooldown. Eric is going to be tossed back at least. Can play with the Chemical Rage. They're going to use him up, which will set up for the Earth Split up. Where's the main damage coming there from Dai though? Bark isn't there currently, nor is low. They needed one second on FY to have his blink again. He, the, the fight didn't last long enough for him to re-engage, so they managed to survive. Uh, BKB unused on Alchemist, and that's a pretty big deal. Rush up in 20 seconds. Can they now fight that? Some crazy clumped up fight in which you get a lot of heroes in RP. They could win that kind of a fight. 70. 70? I just, is under attack. He just cannot find a place on this map to finish his BKB. That's Dyer's the problem. Look at this, even the glyph. Even, yeah. Which is a, kind of important as well. I mean, I guess you can TP to the outpost, but regardless, T1 for your map control. FY might go in even. Is oh, it? FY's going to be able to get the jump, yeah. Mm. Oh, it's not good. It's not good. Everything needs to be clean for zero at this stage of the game. Apparently, even Roshan just running them as Stun well. Stun on Alchemist. But once BKB expires, you're just going to have to cut your losses. And at that, it's going to be a Roshan now given over to a Zure. Yep. More than enough time. Two minutes on the Dire side. You like the Dire side more, right? You value Cheese over Banner. Of course, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On yeah, the 
Oh, this is a hope and a prayer right here. Uh, good luck, my friend. Dude, they ain't even 7E they're trying to set up on. Dude, they are making sure they get nothing. What are your scepter timing? Mid sewer animation, and it's just the Grim Shark here, but the Grim Shark. We'll have to watch Baez, his mid laner Stop gets caught. Cold. Everyone's dying. Honlo gets scouted out, ZZQ dies in the mid lane. The crumble had begun earlier, but Ed is really kicking into force now. Yeah, a sad state of affairs if you're a Team Zero fan. Press F in chat for all the Team Zero fanboys. Well, Rosh will be gone, that's Aegis, that's she is, that's also Satanic on Gyro. Like, maybe some crazy RP plays will kill him. Um, Magnus, by the way, he was 150 gold away from that BKB on him, and he died. The reason why he has BKB is because he disassembled Echo Saber in the end. So he's not even going to provide you with that extra damage in these fights coming up. Rough, but you are defending high ground, so maybe there's a Hail Mary play. Alchemist AC is necessary, like you need that one item, at least that next item to take a fight. Mudstone Punka, do you like that? That's also uh, very nice. Like, no BKB on Ori. Yeah, just chilling with the Bloodstone. That's not bad. I don't really know the correct game for it. I don't see it always. It's cool. It's cool, Adam. I saw. He's like, if, if I, yeah, they're going. Oh, again. again. BKB Chemical Rage. Is he going to be able to get back to the base? So this BKB is a little cooldown. Seventy tries to jump, but it's just a tiny. And, and, and no one else is even right clicking throughout. And the Echo Song clips him on the high eight. ground. Japan can be able to get onto the, the Magnus. And the Port Storm clipped him on the. What was that? Everyone no was clipped. Way. What the, the hell? Are you serious? Oh. How lucky could you be? This is game 5 and they don't have any creeps, so they need to go back and uh, push in. I feel like in so many other games, Radiant would already feel defeated, but yeah, they needed to go back a bit. 3 minutes on the ages. that luck on the Torrent Storm was huge. I thought the RP at least saves the Alchemist, but it doesn't even save the Alchemist. They still managed to kill him. So no BKBs, no RP, cheese ages, all the spells on Dire. This is, I believe these are two sides. Maybe some Magnus plays, maybe some cheesy plays to, to skewer them back in, but... This is next to impossible defense. That was the, yeah, the Bloodstone AoE, right? Yep. I don't know. Yeah, wow. I mean, we were just, he <laughs> yeah, would bring up that item. So <laughs> I come into play. And FI with the yours now will always be there to respond to 70, who also gets scouted out in the trees. Now Titan does it jump on top of him. A little bit awkward. Bark looking to try and address Pondo, who's just getting teared apart by the flat cannon. Inside the fountain, they will duck and hide. It's insane how this series was absolutely one-sided in every game. Like we we went the full stretch, five games. Every single game was completely one-sided in one team or the other. Yeah, Leon? Tantar. Uh, he's got a buyback at least, maybe trying to bait some reactions out. Crimson was dying in the tournament. Oh my god, he's got... Okay, I thought he was going to die. They got to go though. I mean, it's about to be Megas. Where is the Alchemist? Why is Sarge charging up the concoction, but he just ate an Echo Stomp and a Torrent. And now they're going to run him down. 70 fights a BKB, but there's going to be no skewer away. The Flat Cannon would have killed him otherwise. And FY goes fishing. He'll get skewered into the fountain. But Beyond Got him. is also in some trouble. Actually, not going to be killed off. Why is with the jump in now as well? Skewer they back. She's going to be eaten. And still Lois is freely right-clicking from afar. Oh, that's it. And this will be the final fight that cements AR's position in Dream League Season 23. Congratulations to them. They will go back 
They've recently played in Dream League Season 22. It was a disappointing result for them where they were knocked out in the first round of groups. They had to do it in five games, Team Zero. Unfortunately, condolences to them. They made them work for it in the end, but Zero 8, they will represent China in Season 23. Yeah, congratulations from me as well to Azure. Very, very well deserved. Uh, stick grand finals. Like, it's always what you want to see. Game five in a best of five. But my God, after this full series, I'm still not sure which team is better here. I know that Azure, they have more experience, that they are on paper considered the favorites here. But like none of these games was kind of close with one team inching it out or just trying to find something different to win with. It was literally either one team is winning from the get-go or the other team is winning from the get-go. Uh, I hate saying this because it's like a curse of an analyst when you're just saying, yeah, it was the better draft. No, it wasn't. Some execution was better, of course. But it really feels between these two teams that whoever gets that one little advantage in the drafting stage, uh, they're the ones that, that take it. You mentioned it. You mentioned the Kunka and how much he'll be able to do early on. He did. The RPs came, but they were far too few in between. Like Kunka is constantly making action happen together with FY. And on the other hand, you have this uh, RP Hail Mary every two minutes that kind of can win you the fight, but also the moment it stopped, the moment you used one RP down bottom to kill the gyro with the BKB and you lost everyone else, the game fell apart. They crumbled way too fast. The Ancients, every single stack, like, they would be better off not making any Ancients. It would be devastating as well for Team Zero. It's very unfortunate. This is two qualifiers in a row now. Again, like we mentioned, to start Game 5. Recently in Elite League, they lost the Grand Finals to Kev Team, which is the um, Old Eleven, Butterfly Effect, and Fly Fly stack. They lost that in, in five games. Now you go up against Azure in, uh, in Dream League Season 23, and unfortunately, you, you lose in five games again as well. But I think this does really showcase that still... There is uh, a, a lot of talent in China, no doubt. I mean, we've seen these players, they've been around, we know all their names, but just the fact that you're able to compete like, up against AR, who are a very good team. We are, we, we obviously seen they are struggling, like on a caliber team that needs to win LAN events, you would expect AR to perform a little bit better than what they did today. So there are some still things that need to be worked on, but I still think... You, Without a doubt, the props need to be given for Team Zero. They have not been a team for quite some time. You know, recently joining, right? CTY used to be the carry. Ice Ice used to be the position four as well. They've kept all the three other members. And we see they really have something going here, though. Again, two back-to-back -back qualifiers that made the grand final. So I really hope they stick together because they are a treat to watch. Yeah, they just need uh, Gaben to finally decide to give China two slots in these qualifiers. Uh, so they can uh, reach tournaments as grand finalists, not necessarily having to win the grand finals. But no, I completely agree. I feel like this team, when they get their ball rolling, when they get the good draft that they're super comfortable with, they take games cleanly and easily. Uh, the only issue maybe is some lack of experience here and there when it comes to drafts that they aren't super comfortable with. Like when they are put out of their comfort zone, they lose. And that's something that Azure recognized and did much better than uh, G2IG did against them in, in the series previously. Looking forward to Team Zero, really. Congratulations once again to Azure. A great last game, very nice performance. Gonna be buying some Midas BKB on my Shadow Shaman now, but uh, Team Zero as well. I don't think this is this band worthy or any changes are necessary. They just need to continue grinding, that's it. Practice some more, you're gonna get the next one. Yeah, practice some more. Unfortunately for them, though, you're saying we've about two slots. We saw actually season 22, there were two slots for China. Unfortunately, now in, in this Dream League, they are cutting down a little bit on, on how many teams are going there. So, unfortunately, yeah, last last, uh, timing, last season, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wrong timing, wrong timing. Sometimes that can happen. But like you said, you know, this team, uh, a bright future ahead of them. But unfortunately, today they will fall just short. So, congratulations once again to Azure. They will join Extreme Gaming as the two teams to represent China in Dream League Season 23. And we'll see how they're going to be able to perform as well. Of course, we do have uh, you've got Birmingham that's coming up, which they qualified for. So, they're going to be able to go. I'm almost certain they qualify. Let me double check. I didn't, sorry, I actually qualified. <laughs> they lost, they lost the, like, uh, they lost in game five. <laughs> we did? So, 
So they, they'll, they'll wait, they'll, they'll be chilling, but then after Birmingham, they, they will have Dream League. So they'll get a bit of a break here. We'll see how they're going to be able to improve, but for us, it's going to be our final time closing out for the China qualifiers. It's been a pleasure. It's been very exciting to follow all the teams. Again, congratulations to Azure. Very excited to see how they're able to perform, but for us, we are done. Of course, other streams going on. We're not done just yet. Western Europe, final day. I think Mina as well have their grand finals with PSG Quest and Enigma going on tonight as well. So if you're looking for more Dota action, make sure you jump over to the other streams. But for us on China, we are done for a final time. Thank you all for tuning in. See you guys next time.